how do we create maybe a bunch of words come into our head and sound good together maybe it's a tune just a lick perhaps that we imagine or that we play maybe we create some art something that looks like it stands out from the world that first moment of inspiration has such purity in it we create for the joy of creating and then other stuff happens to that impulse we want validation and we want others to admire what we've come up with sometimes we want that validation so much that we allow it to drive what we create and sometimes after creating something if others like it we become prisoners of that creation we want to reproduce the applause so we reproduce the creation and don't keep evolving it's like a band that plays the same song in concerts for 20 years because that's what everybody wants and these are traps we could be trapped by what other people want of us we could also be trapped by the ease of creating one thing over and over again instead of getting out of our comfort zones it is natural for us to go in all these different directions these impulses are hardwired into us and they're also rational that's why we need to be aware of them and be clear about what we want if you think of yourself as a creator sit down and ask yourself what about the act of creating do you find joyful ask yourself that and never lose that joy welcome to the seen and the unseen our weekly podcast on economics politics and behavioral science please welcome your host amit varma Welcome to the Seen and the Unseen. My guest today is my good friend Gaurav Chintamani, who is actually also the editor of the show. Gaurav is a man who wears many different hats. He is a musician who is known for playing bass in the band Advaita. He is a composer and producer who has written hundreds of jingles over the years. He runs the audio program and teaches sound at the Sri Aurobindo Center for Arts and Communication in Delhi. People joke that 90% of the audio engineers in Delhi have been trained by him. He is also a blues guitarist who thinks out of the box, as you will see from his solo project the dirt machine which i've linked in the show notes he owns a studio quarter note studios where i regularly record in delhi he also has a lovely instagram page so one could argue that's actually his son ishan's instagram page as that's where videos of ishan singing covers during covid went viral gorov's latest project is producing raman negi's new album Raman's first after leaving the cult brand the local train they came to mumbai to do a concert together and i took the chance to invite gorov over to my home studio to record with me i've been wanting to do this for a while as gorov has a quality of self reflection and thoughtfulness about his craft that i find pretty rare in this episode he talks about his life in music what he has learned about playing and composing and producing and being in a band what he has learned about the creative impulse and also the importance of going to first principles by learning anything i love how he connects food to music in this episode gorov also happens to be my cousin though we discovered this just last year well into our professional association and our friendship but when you listen to this lovely conversation which i enjoyed so much you will agree there is no nepotism here now let's go for a quick commercial break <laughs> Have you always wanted to be a writer but never quite gotten down to it? Well, I'd love to help you. Since April 2020, I've taught 20 cohorts of my online course, The Art of Clear Writing. An online community has now sprung up of all my past students. We have workshops, a newsletter to showcase the work of students, and vibrant community interaction. In the course itself, through four webinars spread over four weekends, I share all I know about the craft and practice of clear writing. There are many exercises, much interaction, a lovely and lively community at the end of it. The course costs rupees 10,000 per. GST or about one fifty dollars, and is a monthly thing. So if you are interested, head on over to register at indiauncut. dot com slash clearwriting. That's indiauncut. dot com slash clearwriting. Being a good writer doesn't require God given talent; just the willingness to work hard and a clear idea of what you need to do to refine your skills. I can help you. Gaurav, welcome to the scene and the unseen. Hi, I'm still wondering what I'm doing here, <laughs> and but yeah, thank you for having me. Yeah. Yeah yeah no so uh, how was your concert last night you were with uh, uh, performing with uh, Raman in Parel and unfortunately I couldn't make it because I was out of town but uh, how was how was the show it was great given the set of parameters that you can that can go wrong at a gig of this scale like indie gig it was good he's got a he's got a interesting uh, small army of fans building up who are walking away from his you know his the, the image that they think that Raman is and uh, yeah some issues where it was good uh, the interesting the, the most interesting thing that happened yesterday so the gig gets over and uh, i'm a stickler for like packing up as soon as possible because 
uh, I don't want to forget shit and all of that. But anyway, I'm packing up. I'm, you know, wiping the sweat off the guitar. And uh, this couple walks up on stage. And uh, they are like, you got it right. So my initial reaction was a little bit of like, yeah, obviously, I mean, the name announced where and you watched the gig, I'm assuming. But I was polite and I said, yeah, yeah I am. And uh, I was ready with my thank you for making it here. And I appreciate, you know, all of that. And they said, Ki, we are massive fans of the scene and the unseen. <laughs> Man, I don't know how to react. I just like, I started laughing. It's like, okay, I, you know, I, was, I thought, I said, Ki, you know, you know, I'm not Amit, right? So they said, no, no, no. Like we know of you only because of the scene and the unseen. This is the first time ever in 20 years of playing music that I've been in a spot where because of something else that I'm involved with, people have landed up at a gig who may or may not have been fans of his music in the first place. And they started chatting about the show. They said ki how their conversations are basically based around the episodes that you drop every week. And uh, they're obsessed with the show. And uh, <laughs> this worked to me for a couple of minutes. I didn't, did not talk about the gig. They didn't say like they, they like the show or they like the music and all that. They just kept talking about your thing. I was like, chalo, this is the first. But uh, I'm so sorry. I forgot to ask them their names. And if you're listening to this, you should tweet to Amit. And uh, yeah, you should <laughs> drop in a high. Yeah, fantastic. But yeah, that was the <laughs> that was the most interesting thing that happened at a gig ever, I think. Yeah. But uh, but yeah, the gig was fine. Like we we've, we've done two quick ones we were in Pune the night before last and uh, Bombay yesterday so just warming up to this new thing that uh, I'm trying to do with him and uh, yeah besides that I'm getting bombayed you know I I, th- I think I've done six hours on the road already in one day wow which I, I don't know how the city how people in the city do it like coming from Delhi like me ko bolna nahi because wahan pe traffic is pretty bad but at least it moves god but yeah yeah, no, I got to then thank you for coming here also. And for my listeners, when Gaurav landed up, he said, now I know why you like to stay at home and you don't go out much. And it's, <laughs> and, and actually, I don't think in any city I would really go out much because I'm just kind of, uh, I uh, like to stay with myself. It's like Satra said, hell is other people. And this has happened to me. This happened to me yesterday also. I was coming back from Jaipur and someone stopped me at the airport and said, are you so and so? And, you know, thank you for what you do. And I did ask his name. I think it was Ravi. And so, so thank you, uh, Ravi. And that's happened to me actually um, three times of the last four that I've been inside an airport. And it's quite wonderful. But what is also uh, wonderful about it in a sense is that everybody else all around is completely clueless of what the hell is going on, you know, <laughs> yeah. as they'll take a selfie or something, which tells you that, you know, in a small, you know, one has sort of dedicated listeners, but it's a small band of people. And for the rest of the people, as I think living in Vasova, you know, you're, you're kind of... <laughs> 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 Parents, weird, you know, I, I'm traveling with uh, my son. His school is going on his So I had promised him that whenever I go on like a couple of cities, like a short tour, I'll take you along. And uh, we can chat about it later, like, you know, how he's... I'm, I'm trying to like show him the working and a little bit of the uh, the uh, amount of effort that goes into putting a show together and all that but uh, we we were this a few days ago we were leaving from delhi and uh, he's got a little presence online <laughs> and he got recognized at the airport it was almost like you know ki main baba ke sath ja raha hu aur baba ja rahe hain kahin pe kuch kaam karne ke liye and he got recognized at the airport in fact at both in pune and in bombay like we like he's standing with me and people are coming up and trying to take snaps with him so it's uh, yeah it's weird like which is which is fine now for me ki theek hai uski ki uski uski presence is is a certain way but you should be getting mobbed man you know <laughs> you are going uh, like you're going straight into the heads of people for 8 hours every week like yeah that sound that recognizable voice like you should be getting mobbed no thank you so much and i'm grateful for uh um the little bit of appreciation i get i mean recently i've been sort of thinking about why i'm doing this and 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 just wondering and just wondering if there are maybe uh, diminishing returns not in, in diminishing returns in terms of validation or money or anything like that but you know just kind of what's the point of it all but that's a larger existential um, thing uh, i guess so you know i mentioned coming back from jaipur oh. and uh, uh there's 
a question i want to ask you and i'll uh, i'm planning to make a video on it for a youtube channel i'm going to start so that stuff should be out there before this episode is hmm. but in case it uh, isn't you'll know okay he's procrastinating uh, again but the question was so when i was driving through jaipur right and and um, the parts of it which are you know clearly touristy they they meant to be places where tourists go and there are parts of it which are not so much but in both those parts there was a lot of pink and of course jaipur is known as uh, the pink uh, city and uh, so i looked up the history of that on wikipedia and apparently in the late 1800s there was a visiting um, uh, english monarch to be he was an a prince and in his honor for whatever reason they painted the city pink and i thought of the possible self perpetuating effects it could have if you get known as a pink city because then that it becomes something that tourists and travelers expect when they go there and uh, so you know more of the city will turn pink perhaps especially the touristy parts will all be basically uh, pink and even those who rebel who are non conformists uh, will be few and uh, and they will only non conform as long as people are conforming to something so yeah. the dominant theme has to be pinkness for them to move away from pinkness but the danger there is uh and i'm using this as a metaphor but the danger in the immediate sense is that jaipur becomes pink and because it is pink it is not as much of other colors as it could have been and in the, i i think of this in the personal uh realm that where for example as a musician you could choose a particular path let's say you start playing a particular kind of music or even you know you might be good at four five instruments but you start playing one instrument or let's say you join a band which does a particular kind of music and then you're married to the band um and you've in a sense for yourself chosen a kind of uh, pinkness a dominant theme and other themes then kind of get washed out and because the one thing of which you cannot get away from the scarcity is time you know uh, if you're going to practice you're going to practice towards that end yeah. you know everything kind of goes towards that and context of music i'm sure you can identify with but there are various other contexts this could be in if you're a young girl growing up somewhere and you are praised for your uh, feminine values you know oh. uh, like i i forget which of my guests it is i think um, maybe shanta gokhale <laughs> you listen to the show as much as i do so i'm sure you might remember oh. but uh, uh, you know she I, i quoted from one of her books where somebody was praising her daughter and saying oh she's just like a cow gau gau ki tarah you know and the thing is if you then get your validation for one particular aspect of who you are then that can become your whole personality because obviously you want more of that validation yeah. so if you're a young girl growing up in the 60s or 70s or wherever at any time in a patriarchal society and you expect it to be a particular way and you get praised for that you mold yourself in that image and then there is that is all you are and the multitudes that are otherwise within you kind of go unexpressed hmm. and this is something i certainly think about in terms of every path chosen is a path not chosen yeah. it is you know it is a pinkness what are your sort of thoughts on this so there's obvi- the obvious thing of comfort you know and i'm going to approach it from the uh, i guess from the point of view of practicing towards a certain goal but like say when you pick up an instrument or when you start playing music you're 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 imitating a certain set of uh, sounds a certain set of uh, let's call them phrases or like you're joining the dots in a very familiar way and i think that's a way there's a reward over there and that reward is uh, it grows with each practice routine practice set get, and you're getting better at executing the same set of ideas and uh, everything like the reward that validation of being able to pull off a sound in your head and now you're you become your first audience right you're hearing yourself pulling it off then there is that second tier where you can present it to other people other people who may or may not have a similar idea about the first tier of the goal that needs to be achieved and uh, then there is this collective ki kya baat hai you know bahut sahi tha and uh, out of out of that i think like stems this commonality of uh, people that could possibly be in a band together where you say that okay these are your set of and i'm talking about like maybe like a very ideal situation that this is your strength this is my weakness and you just land in this situation where you realize that somebody's strength camouflages the other person's weakness and 
your weakness becomes almost like a sense of strength in in the other person's presence i'll give you an example like a like say like say a average bass player and i include myself in that uh, list an average bass player can he can just sound way better playing with a drummer who is just like feels time better for example right and uh, i'm i'm to use that that the pinkness wala idea like i think like there is there is there are a set of finish lines in every endeavor which need to be ticked off before i think like further exploration can happen i think what you were what you were wondering about and what i'm also thinking about now is that ki is it okay just being pink forever you know just find that pinkness and just be there and uh, the market is going to keep growing <laughs> your music is going to reach more people if it reaches the set of people that you have checked off your list you can obviously start looking for more people like you know that y- you can present that music to new people like the infinite number of audiences but i think like looking inwards to grow that uh, that pink needs to change you know that pink that pink is a trap and i and i feel like it's the easiest thing to applaud yourself for the least amount of effort ki you checked off a certain amount of uh, things to do you reached a certain point in your ability to execute an idea you can execute the idea now and that idea is getting applause it's very easy to get like trapped in that den of that applause and like you know the echo of it and like feel good but uh, i i somehow feel that that is exactly the pivot you know once you can once you have your whatever you want to call it like your audience your tribe or your band of brothers like whom you with with whom you're execu- executing a certain kind of music i feel like it's 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 critical to now start like just changing that weight you know i'm i'm staring at the stripe out right in front of us and i'm just wondering like if 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 one was to lean into one angle a little bit you know and then if one was to lean into this side a little bit like it's almost like it's obvious like like the weight on the other two changes and then what does that mean like let's say musically so for example if you found comfort in say the blues yeah it's never going to leave you it's never going to leave you and uh, we we could talk about this later i guess like i have a solo project in which uh, which i which i was really like the, i started with the question like you know ki okay ki ki blues ka mere liye matlab kya hai you know ki i can't just I, i could sit and blaze through a solo play play some known cliches and phrases and all that but like that's just like a set of ideas which i've put together i'm not claiming to be like ex- exceptionally or, or like original in that idea of what i pulled off but i thought i just uh, tried to answer that question like what does the blues mean to me and in 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 that sense ki this this idea of ki you have arrived at that i'm just going to call it the pinkness now you've arrived at that pinkness and that's the plateau below which you will not fall as long as you maintain a certain amount of dedication or practice or whatever you want to whatever you want to call it some people decide to stick with that and that's absolutely fine like they become victims of their own like set of goals and that's cool like you can i think you can pretty much milk a career out of like doing the same shit again and again and wo theek hai it's also a thing ki once once you get let's just say like exponential level of applause for some efforts that you've put in i mean why will you give that away you know you have to be really bold or stupid and i don't know what the difference is between those two to to be able to start going into directions where you expect the people to follow with the applause you know and i guess it's a whole different set of problems i might be rambling over here but it's a whole different set of problems about when you do take that left turn and it becomes a little obtuse and the applause doesn't follow you and your own ability now just fails you you know because you realize that it's a whole new set of whatever like maybe technique based problems or other things that you need to deal with before you can get to another level of pinkness but yeah i, I think at the core of it it's a trap but it's a trap it's almost like you know it's almost like that layers of that chakra view concept ki you need to be able to be com- be completely okay and familiar with the trap that you're in and only then you can just like go aage yeah yeah i don't know if that makes sense but yeah 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 it makes uh, it um, it's sparking of a lot of things i want to double click on and and, and one of them is this. so i was i was just reading this blog this morning by said godin hmm. where he was talking about stuff. 
yeah. yeah where he was talking about uh, hard work and long work right and uh, uh, i'll talk about the distinction he makes we might argue about whether these specific terms apply to the concepts he's t- talking about but i want to talk about the concepts more and to him long work is like when you do one thing again and again for a long period of time for example you're a typist in an office and you go there every day and you put in your 8 hour shifts and you do your typing or you're working in a factory and you go to your sewing machine and you put in your shift and that's long work it's not leading to any growth necessarily it is pro- probably making you better at that particular craft it, it everything becomes more reflexive but even there once you reach a certain pinkness it, it is uh, sort of where you are and hard work the way he defined it was that uh, you there's more mental effort in terms of the example he used was you take five different ideas and you synthesize it into something completely new and you do it in 5 minutes and oh. that can qualify as hard work now some people would say that no the earlier one was hard work this is smart work whatever leaving that aside there is a distinction i think um, conceptually in one kind of work and another kind of work and i'm just thinking aloud here that if you are a cricketer and i use this um, sort of analogy a lot in my writing course about the importance of practice if you're a cricketer you want to play the perfect cover drive you've got to play 10000 imperfect cover drives before you get to that perfect place but when you are there it is what it is it is it is what it is it is if it is pink it is the only color that matters you've gained excellence in that there is no place to grow and one but one could argue that even there cricketers can get um, trapped in the notion of a certain conventional way of playing like for example ab de villiers 10 years ago and perhaps suri kumar yadav today play shots that are inconceivable that people do not practice in the nets mm. and they did not get trapped by a notion of what is correct or what is doable and they kind of went beyond but essentially most great batsmen are simply great batsmen who haven't uh, you know gone beyond that pinkness but who've just done the basics better than anyone else mm-hmm. right and this is not what music is right uh, like uh, i mean the two ways to think about it is one if you think about music as something mystical then what you're conjuring up when you compose a tune or when you four, when four people sit together and you jam and something comes out that none of you has heard before uh, it's almost like something has been fashioned out of thin air and that's one way of looking at it and there's another way of looking at it uh, which is that everything that we do we everything that we enjoy whether it is musical or um, smells or whatever is because certain neurons in our brains are firing in certain ways this group of notes together is producing this soothing effect on me or this exciting effect on me and everything is like that and perhaps our understanding of the brain and the science of it is not complex enough to be able to understand it fully or to automate it as i think at some point is inevitable but that's really what's happening it is at the base of it it is a mechanistic process where certain inputs from us in terms of the sounds we play are having an output in terms of the effect in a person's brains because of the neurons that they are affecting so even if it seems like magic Hmm. you know the thing is that there is a craft behind it and it is implicit and most of what you have learned you, you can't even put it into words but you kind of know it is there. like a lot of the comfort food for you in terms of music i would imagine though those cliched phrases that just put you in the vibe and just kind of make you happy or whatever are that way because you know the first time you heard them you felt a particular way neurons that fire together wire together mm. you know so it takes you back to that comfort zone and that's why you're playing that and then it takes an effort to go beyond that because once you're comfortable why should you stretch out mm. and it's a different kind of pinkness from what i referred to earlier in my question because that was sort of an intentional pink pinkness where jepo decides it is going to be pink and individuals decide they're going to be pink and it goes that way or a girl decides that she's going to smile every time she talks to someone because that's expected of girls but whereas this kind of pinkness as it were is more a comfort zone kind of thing that you get into a groove mm. and then you're sort of in that groove and there's no reason to kind of get out of it like as a listener of music uh, i am certainly in a groove that i'm not in as a watcher of cinema or as a reader of books where as a listener of music i'm in a groove where i don't really care about discovering new stuff hmm. there's a bunch of stuff that is comfort music from when i was a teenager and a young man and i just play those and otherwise i play background stuff while i work but that's really it so 
in terms of your relationship to music and what you've seen other musicians go through is that something that you need to watch out for because one argument would be that yaar you find your vibe you find your groove you become great in that you don't need to go beyond that why theek hai na you know why khush hai but whereas the other one could be that the more you sort of expand your horizons in terms of what you listen to and what you play you become uh, uh, you know a different person uh, each time you expand a little bit but bloody hell that's a lot more work in fact yeah. what said godin said about hard work perhaps applies there it's it's a lot of mental effort yeah yeah heavy question <laughs> there is a uh, heavy thought rather there is, there are two ways uh, like two things like dropping up right now ek to hai the individual effort which is uh, which is reaching a certain point in your ability where you can align yourself with other people for a particular set of listeners you know deliver basically and uh, i'll i'll digress for just a second this this thing about music being just like you you're grabbing it out of thin air right i've really thought about this because this I'm I'm still <laughs> really thought in the sense that I haven't reached an answer and all that but I really question the thing about like your original gear like honestly because no two people no two people hear audio the same way I just cannot it's not possible like just the just the sheer like just if you talk about the biology like your the shape of your ear is as unique as your fingerprint you know like it's it's just the way sound enters your ear it's just not going to be the same for two people it's not possible starting from there right like the the balance of and might get a little geeky but the balance of like this frequency to amplitude to the timbre of the sound and when it hits you and then there is this entire open field of like everybody's experiences are different reaching up to the point of where they are when they listen to a piece of music right and i'm talking about like abhi tak to listener tak gaya bhi nahi hai it's just like people in the band like it's a set of people who are playing together in a jam room somebody gets an idea and th- they are they play this and somebody reacts to it and they bring in their own set of experiences their own whatever level of pinkness jo bhi hai and they bring that and then somehow for a brief second it has to collide in a way that neurons that wire together but these are now in separate bodies <laughs> you know like they have to align and this just keeps getting like exponentially complex when you add members in the band so like my main act my main band advaita there there were eight, eight people in a room like you know like this tweaking an idea nudging it into shape and uh, you realize that it's a process of subtraction that you need to let go of a certain set of your own expected reaction that mai ye bajaunga to iske isko ye hoga and he will react this way because can't you hear what i'm playing you were supposed to play that groove but you were playing something else totally so people are hearing audio differently people are feeling time differently you know he wo music mein there is a thing of like वन लैंड ऑन द वन जो हिंदुस्तानी क्लासिकल में सम पे आना एंड ऑल दैट सो एवरीबडी हैज टू फील द वन दैट्स एक्चुअली लाइक द बेसिस ऑफ लाइक फंक म्यूजिक एंड ऑल दैट बेसिस क्या मतलब बेसिस ऑफ ऑल म्यूजिक एक्सेप्ट द रियली मैथमेटिकल प्रोगी शेट विच जस्ट गोज लाइक पास मी लाइक मेरे को समझ में नहीं आता लाइक यू नो कि इफ आई वॉन्ट टू सी वर्चुअसिटी आई विल सी लाइक आई वुड रादर सी समी प्लेट अ ब्यूटिफुल डिश दैन लिसन टू लाइक मैथमेटिकली परफेक्ट म्यूजिक और वटेवर बट <laughs> coming back to this like that brief moment where everybody has to feel a certain set of commonality in like in their energy reaction all of that and then it has to then it has to be played wahan pe to technique aa gaya like how much did you prepare to arrive at this point where you can execute somebody else's idea to the emotional level that they are expecting you to and then that whole thing of strength and weakness is ki okay i'll ki you know that corporate thing like you fall back somebody is there to catch you like somebody will somebody will cover up you know so it might be as simple as like say the keyboard player will play a voicing which is not impossible but like it just doesn't feel the same way on the guitar so maybe the chords that were or the harmony that was written on the guitar now needs to be played on the keyboard because the guitar is not the instrument for it which takes us into a totally different territory that your idea the of those musical intervals being played together in a certain division of time is this the right 
instrument for it in the first place and i'll you know, you, remember, you had the conversation with warren it which trigger which was which start, set off from the beatles thing you know and if you think about the beatles which so my my all references of my music uh matlab the questions that i need to be uh, that need to be answered they either lie in food or in the beatles like <laughs> you know like i start start and stop over there and abhi tak to 20 years they have found all answers that i needed to look for so the beatles stop touring right and they get into the studio and they are like okay we don't have to tour so we can use other instruments which we will not we don't have to play this shit live ever you know so start they start doing some really experimental things and you suddenly realize that just because you're a guitar player because this is the only instrument jiske mechanics aapko samajh mein aa rahe hain so then does it really make sense that your music needs this sound that opens a can of worms right ki now how are people going to not only react to these musical intervals that you're presenting to them in a sense of time but also to the sound with which you react because somebody's i don't know cutlery on a on porcelain or chalk on a blackboard is somebody else is like oh like ye sonata level of like calm hai isme you know i i know, that's the other thing that ki that's that's i think the thing ki like you cannot win all you forget about listeners you can't even win everybody in the band वो पॉसिबल ही नहीं है सो यू आर ट्राइंग टू फिगर आउट द दी मोस्ट आइडियल कॉम्बिनेशन विच विच गेट्स ट्रिगर्ड बिकॉज ऑफ वन ब्रीफ सेकेंड और लाइक सिक्सटीन मेजर्स ऑफ प्लेइंग समथिंग इन अ जैम रूम विच जस्ट फेल्ट राइट एंड आई रियली थॉट अबाउट दिस यू नो लाइक एंड आई एम नॉट रिपीटिंग माई सेल्फ की मैं बोल रहा हूँ कि मैं बहुत सोचा बिकॉज अद्वैता फॉर एग्जाम्पल वी यूज टू रिहर्स ट्वाइस अ वीक फॉर थ्री आवर्स लाइक ये फिक्स था यू नो कि गिग है नहीं है एंड गिग्स तो क्या ही थे बट गिग है नहीं है वी वुड मीट वी वुड रिहर्स वी वुड मीट एट आर कीबोर्ड प्लेयर्स हाउस एंड ही हैड अ स्मॉल रूम विच एट ऑफ अस वुड क्रैम सेल्स इन एंड वी वुड प्ले नाउ बिफोर लाइफ ओवर टू कर्स एंड वी हैड लाइक अदर शेड टू टेक केयर ऑफ एंड प्रैक्टिस स्टार्टेड बिकमिंग लेसर एंड लेसर वन थिंग वॉज दैट यू नो Delhi work in progress construction happening flyovers being built and all that and our our uh, keyboard player he stays in CR Park so almost all of us had to except our drummer had to cross this thing called the Chirag Delhi flyover now that is like ki it's either death or like you are just ki let me remember this moment for the rest of my life where Chirag Delhi did not suck my life out of me you know and we would start landing up at rehearsals and nobody acknowledged it but now when i think back like i think we just like pissed off at like th- other things happening now the thing which is supposed to bring you joy the repetition which initially brought you joy now just becomes like mundane you know and the same set of notes you find yourself trying to remember the moment when you made it when the track made sense when this thing made sense which is actually a great thing that happened to us because our practices got lesser but we were like ab ye gaane change karne ho you know that opened up a different thing ki uh i've, I've digressed in talking about advaita but that opened up this thing about what is that song really you know that version that was captured and it's on record or it's one thing in time it now it doesn't belong to you it belongs to other people you know it's tied in with the emotion that they felt when they first heard the song or when what they felt when they saw that song live and it becomes such a trap because you are supposed to now you're stuck with it you're stuck with the weight of this moment that you created for other people and you are now just presenting it for them again and again so i think the the bold artists and uh, i don't know if i would put uh, like the band in that category at better like they we we reinvented our tracks we reharmonized them we rearranged them you know we wrote new riffs on them core structure wohi hai because the song will remain the same you know you can imagine like vande matram or national anthem like a trillion different ways but that melody will remain the same so as long as that melody gets across to the people which is what bob dylan is doing right now right a few of my friends sorry this is going all over the place but few of my friends like who seen him live they're like you just have to pinch yourself and say that that's bob dylan because the song he's mumbling out right now that's not like a rolling stone that's not blowing in the wind that is not like ballad of judas priest your yeah, frankly lee and judas priest that is not the song he is just doing whatever he wants like he's changed harmonies he has changed melodies he now the only crutch that you have are the words 
you know because the evo ki o oh, it in me way was written to written for me when i had that breakup but now that melody is totally different so i don't know like this this idea of i think he's on that quest you know and i think what all of us are on that quest ki yaar koi kuch kuch original karna hai but that original is such a that's a you just you just chasing mist you're never going to catch it because i think the only original thing is the moment at which at that point when it was created and you are just feeding off that memory that's it you are just feeding off that memory of let me remember that and let me just constantly try to project that that's it and i i, I don't know in the sense of the artist i think the only uh, like the practicing musician the only joy like i i know it sounds weird but like i feel i don't know joy ka matlab hi kya hai but like i feel more at peace practicing alone than playing in front of people like playing with a band because i feel like more whatever these words mean like innovative and fearlessness and all of that happens when you're practicing and you're deep in practice like i'm not saying this will happen in the first 20 minutes it will happen probably past the 2 hour mark but the past 2 hour mark like something gets unlocked and then this you experience that brief state of flow for a little while which i mean rarely happens at gigs you know because you it's like a yeah it's like menu is fixed <laughs> set list ho gaya unless and until you're doing like some jazz which <laughs> which i which i i don't and uh, but i don't know i guess i rambled there for a bit but uh, it's just it's just this thing about you're trying to constantly remind yourself of the set of parameters within which a certain idea was created and you're trying to remain true to that idea as it remain true to what's happening right now you know at least in I want to say like 99% of the genres unless until you're doing like something really experimental and let's just use the word jazz for that really experimental thing now like yeah, agar unless until you're doing that it's yeah you are just feeding off like this balance of muscle memory to emotional memory to other things and I can totally understand why after a certain point like the owner shifts and you want your audience to grow because boss i am growing i really want to move <laughs> you know i want to move to a point where you, hopefully you will find comfort in my next tune and it might not be the greatest like seth gordon says this no like uh, is it him was it ki just in in reference to writing like just keep writing the bad writing will get out of you you know wo ek bar nikal jayega so maybe i did we did a tune which meant something for you and maybe the next 10 tunes will not mean anything you know but like wait for the 11th one and i feel like wahan pe to like i don't know digress but like that that onus has then shifts to the audience that follows you so that 100 to friends might trickle down to one but like that guts of like carrying on i yeah i don't know like i don't have a finish line to this to this thought ha huh. yeah lots of good stuff to double click on and uh, you know i'm i'm reminded of that famous quote of heraclitus that no man ever steps in the same river twice and an artist in a sense your work your art is like that river which is constantly flowing and evolving you're never in the same place right but everything is nebulous but you are tied down by the forces of commerce and validation and all of those things ki pehle jo kiya tha you know just reproduce that like i i i, I think raman at some point has expressed express frustration that his crowds are always wanting for chulo yeah you know uh, which he wrote in his early 20s and it's not you know yeah. and it's a great song i love that song yeah. like when i discovered his music i just loved it it's it's such a um, uh, superb songwriting but i can also equally imagine that you know thagya banda yaar yeah. he's moved on he's not that person yeah yeah it's so weird that you know like you you write a song or you an an idea is take shape at a certain point in your life now all those factors of when it gets recorded the quality with which it's recorded whether it checks all the boxes you want or not and we as a, like as advaita we are notorious like of khatam hi nahi karte hum log you know we've record we've mixed the same song like seven times <laughs> but wo khatam hi nahi ho raha because it just it's just it just has something missing and anyway like it, it eventually reaches the audience at a point where the artist has moved on already but now he has to serve you know he has to serve that song in which which advait which every band in this country or i i will say like like every band in the world has to do like they have to do it and and i and i guess like uh, again like beatles right like he, they i think they managed to do their most productive work because they stopped touring and they didn't owe anything to the audience anymore they could just do whatever the hell they wanted and uh, lap it up or don't like it doesn't make a difference to them at all i mean 
या पोस्ट रिवॉल्वर इज रियली वेन देर लेगे गेट्स एस्टेब्लिश बट लाइक वो हो चुका है इवन इफ दे इवन इफ रिवॉल्वर के बाद स्टॉप्ड आई I'll say it. I don't even think they needed to go till peppers. They would have stopped at revolver itself, and it was fine. But and who who would have thought like the good stuff was still to come, <laughs> you know? And uh, but but wait, like uh, you are just serving the idea of like ki, okay, this means something for them, and you're just stuck in that time warp. Here, pe of course, like it, it's it's a different thing because you if this is putting food on the table, then you do what you have to do. You will have to keep serving that beast, and you will keep have to like. keep presenting that song again and again but i don't know it'll suck the life out of you it'll suck the life out of you and probably that's why i'm saying that ki for for me i think the bigger joy is in just the sitting and discovery to like your own practice you know as opposed to putting putting the same menu out in front of people like day after day day after day and after a, after a point it just becomes ki okay like and especially if you're trying to present new music like say for example in the case of raman uh he he wrote these tunes and when he when he came to me in last last year when he when we spoke in april i had just one question like this like i could hear in the demos like okay these will these will be great like there's a there, there's a ear worm quality in every song of his that he writes and uh, i asked him ki ye gaane tere liye hai ya un, unke liye <laughs> you know because agar ye unke liye hai to then you have that band like why just stick just keep presenting the same thing and like it it'll like people will lap it up you know and uh, but no he told me like the songs are for him and then it becomes interesting okay like you give we okay and it becomes easier also because you have this clear direction and in fact like that's one thing that bands do all the time like there is a clear direction i just three not three sixty three sixty we'll always watch again one eighty like ulta murte hain you know like like let's go in the other direction see what happens over there but again it comes back to the point of like I th- and and I, and i keep saying this i think like you know the growth of an artist is is also dependent unless and until you getting some sort of patronage you know kahi residency mil gayi hai like some sort of a generous stipend is coming your way like you're taking care of like you do your thing like g- give us give us x amount of content over y amount of tracks over y amount of time and all that and just do your thing like rest is taken care of then you can truly create otherwise if you, if if all these factors of commerce and other things and like abhi to wo bhi ho gaya ki like not making music is the easiest thing now you know making music is really the easiest thing because after that becomes starts the entire like painful trek of okay you have to now become like marketer for your music you know this music has apparently taken on this image and you have to become that person of that image for for the audience otherwise they will say these two do not connect like your you know i remember when uh, when i when i joined adwaita i like i i don't have anything against wearing kurtas i think they're great but i can't do it like i, I cannot do it like i can't wear a kurta and play a gig i can't it just couldn't imagine myself doing it so i i, I remember telling the guys like yaar kurta nahi pehen sakta main and they were like you it's zaruri nahi hai because adwaita had that image for me you know like people used to like it was very indian fusion thing and all that now when i look back like it's such a stupid thing to say like i will not wear a kurta and all that but i was also 20 back then 20 something so i mean what else do you do when you're 20 except stupid shit but yeah like this thing of ki your music is like this and now you're supposed to present it in exactly the same way all the visual and should tie in together it's just is this too much is this too much work which takes you away from i think the real work of refining it making it even better making it even better and g- getting opportunities like i don't think in in this music thing you get opportunities to let the bad writing out you just don't do it you just don't have the opportunity because it is i don't know i'm i'm trying to think like what's the blog post equivalent of like like a track that you could do something get away with it and people would be okay you know like i yeah i, I don't think so maybe you don't release it but then you're defunct you're not you, you're you're just not productive enough and active enough for people to be on their timeline you know like it just yeah i don't know yeah So I I I have a couple of thoughts and I'll refer back to the creator economy because that's what I've thought about a lot uh, in recent times and one of those comes from this conversation I was having with a friend like I'm planning to st- um, among the things I want to do on YouTube is a show with my friend Ajay Shah and the two of us were sitting and chatting with a group of people about it and uh, one of them said what you need to do is you need to look at all the analytics from the first episode to see ki kya ho raha how people are reacting and I said that is the last thing I will do 
मुझे दो साल एनालिटिक्स देखना ही नहीं है एंड द रीजन फॉर डैट इज दैट इफ यू स्टार्ट चेजिंग वैलिडेशन एंड फिगरिंग आउट व्हाट वर्क्स फॉर द लार्जेस्ट नंबर ऑफ पीपल इट्स अ रेस टू द बॉटम राइट एंड यू कैन लूज इंडिविजुअलिटी डैट वे यू आर यू यू आर देन ऑलवेज सेकेंड गेसिंग की क्या काम करेगा वट विल दी एलगोरिदम पिकअप वट विल दी ऑडियंस सिंक एंड ऑल ऑफ दैट एंड आई थिंक दिस इज अ डेंजर डैट क्रिएटर्स फॉल इन टू एंड मेनी क्रिएटर्स आर रिकग्नाइजिंग दिस डैट दे गेट इन टू अ ग्रूव एंड दैट ग्रूव वर्कस फॉर दैम and then wo the, pinkness wala funda mm. that uh, it works for them and then they are stuck in that groove and they are sort of going with it sometimes it is a groove because of revenue you could be a travel blogger you get into this revenue group that you know you are getting sponsors easily who are funding your trips and you are going to places and all of that and you get into only that groove but the thing is that if you are a travel blogger what made you a travel blogger is not simply the love for traveling which is one aspect of it it is all these other things like you know uh, being curious about places being curious about new things being curious about people and all of that kind of dies because you've gotten into a groove mm. and that's a uh, sort of one danger that I, i think creators face in the pinkness now the other now the other point that struck me about the creator economy and goes exactly to the heart of what you were saying is that whole thing you know you came up with that great quote about you have to keep writing so the bad writing gets out of you right now what i also teach in my writing course is the important thing is to build a habit if you have a goal like kitab likhunga phd thesis likhunga whatever then it becomes really difficult but if you have a writing habit ki roz itna likh rahe hai har hafte mm. it, itna likh rahe hai the goals fall into it they become much easier because you've got that kind of groove going it's like you don't just sit with a guitar when you want to write a song right you're playing it every damn day and then when you actually sometimes song comes as a matter of course and sometimes when you get into an intentional effort it is still much easier and there i feel that it is particularly difficult for musicians because i can um, for example you know if you're a vlogger you can iterate endlessly koi aapse expect nahi kar raha ki aap kal wahi video banao jo aaj banaya hai Yeah, yeah. Uh, sorry the other, you know etc yeah, yeah. etc you know i don't have to like imagine if my show was groundhog day every day i talk to uh, pick random guest and every episode is the same thing or it no you got to kind of get out of the comfort zone do different things evolve and creators have figured that out and what happens is the evolution seems slow and almost unnoticed when it is happening but after a certain chunk of time they'll be like fuck it itna badal gaya mm. you know the same funda in a different context of the days are long the years are short you know yeah, though yeah. i usually use that in the context of how fast time passes and we get older <laughs> yeah. but also in uh, this kind of context of a change happens and i think in that sense a musicians are therefore kind of screwed because like you said when you're alone and you're, you don't have to cater to anything the uh, constraints within the group because they're all individuals and there's only a certain set of things you can do there's a path for you laid out and otherwise it won't fit or what the audience might expect all those are constraints are stopping you from growing when you're on maybe when you're alone maybe you can grow now if there's a musician vlogger who every day is putting out a different song or he's jamming with his friends and it's on camera i can imagine you might find your thousand true fans and they don't really care they don't want the same damn thing because the joy is in the jam but the point is most people you know unless you're a you know a fan of a jamming group like a grateful dead or you like jazz or whatever mm. you know you're not you you want the the songs that trigger certain feelings and memories in you you want them played again and again mm. like i'm sure when raman is 70 there will be some idiot at his concert still shouting for chulo right yeah, yeah. and it's not that idiot's fault like sure, i yeah. could be that idiot i love the song mm. but no no i love the song i keep telling him you know ke chhoo chuke <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah yeah literally and this is exactly the frustration you just expressed because so it's not even a question in that sense but and it's something that i guess all musicians face so what do you what jugards do you do to get around this like one level of your dedication to music is ki theek hai har hafte band milega 2 ghante ke liye practice karenge we'll come through whatever flyover and mm-hmm. if we get there alive we mm-hmm. will somehow play mm-hmm. but is there then another personal kind of jugar which you have to do where you say that some of this time I have to devote to myself to kind of going beyond this like it's a question I've got from in fact two of my writing students in the recent past hmm. both sports journalists hmm. saying ki yaar day job mein pura din likhte hai thak gaya ho 
you know mm. apne liye mera uh, you know what do i i feel like i you know everything is coagulated Phrases. or maybe maybe uh, to concretize it maybe if you can no, think I, of I, people who manage to move past it or yeah which is what you're doing right like mm. we are always looking for references mm. and just a quick like hark back to ki original kya hi hai like you know let's just draw the ideal set of things that work for me and all that but couple of things like when you were when you were talking with this this thing about it's unfair for musicians no and it is because i somehow feel that uh, yeah and probably this is probably not going to sound right I, I, like i don't i don't know how to phrase it i i i think that there is there's a lot of weight in trying to wait let me phrase this properly so you come up with an idea it's a basic hook it's a basic melody by itself no it doesn't mean anything like it's not about it's it's not about just getting like one hook there is this entire aspect of usko tarashna hai thoda sa like what happens before it what happens what like how does it go into the next bit is there a next bit you know one good thing uh, that has happened in this new uh, post tiktok world is that somehow 20 seconds idea like 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 a reel for example is valid enough you know usme bhi hai like but it doesn't mean anything for people like me who have been in this and i'm sure for like a lot of my a lot of my friends and peers will like have echo the same sentiment is like ye 20 second kuch nahi hota you know like like intros need to be like a minute long or something like it doesn't mean anything to come up with something just a hook but you can get away with it in this in this day and age that's what i'm saying now ye uh, i somehow feel that this idea of creating content or creating tracks or creating music that gets past this po- you know this 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 thing of making it to an audience and it gets presentable and then it gets judged and what reactions aate and so on and so forth it, it's a i i think the hack is to divide the practice up and this is what i've uh, like I, i was looking for answers you know in the in the routines of other people and all that that uh, that you write every day right uh, ki i i keep telling my so i teach i i, I keep telling my students that you get paid to perform not to practice okay but you can come up with this idea of paying yourself to practice you know and i'll just elaborate on that a bit like ki certain part of your practice routine has to be i record everything like whenever i practice even if i'm playing like like basic like warm ups and all that i'll record everything the idea is that if you give it this kind of weight that it is getting captured right then this pressure of this constantly trying to create something and not having enough of a bank when you are when you want to pick ideas out of like that process gets sorted it's almost like writing but not posting about it you know it's it's maybe like journaling audio journaling so i did this thing a few few years ago i think in 2015 ke aas paas where i i was not finishing ideas you know unless and until there's a deadline by a client who saying ki jingle dena and all that and then there is incentive ki theek hai paise tabhi aayenge jab khatam karoge so what is that equivalent of like in your own practice routine like what is that paisa ki wo kab aayega ki main kitna khatam karne ke ke baad so i figured that okay what i'll do is i will find some source of inspiration so i obviously went to the lowest hanging fruit is like a book just randomly open a page and there has to be the first thing that you read take a picture of it and then i'm going to react to it you know and i'm not going to judge myself but the key is that i have to finish this in an hour i used to give myself like anywhere between 30 minutes to 2 hours wow it has to be an idea there is no limit on duration there's no limit on ki this chord doesn't feel right like i will just blink my way through this system one thinking like you know ki seedha through ki i'm not going to judge it i'm only only going to judge it when it is done i have hit command b i have rendered the file and i'm not going to hear it i would hear it like the next week so i all the ideas that get made in week 1 and i and i managed about 20 weeks you know all the ideas that would get done in week 1 would only become a playlist in week 2 and i would just hear it and uh, because i had the files with me and all that and then i realized that ki ha 20 hafte kiya kafi ideas mil gaye and all that there were some really good ones and i realized one thing that it just kept getting better and better 
now the metric for getting better and better is what like this tune is better than that tune i don't think so i don't think that means anything the germans have this saying that there is no bad weather there is only inappropriate clothing you know <laughs> i like i love that idea ki sab kuch sahi hai just the way that it is being done right now is probably not ideal so step back and what would you do so maybe like i said you know like this chord doesn't need to be played on the guitar it could go on a keyboard okay what sound on the keyboard is it a piano is it this blah blah what's up those that is endless what you will end up with is a version of something that first you need to validate yourself and i th- there is a i don't know if it makes sense but there is a side of it like like keep the constant stepping between i am the person who's making this idea to i am the person who's listening to this idea and i need to be I don't need to be harsh on the guy who made the idea, you know. Like because that's the simplest thing. You know that 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 I don't know what you call it like it's a meme or whatever like ki you start off it's awesome, it's great. Where is this going? It sucks. I hate myself. You know, where is the nearest bridge I can jump off of? And then it becomes like awesome again. So that cycle of like ki you will end up being okay with what you're making. I don't put myself through those spaces. When I didn't put myself through those spaces when I was executing this exercise that I am paying myself to practice you know and the only way i'm going to get this done is if there is a product that when i hit space bar or whatever i hit play like it will play back and i will hear it and i will not judge it the other reason to do it is that i will not judge it because i have to give myself the credit as an artist otherwise i will like i'll go mad like i have to give myself the credit that ki i am different today from last week so maybe i was not maybe you know like if this is not working why wasn't it working like you know it can't be equipment or cooling or whatever like it can't be mahal you know i i have to bring the mahal so then the process and i will sum it up i i guess like the the idea of the process is to minimize the number of you can call them distractions to variables which will make you stray from your idea of like what is the finished product you know and then having the that's the gutsy bit i think which i don't know how other people tackle it but like just having this thing of ki this is good you know i ha- this did not exist it might be like a mix of 20 ideas i've heard like my forefathers never picked cotton but if you ask give me a guitar the first thing i'll do is like a play a blues lick you know that's just the thing so ye abhi i can't judge myself you know that's the that's my entry portal into like okay darwaze khul rahe hain guitar ke after that like i will start doing other things so what is that idea which which you start i don't think that's important enough i don't think so like the the idea with which you start it could be anything like you could read a book and i like i said i've done that i've read a book i've you know read a para and uh, in fact I'll, i'll i'll mention this so place where i teach one of the exercises we do is we come we pick a line of text we have this like google form process and all that and everybody votes in for a line and uh, that whichever one gets the most like you just end up writing okay this is the line you write a piece of music right so i took that exercise which i was doing ghar pe to my students and i was like let's try this out it worked for me and i know that i am not unique so it has to work for like majority of the people like you know like so we started doing this a lot of interesting ideas were coming up and uh i remember the first year of the lockdown uh, one of the one of the lines that got picked up it had something to do with feminism and like the the power is bigger than like you know, like i forgot the text but i know i was <laughs> i was sitting in my room this was 2 o'clock in the morning maybe 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning and i was like really stressing ki idea nahi aa raha and we had i had told the students ki main bhi kuch karunga so tomorrow next morning like we are supposed to play ideas for each other and uh, so anyway so we uh, i'm staring and my you know my kids are sleeping uh, my daughter is sleeping i'm i'm on night duty so she's she's there and i notice wall ke side pe no like there is this c page ka patch dda construction in delhi and all that rain has hammering us for a few months and i notice like the c page thing and i you know like i swear i i, I like i had not seen it before and uh, maybe it was the lighting in the room maybe i was sleep deprived i was sleep deprived but i just felt like it was getting getting bigger 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 right so i say okay fine so something that's st- so i take that line ki okay power is within you uh maybe okay let's say okay water droplet so i immediately open my laptop i start logic and i import the sound of like just drop of water okay so i'm like okay this is the smallest thing what's the biggest thing that can okay tsunami okay i need the sound of like waves crashing against 
so i go on i look at my sound bag i don't find anything i go on youtube i get a sample and like okay i know finish line kya hai i know starting point kya hai now i need to come up with an idea which is join these two together and i don't know what happened like the minute that happened like it was like flow state immediately and i think like because i'd done those 20 weeks because i'd done an x amount of practice and i i i guess like the practice is not just on the guitar the practice is also on being able to take the idea out of your instrument put it into that and i'm pointing towards your laptop <laughs> you know so ki ki and then have it come out of speakers so next thing i know it's 4:30 in the morning you know but i have finished i have finished a 5 minute idea right and which actually it's it's a track which i mean came and it sang without a trace and all that but i got uh, amartya to uh, to write on it and he wrote like this post apocalyptic like crazy set of words and that just become a, that like one thought of like a student suggesting a piece of text me seeing, seeing a spot of seepage on the wall ended up being a song you know so for me like that is the win what that song does what where it goes and all that wo ho gaya and this is where i admire like i really admire your process i remember when we when i started when i came on board and i, and I started doing the edits for you i asked you like what do you want to do with backups and you said delete them and you were the first guy ever in 20 years who has said ki don't keep backups you know and i'm like yaar ye kya hai and then you said ki i have moved on you know and you happen to mention it on on so many of your conversations with your with the people you you're chatting with that when once you're done the conversation is out of your system like now it's on to the next one but i've i've rambled here but i i guess the 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 point i was trying to make was somehow find a way to think that your practice is being paid for by you and it will for me it makes sense when there is a finished product at the end of it this can be a 10 second hook which you can tarasho later or you can make a 10 minute prog rock anthem whatever it is but like kuch to something substantial that you can feel angry with whatever later proud of later whatever but has to finish if it doesn't finish it doesn't mean anything and i guess that's the only way that audio guys music musicians can make it easier on themselves which is that every idea doesn't need to be a song but every idea has come to you for a particular reason you know like have a go at it and like just finish the thing because next thing you next thing you know is there is a there's an entire album in just one riff you wrote you know like yeah i'm 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 convinced about it and <laughs> magia will roll like there is an entire encyclopedia of music which is which is of one lick like you could start you could play a blues lick and now you can like just hit like the algorithm will take over and play like i don't know hundreds of years of blues music with the same three chords some and but it's it's fine like it's just like something tangible substantial to end this you have to close the loop yeah yeah no that's that's uh, inspiring and, and and i think that you know what i said about you know once the episode is out there delete the backups delete everything is kind of what i think would be uh, though i arrived at it in my own way but it would be a credo of creators today that you got to keep moving on you know don't look back at the last thing you did like when friends of mine will write a book or make a film and they'll be obsessed about how it's being received they'll be obsessed for years right there are people i know who've right. made something in the otis and they are still angry and bitter because it didn't get the reception they feel it deserved and i'm like nay you got to just keep creating just move on it doesn't matter you know it it, it uh, and a lot of the joy is uh, in in the creation in fact you know just um, a couple of digressions now into ai that you know i i i look at what ai is going i think of what ai is going to do with text and what it is already doing with art and what it i think will do about music and we can talk about that in detail later but one thing is that in the short term it will drive all copywriters and illustrators out of business for sure uh, and in the long run ai will uh, write books and create music as good as anything humans can do and i don't think that that's a bug i think that's fine i think that for an artist the joy is really in the creating you know you create something you're happy that you've created something something is expressed and that's the joy and a lot of the other things that follow ki validation milega fame milega you know people are listening to tune made by machine mai bhi to likh raha hu you know i think all that is secondary i think the joy of creation i think you're a true creator when you take joy in creating something you know that i've put it out there like i did that episode with shanta gokle which is eight hours yeah. like i was saying 
I don't know how many people will listen to it, man. But I am so happy I've done it. It's out there. It's there forever. Is there after her? Is there after me? You know, we won't be yeah. there. But that it, something is there, and, and and I moved on already, right? But it's there. I mean, and there's a satisfaction there. So I think that's a way to think about uh, creativity, not in terms of ki you know AI sab kuch karega to hum kya karenge, hmm. but in that ki yar, man, if I'm taking joy in doing something, it doesn't matter. Baki dunya mein kya aur, I'm getting that joy. The other thing I'm going to double click on is, you know, what you said about um, originality. Kya hi hai? You know, and I think about again to, you know, to use an AI term, LLMs, large language models, right? Hmm. So a lot of these AIs are being trained with large language models where basically, for example, if there's a writing thing and GPT-4 will be way ahead of GPT-3, of course, GPT-3 is just a, like a drop in the ocean. It's like an early mainframe computer with 2 MB memory. You can't judge computing on the basis of that. But essentially, you throw all the text that's ever produced at a machine and it parses it and it kind of learns itself and I'm using learns with um, you know apostrophes or whatever and it, it does all of that and then it whenever you ask it something it produces something now one criticism of that is ki yaar ye to copy paste hai. Hmm. but actually nahi hai, copy paste nahi hai. because I think number one what we do is we overestimate human consciousness and human intelligence when we think that uh, uh, you know as if we are something special beyond all of this but actually the way we learn about the world is through an equivalent of the LLM where uh, you know whatever we experience or read or whatever all that is a database except that our brain is incredibly inefficient at actually being able to process it because everything is so complex and then we seem to spontaneously come up with words and tunes and whatever but none of that would have been there if if not for that la large language model yeah. you know like one example i often uh, use with my writing students where i talk about the importance of reading is that in a cruel thought experiment imagine a kid brought up in a room uh, without language where, you know, people may feel it and all that, but nobody speaks to it. There's no television, there's no internet, it never hears anything. What will it speak like at the age of eight? And the answer is, unfortunately, not at all, because you haven't heard language. Hmm. If, if she only listens to her parents, there'll be a limited set of language that she'll have. Uh, if she lis listens to her parents and neighbors, it's larger. Today, your people growing up, you're listening to your parents, your neighbors, your peers, all of television, all of the internet, everything is there. As a large language model, you develop your own language. Now, it is impossible to say that, uh, you know, this particular phrasing of this particular guy or this particular guitar player, aya kaha se precisely. And it is also incredibly unfair to call it copy-paste because that's not what AI is doing. That's not what we are doing in a sense. So with that, you know, sentiment of original kya hi hai, I think that is a call to humility. That boss, you know, everything we are is kind of coming out of everything that is there and then we are making it, uh, making something out of it. And, and I want to also double down on what you said about, um, sort of the importance of that practice that you did for those 20 days and the five minute song emerges out weeks. of that, 20 weeks. <laughs> yeah. And that five minute song emerges out of that. And I think, you know, and I understand what you said when you said the finished product is important. I think the finished product is important as a metric for you to figure out what's happening or not. But otherwise, what is important is the 20 weeks. You know, I, I was reading somewhere, I forget who wrote about it, but about getting lucky, right? And um, his core point was that if you want to be a lucky person, you have to increase your surface area of luck, right? Yeah. So if you're always... Uh, let's say you're an unattached person. If you're always going out and meeting people, you're more likely to meet someone who's right for you yeah. uh, than if you just sit in a room and whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're an artist, you're much more likely to hit upon something valuable if you're creating all the time. Create when no one's looking. You don't have to publish. You don't have to do whatever. But just keep creating. One, you increase the surface area of that luck. Your algo will produce something. Two, your algo of producing things gets better and better the more you practice, which is what I guess happened to you. Yeah. You know, this this thing about the LLM, the mm -hmm. I uh, like the students. Uh, so while talking to them and while trying to, so I I don't try to. I, I'll just speak about that for a little bit. Ki I don't try to tell them. You know, my my line is that I will I can teach you how to write a book. My job is not to teach you Microsoft Word. Please go there on YouTube or read a manual. Like, you know, it can't be that. You can't come to me or you can't go to anyone who you think can teach you. And I'm doing that in quotes. Ki, uh, 
कि बताओ कैसे करते हो सो वन कॉमन क्वेश्चन अक्रॉस द टेन ईयर्स एट आई मीन टीचिंग इज दैट कि हाउ डिड दिस आइडिया कम टू यू राइट एंड आई एम नॉट सिंग द आइडियाज आई गेट अ ग्रेट आइडियाज बट बट दिक सीम टू कम वेरी फास्ट and i was and i and i started thinking about it because I, you know the job i guess is to give an answer a satisfactory answer and an answer which can unlock a door or at least take you to the next locked one you know like i take you somewhere leave you there and then you have to figure this out so my so i i started thinking about it and i realized that i i, I said that i just heard more music than you that's it like there is no there is देर इज़ नो बिगर सीक्रेट लाइक ऐसा कोई है ही नहीं कि मतलब कि मेरे पास ऐसा कुछ है कि आपके पास नहीं है इट्स इस दैस इज नॉट ट्रू लाइक आई कैन नॉट गिव माई सेल्फ द क्रेडिट ऑफ बींग यूनिक इट्स नॉट पॉसिबल इफ शुड हैव आस्ट मी दिस लाइक ट्वेंटी ईयर्स अगो प्रॉब्लम आई सेट येस लाइक आई एम स्पेशल आई वुड हैव लाइक बट देन वॉट डू यू डू वन यूर ट्वेंटी यू डू स्टूपेड थिंग्स सो द द ईगो ऑफ बींग एबल टू से दैट दिस केम बिकॉज आई थॉट ऑफ इट नो इट डिड नॉट लाइक इट जस्ट you happened to be paying attention when it happened and nobody else was looking or hearing you know you picked it out and you ran with it and you finished it and you got let's just say you got lucky and the surface area of luck was like like it's just increased but i think it also increases with with the amount of humility that seeps in you know but but going back to the, that bit like i told the students ki i have just heard more music than you and that just that's this llm thing like i just have a greater set of references a bigger set of references my point of what could happen after this chord is just bigger because i've i've just heard more music so when i tell these guys to practice and when i tell, even now like i i don't think that i don't consider that the fact that i'm sitting with a guitar and i'm playing chromatic runs or whatever like trying to transcribe and all that that is practice sure that that is but that is just so that a i can stay in shape and you know the first first 20 push ups are easy uh, the next 10 are slightly harder and then like every push up after that like maybe oh, i sh- i should have said, i shouldn't have said 20 i should have said 50 <laughs> you know it gives yeah, a yeah, special yeah, exercise just... more but uh, but yeah it just like the i don't know the 51st feels like the first 50 you know it's just so much tougher so you are doing that kind of practice only so that you can halka sa keep nudging yourself to get better and like all of that now obviously you you, you can look at what sort of first year or whatever tier finish line you want to arrive at do you want to be a performing musician then that's your thing like sit and keep practicing the mechanics of the instrument right if you want to be a composer or arranger whatever like there are different set of tools you need to practice but this idea of listening to music you know like like reading a book reading a book i feel is is practice like i i try to find <laughs> and my some some of the some of the guys like keep joking about it but i i'm desperate you know i uh, i read that book 4000 weeks oliver berkman ki yeah, yeah. and i'm like you man shit this game is going to end <laughs> you know <laughs> this game is going to end and uh, first i used to think ki and ki i read a lot but i don't because i i happen to meet you and then you know like just <laughs> cover like the pace at which you're reading i'm like ki okay theek hai then i this idea of like there will be so much music that i will not be able to listen to you know and like you said a few minutes ago that you are not looking for new stuff i'm the absolute opposite i'm always looking for new stuff because i i just do the simple thing of look for the influences of your influencers and like that tree will take you back to some point and uh, it's a really cool thing now that there literally all of the music is available to you we can talk about the commerce and the evil capitalism of it which has like you know uh, yeah that's the word for it it's evil and uh, but but just the thought of li- just the idea of sitting down and listening to music like i treat it like practice you know that ki this is doing and i'm not i'm not saying that i can multitask i'm sure everybody can but like i can let the music play in the background and my ears are always ready for like an event and i think like music like a track or audio is just like a set of events which is playing out with the really good ones have like two to three stand out events in them you know it could be based out of virtuosity uh, of the performer it could be based out of the virtuosity of the arranger it could just be a great recording you know or it could just be yeah i, I don't know and suddenly i don't know why bob marley's redemption song popped into my head and i'm like ki it's not virtuous the recording is shit you know but there is just something in that song 
and now my brain is like flashing images of have you seen that movie the beach uh, where i've actually read the book uh, ha yeah, so this movie mein like the bearing of, uh, of 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 you know a friend and this guy on a guitar is just sitting and like hippy type dude and is just singing that and i think like okay i'm rambling but what i'm trying to get at is that ki this everything is going into the database you know and tomorrow when you are recording a track and this idea of the most pristine whatever that word means in context of whether it could be fidelity or intent you know trying to capture that and put that across you have a database of errors which made it through which have become the soundtrack of people's lives you know which has become more relevant than what the creator would have or the artist would have thought ki this is going to be you know it's like bob marley saying that line no ki when when in an interview i think he was asked ki uh, so like you're so i'm paraphrasing over here but like you're rich and all that he's like what do you what do you mean, what do you mean rich this is the time when like i think 50 60% of the exports of jamaica were his music like the revenue was his of it was his music and he's like that's not rich you know it's the rich is the like the, the 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 stuff that you've created which has gone to people and and all of that is happening also it came at a point when capitalism was not ruining music maybe it was but but uh, but this thing of it is I want to circle back and just this idea of that music every time you listen to it and now it you can get like john kg about it you know ki kya hi hai music ki <laughs> and where is your where is it you're drawing inspiration from this happened during the first covid years i uh, krish ashok came on your show and it i had bought his book and i started cooking and i'm like I and I realized one thing that my production workflow my just workflow as a musician on the it became better because i was cooking oh wow. you know because i suddenly realized ki okay ki wo i came across that idea of first principle se tod sakte ho you know so there has to be a first principle thing in music also and then i realized okay melody and rhythm and maybe there might be like some jazz based like berkeley return college of music return type you know subdivision of this but i'm not interested in that like i think like you it either serves that function melodic function or rhythmic function so okay fine so now as i am listening to my entire catalog of music that i've already consumed matlab sorry listen to all of it in the sense ki i don't have to go through the entire track i can play it back in my head you know <laughs> i can like i can just like have a soundtrack of i don't know zeppelin over the hills and far away playing in my head right now with the two of us are chatting and i realize that okay fine that that what do i remember or do i remember the melody of the riff or do i re- remember the rhythmic intent of the riff and when i'm now presented with an idea of that the muse of the universe presents to me ki okay ye kya hai so it's just two one of the two boxes it has to tick and once it ticks that you know i'm like okay it doesn't does it need more of this does it wait in it does it need less and and then as i then i started analyzing the 20 weeks of work which i had put together and all those ideas got like a new meaning <laughs> you know i started looking at ki okay i am overloading it with this kind of information because that is me that is the thing that i'm good at so i'll do more of it so suddenly that context of okay you know food may like ki one of the hacks no which which like I, like i don't understand it like recipes for example like you know i'm i'm trying to read them and i'm like namak swad anusar i'm like what does that mean you know how can the most critical thing which binds that sodium chloride which binds everything together like how can that be swad anusar like either has to be a ratio of something like a pinch a pinch of what and then krishan is book is saying you know like he when uh, he mentions this bit about and i think he spoke about it in the episode with you also that how, when a lemon the size of this much or you know like what does that mean so in audio what is that you know what is swad anusar kiska swad <laughs> audience ka then you are jacked you're screwed if you're trying to make it for an audience you know because going back to the first thing i guess like we were talking about or what i what i said was ki no two people are hearing audio the same way no it's a losing battle you know in fact right after finishing your writing course i the first thing i wrote and i'm practicing every day <laughs> you know i do the 200 words but the first thing i wrote was like it was just this thing like it's a losing battle like you can't win it and if you can't win it then it is liberating ki mereko jeetna hi nahi hai audience ko it obviously comes with a certain amount of like luxury you know because if you're desperate to win over the audience then 
it's tricky but then there's a hack in that also if you're desperate to win over the audience you just need to see what are they consuming and the parameters are there whether it's the melody and the rhythm function or whether the verse arrangement or the chorus going into this transition of that and then it, you can zoom out and become macro about the entire thing and you're like oh so genres ki baat ho rahi hai so i just need to do rock of this and blues of that and jazz of this and prog of this and then i get like this thing and now i have the audacity to call it original you know but i've sorry i've like rambled all over the place but i just feel like ki consuming that 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 llm like that is the key thing and i think this this ai and i'm i'm beginning to like l- look at tools for it because why why not you know why not i i feel that AI will make music yeah and and we could talk about like maybe like this evil capitalist idea like i i don't see why spotify would not try to train ai modules and i'm just using spotify because that's the first name game to me but like i guess everybody will do it ki try, try to train ai modules to make music in the style of abc artist right and kal ko kya farak padta hai like consumer ko ki like abc ne banaya hai ya kisi some smart ai ne banaya hai फर्क स्पॉटिफाई को पड़ेगा बिकॉज उनको रॉयल्टी नहीं पे करनी पड़ेगी यू नो देर वोट हैव टू पे द प्रोग्राम दैट दे मेड सो आर्टिस्ट आर गोन टू गेट डिफंक्ट इन दैट बट यू नो वट आर्टिस्ट आर नॉट गोन टू गेट डिफंक्ट इन इट्स इन द प्रेजेंटिंग द एक्सपीरियंस टू द पीपल लाइक आई डोट आई डोंट अनलेस एन टिल देर इज सम कूपरिक शिट इन द फ्यूचर दैट इज गोन टू हैपन आई डोंट सी पीपल गोन टू सी लाइक अ यू नो लाइक जॉइंट स्क्रीन ऑफ लाइक सम सॉर्ट ऑफ अ कंप्यूटर परफॉर्मिंग दैट्स गोन टू हैपन अगर मोदी जी होलोग्राम यूज कर सकते हैं where i thought of i yeah i i i thought of this like maybe you know like when this covid thing was happening i was like ki that's the only way to do concerts like in a in a disconnected world but like yeah we we will hamare yahan to wo technology aayegi nahi but this thing like you know like the the performance aspect nobody is going to be able to snatch that away from us but uske liye to fir i don't know like somehow practice, there's a lot of practice that you'll have to do and then you have to find a band of brothers that you can that you can play that music with and then that entire cycle of like i don't know insecurity to like finishing an idea that starts all over again but i i definitely think this this the speaking about a little bit about those ai like for example it's so it's looking at all and and I don't know if I'll be able to phrase it properly, but it's looking at this analysis of what we consider as emotional data as, as a com- in a completely unemotional way. You know, like for example, I could say sunset, right? And I don't know. I'm a, maybe nine or ten people will play a minor seven chord. Okay, some pochawa gyani will play like a something eleventh sharp eleventh. Yeah, wo vagera vagera. Voicing change kar denge. Some inversion change the sound. Invert it now. So. it i am trying to give some sort of a meaning to that sunset right now i don't know how this llm thing in an ai is going to make sense but i think it's going to extract the the way that you perceive the sunset as opposed to the way the sunset is being presented to everybody and just give that a sound i don't know if it makes sense but what i'm saying is ki it's 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 looking at it from the other point of view it's not looking at my reaction to a certain event and me coming up with a piece of music for it or a set of notes that make sense for it but almost in a way that ki this is the soundtrack which is being which you are going to react to you know I, yeah i'm still right trying to wrap my head around this ki then it really comes down to what is the if there is melody and rhythm then what is the function of a set of chord sequences a set of musical influences and and you and you see the same progressions you know dabbled in everywhere like all of jazz is like and, and maybe some jazzers are going to send me like hate messages on but all of jazz is like something you call the 251 you can find it everywhere and uh, yeah but like still like the way it is presented there and it's wrapped around it it just it just feels different every time and mere ko as a i just i just feel like these tools are there for you to get to the finish line faster and there is no way that our limited set of 2000 4000 4, weeks ka experience is going to be able to add up to some something which is learning at that pace right the idea is to use it to present your idea better you know in fact it's, it's we we had um, at the place where i teach in in, in delhi the sri ramana center for arts we had uh, this lady yuvanka uh, from berlin who is now dabbling into uh, like 
she's a she's a songwriting coach she's a she's a artist coach but her entire presentation was on how ai to ai based tools can be used to make your music better and that's the key thing it's your music you know because without your personality it doesn't mean anything it just means one more artist that spotify doesn't have to pay t- <laughs> but like it doesn't mean anything you know i don't know if that makes sense but yeah it's 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 an exciting time you know it's yeah Yeah no all of it makes a lot of sense and before i start double clicking on things i'll just point out that you really should not apologize for rambling because as you well know you know uh, you know just as there are cars in top gear just as there is singing in uh, indian idol you know rambling is my pinkness <laughs> so, of the show that's a that's a great title rambling yeah. is my pinkness yeah. <laughs> rambling is my pinkness so i think just for a moment thinking about the sunset thing that what will what music will ai come out of if you just give it the prompt some sunset and i think part of it will be that it will very quickly if it has a sum total of expressed human experience to learn from it will very quickly conclude that sunsets bring about feelings of melancholy or reflection and so on within people and certain kinds of music uh, are correlated with that and then it will kind of probably come up with music of that sort like one suspicion of mine is that this is already happening on spotify and youtube mm. because sometimes when i work um i like to listen to music but i don't like to listen to music with words because it's distracting so and uh, after looking at different kinds of instrumental uh, ballads you know jazz piano blah 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 i've settled upon lo-fi so i'll have the there are these lo-fi playlists and i listen to one of them and my suspicion is that I'll, sorry i know that cutting cutting in is a bad thing to do mm-hmm. but i'll i'll tell you something so here's my i i i'm constantly looking for tracks to play right and my answer is white noise yeah, okay. right i don't play music at all because my my it my head starts computing ki ye ye melody ho rahi hai ya rhythm ho raha hai but lo-fi so my theory is that lo-fi music has basically low fidelity right so yeah. there are not enough high frequencies all the transient information which pokes your ear and about 80% of your auditory response is like transient response you know it's it's the thing that, that you might be sleeping jungle mein so rahe ho but like somebody's uh, like a saber tooth tiger yeah, snaps yeah, yeah. on a, you know twig and like you will wake up because that transient will wake you We're up programmed to look for exactly and i can't believe it i just punched my face like yeah i'll have to clean that audio up but uh, <laughs> but uh, but yeah like so so, so since your transient response in your in your brain is not getting triggered like you are not diverting your attention to that so it's actually it's 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 built built for that you know so my suggestion would be like to check out some brian eno music for airports also anything which doesn't have transients in it and and the envelope is very slow like you'll be fine like you don't get distracted at all yeah the rain qualifies as white noise right so it's it's weird because the, the like the Can you call it pittery pattery rain? I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Like the yeah. rain on a tin roof kind of thing. I because I listen to rain sound uh, rain playlists a lot because <sighs> I find that that is there's something there and it's soothing but it's not disturbing me. Ha. Huh. So I think because a the rhythm is not predictable. Like your brain cannot compute where the next downbeat of the rain will land. Mm. You know unless but like a dripping tap a uh, leaky bucket in the loo will keep you awake all night because your brain will try to say ki, okay it's going to fall now and mm. you know it will calculate the bpm almost like it will you will start anticipating it but rain has this thing of like not having a predictable pattern so there you go so any anything which does not have a predictable rhythmic thing and serves no melodic function you know no pitch information to it but like rain on a tin roof like the tin will start like like you will hear a note at least i do and i'm tone deaf so i'm sure like other people are hearing it yeah but i mean i'm tone deficient you know i'm inventing a new category over here but uh, but ha huh, like lofi has that like sorry and i broke your chain of thought yeah, but yeah, like yeah, yeah. yeah the tr- the limited transient response it just allows you to like zone in a little better yeah wow so i i, I didn't think of the reasons but like you i like to go to first principles and think about the why of things so it's good to know but you know no really my suspicion is that a lot of these could already be ai because uh, i don't see why ai should not be able to create an unlimited playlist of lofi music uh, you know just very generic stuff and if you really think about what's 
happening in the popular music scene like you know i i forget the guy's name but i think i mentioned him in my show with uh, warren a songwriter who's written for all of these uh, major pop stars of today hmm. and uska hmm. formula hai that these are the chords which work these are the kind of acid transition hona chahiye acid structure yeah. hona chahiye everything works yeah. and so basically what you're doing is you're asking a human to do a computer job yeah. uh, you know and and uh, by computer i mean quote and quote yeah. primitive jo computer log samajhte the actually computers are way more evolved than us in this hmm. and uh, i don't see why once you once we understand these parameters and feed them in why a computer shouldn't come out with equal output that whole mystical notion that beautiful tune is being created from somewhere i think is mystical because it's based in ignorance because we don't understand the brain well enough to understand how it's happening but if we did i think all art at some level would seem like craft hmm. and therefore uh, sort of doable by uh, computers and and the final little uh, like nuance i'd like to add to your description of evil capitalism and of course <laughs> i know the sense you went it in yeah. is that uh, on the one hand it's true that uh, like i think you know capitalism itself is nothing if if you what capitalism does is it full it uh, when it is efficient it helps fulfill people's desires so the problem is people's desires and the way that we are wired right uh, that at one level and again i've spoken about mimetic desire earlier on the show yeah. at one level that leads to this phenomenon in the popular arts and especially music um uh, until recently and in music i think even now that is almost like a winner take all a very small percentage of the people will make most of the money reach most of the audience people everybody is listening to beyonce or whatever the thing is yeah. and uh, artists lower down the value chain are not making anything and if you had to quantify if there's an artist who is 9.8 out of 10 that person could make magnitudes of money more than someone who's 9.7 yeah you know or if the algorithm lifts them a little bit uh, uh, like i remember this um, experiment and again i don't remember the details but basically a whole bunch of people were given an app with a certain set of music in it and except that different like different subsets of these people had were told by the app that different songs are popular they had their existing whatever and once they started going by that the top of the pop charts as it were for each mm. of these uh, subsets mm. were completely different interesting which just tells you that you know a little there's so much luck also uh, yeah. involved that an algorithm happens to favor one particular kind of creation over something else mm. and then that can take off and the other one can uh, just fall behind but again i think what the the good part of fulfilling people's desires like i think the first part is a homogenization right that some songwriter figures out ki three chords always work or whatever the formula is they apply the formula everything that is a hit sounds the same uh, much like uh, uh, you know the cavendish banana taking over bananas yeah. but the next st- uh, step that i think then happens and is now happening in other fields is that you can cater to individual preferences much better like there might be 10 lakh people who like chulo and there might uh, there might be 10 crore people who like chulo chulo but only 1 lakh people who like say what raman is now doing hmm. right hmm. but he can reach those 1 lakh people he can monetize those 1 lakh people that 1 lakh he might find to his surprise is actually 10 lakh yeah, yeah. you know and once he starts catering to them and following his heart hmm. he, his music can also get better because hmm. he he's allowed by circumstances to actually focus on what he loves doing and not have to play chulo a million times hmm. right which i mean i wouldn't mind chulo a million times but <laughs> yeah so uh so yeah i mean i i, I i'm just kind of responding to the stuff that you said and not actually so this 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 uh, evil capitalism thing oh, I, so, <laughs> yeah i mean see i i'm fully aware of the fact that uh, the, uh, that what i'm doing right now it wouldn't have been possible say if i was i don't know like uh, 20 not even 20 like say 30 years ago you know by by possible i mean like there are just so many uh, there are so little resources you know and that's been enabled i guess only by like the market uh, behaving a certain way the audience wanting a certain thing and that's a very primitive understanding of it but i i'll let you tell you something so i remember when apple music started actually the itunes store started and uh, i was at my parents place and we were dinner or lunch ko chal raha tha and i showed my dad so so my dad is 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 really the reason like i am into this thing <laughs> you know dad was he used to strum a little bit of guitar and uh, i picked it up from him 
आई थिंक पार्ट ऑफ मी वॉज जस्ट लाइक ये चलो मैं पापा को इम्प्रेस करता हूँ बट आई आई विज या आई गॉट इन टू द होल म्यूजिक थिंग बिकॉज ऑफ हेम एंड ही आई शोड इन द आई टी स्टोर and his first reaction was ki like this is great but um, he was like you doing okay like matlab how is the thing so as like where is this coming from <laughs> you know like i'm doing all right like ho raha hai like i'm not complaining i'm happy and all that and uh, so he pointed out that when he was so he went to nda in uh, the 60s so he finished school and he he went to nda in 69 and one 45 used to come for an ana or something you know and itunes store pe one track was 11 rupees or as he could when i when i showed it to him so he's like it i don't know what adjusted to inflation the rate might be but he's like it's not that much different like it's music is really cheap like purchasing the music is really cheap i mean obviously the cd is an aberration in this case because they used to be like 500 bucks or whatever but uh, it's really less so you are right like there's a very small number of artists that are breaking in the big bucks and at that level the difference between the two who are right next to each other like is massive but uh, but it doesn't trickle down to the artist yeah. you know it doesn't trickle down at all like i i'll give you a advertise example when 2009 the we, we released our first album and uh, a healthy chunk of change went in like in, in fact like we recorded here in bombay at yashraj and uh, we we had to work uh, at gigs for uh, i think uh, close to a year like 8 to 9 months to be able to pay the studio to get a track recordings we had the money to pay uh, when we went in and uh, then this material was just with them you know we couldn't get the material out because we didn't have the money to pay for it so we were hoping that uh, say a record label will take care of it you know but that's a trap man <laughs> like record labels are just like like again now in that context like the evil capitalists you know ki like ki the ki the artist never wins and we got a pretty shitty deal and we were stupid so we signed we just wanted like mere dimag mein wo tha ki oh we are on emi beatles are on emi can't be that bad <laughs> you know so i went but uh, yeah as a little deeper than that but ha huh, it was it was just, we we got stuck with that and then the, uh, the 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 money just came from the performances it didn't come from anything else it didn't come from the audience consuming the music which brings me to another another point like audiences don't get it man like the the idea of I'm so divided because of course I've downloaded music from Napster you know once more than once I don't know few times of course I've done it you know of course I uh, people who, like the, the Delhi guys would know and even some of the other city people would know like there was a store in Delhi called Clyde's it's in this in that underground park uh, market called Palika Bazaar yeah. yeah and he used to used to go to him and he would uh, record onto cassettes and take a photo of the LP एंड वो फोटो पेपर को प्रिंट करके कैसेट को फोल्ड करके लाइक ही वुड गिव यू दैट फॉर हंड्रेड बक्स एंड ऑल दैट यू नो एंड बिकॉज यू कॉन कन बाई लाइक द कैसेट्स वर नॉट अवेलेबल एंड अगेन लाइक यू नो कैपिटलिज्म टू द रेस्क्यू लाइक इवेंचुअली इट गॉट बेटर बट बट आई डोट नो वट अपने गैर डिस्क की ऑब्वियसली आई वॉल्सो इंडल्ज इन सम फॉर्म ऑफ पायरेसी फॉर लाइक जस्ट टू गेट माई हैंड्स ऑन द या बट but i i feel like when i when it reached a point where the access was available you had access to it and you could pay and you could get buying a ticket for a show for example all of that like eventually it circles back to if the if the artist if the lower tier artist the artist that say you love you know of and who are in your same city and who are in in the scene if if they are not being endorsed and if you are not the patron then i don't know how this how this works out like you because wo then to wo capitalism evil hi rahega because now it's the, the other end of the chain doesn't seem to be working like apparently there's a there's a demand for it but nobody wants to pay for that demand you know and i'm willing to supply like you know ki i'll do gigs as many whatever i need to sing for my supper you know i'll do that but like who's buying the ticket i've 15 16 years of advaita gigging we've done one gig where we sold tickets i mean it got sold out and we we did two nights at a theater and it was like why this so limited number of seats why can't more people come in we thought we'll have a matinee show and all that but but uh, it's that thing is just not there like it was it was just not an option that we could expect that people will pay to consume our music and then i yeah i don't know how i, I don't know how we landed over here my fault <laughs> but uh, but in that spirit of that ramble like i i that 
capitalism wheel needs to work bo- both ways otherwise you are at the receiving end of being like just hammered by it and you're not seeing the benefit the benefit is there in the sense of there is no gatekeeper now of you could, i remember you had to record your music and convince people to release it you know now like the people who used to release music are begging you that you can you should give them their music you know because they realize that they want to just hold on to the publishing or if they want to have some sort of a licensing deal and they will do some sort of sync licensing and like yeah i mean they just want their hands on that music and you don't have to give it you don't have to like my, my son like he i recorded a single for him and i released it and vijay basru from okay listen like sorted the entire thing out in a day you know and back in the day you had to go take a meeting with a, a record label executive said make them listen to the music convince them that you know ki please give me some money so that i can put it towards production cost something or the other all of that is gone so there is like with that opening up and all that some power has come but uh, all of all of this is being created for a consumer who i think is still like shirking the responsibility you know i don't know if that line makes sense but like there is an onus on the consumer to like take part in this you know and i'm not i'm not saying everybody doesn't need to be everybody will not get to the top tier but there is a tier where that artist deserves to be and maybe i'm just being grumpy over here and but theek hai i mean i'm like i said ki this comes from a position of privilege that i could find myself in a band that meant something for some people and that band had a still i mean we're dormant but uh, not defunct <laughs> but there is a stretch that we had which was you know like within the space of like 3 years we released uh, an album which won us a, a few awards did the duress coke studio ye wo wagera wagera sab kuch kar liya and then that translates to your performance fee going up and all of that but then you realize that there is a certain bit of course the ch- the ch- possible charge of not continuing to create is there yes but then but then yeah like you know you make something which is which i know has not reached everyone where it where it's supposed to reach that comes from how much money we can put back into this if it's not making enough money then what happens you know like how do you second album like you paying what 40000 bucks a day at yashraj I, you know this is this is when two of the people in the band own studios <laughs> we still went because we were like band you know live bajayenge like we'll play all of it will we'll play live i don't know like somehow like that wheel feels incomplete right now like there is not enough money coming back and if i have to now create content to become some sort of a i don't know what the word is like a per- person who is I hate that word. Like you, I, I don't think you can use the word influencer, but like some sort of a person who is attracting more people to their real estate, so that that real estate becomes valuable and content over there becomes valuable. That's a totally different game, then. You know, now because now there is a component of like I can't just be I can't just be allowed to be a recording artist. I have to be a performing artist and not just a performing artist, but I have to be a produced performing artist like yeah it's it, the the other complaint i guess is like it is moving too fast to catch up with by the time you get used to a certain version of delivery a format and set of like things in your prestige which needs to be sorted like the game has already moved on you know i don't know yeah that's a grumpy ramble No, no, it's a great rant, and I'll uh, uh, sort of join in the rant uh, by talking about what within capitalism is evil itself. Like when I think of capitalism and markets, I think of them as basically enabling mechanisms for voluntary action within society, right? Because everything is a positive sum game. Uh, you and I interact in various ways. It's all a positive sum game. You benefit, I benefit. Double thank you moments, blah blah, all of that. Uh, but within that. there are there can be efficiency problems like i think that the structure of how uh, the creative arts reach the people has been very problematic and i think that's breaking down thankfully but we haven't made the transition yet there is a lag in the sense that uh you know without using the word evil maybe we can use problematic but i think yeah. that's also a problematic word <laughs> but in 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 the spirit of the conversation i'll just continue using evil i think the mainstream is evil i think record labels are evil right i think those 
kinds of uh, structures uh, don't really work because um, they uh, there's too much friction between the creator and the audience. Like in a writing context, what I often say is that if I'm a writer in the 90s, you know, either I go to a Times of India and say publish my 800 word article, or I go to a you know Harper Collins and say publish my 100,000 word book. I'm limited by forms, and we'll talk about forms later. But um, you know, I, they are my wire the means to sort of reach the audience so what times of india will pay me 800 rupees for a or whatever they might have paid at that time uh -huh. i never wrote for them in the 90s they'll pay me whatever pittance for a piece that i write they'll accumulate eyeballs they'll sell it to advertisers the tiniest chunk of that reaches me now today a lot of that is breaking down in the sense that the mainstream is gone. So your version of the Times of India, I guess, would be your record label, your oh. uh, universal or whoever. And those guys' relevance is being diminished because artists are reaching consumers directly. But the part that has yet to be figured out is a mechanism for which how you can actually monetize some of that. Hmm. Like, for example, the people who came and said hi to you at the concert yesterday, right? Hmm. They value the show. Uh, the, and you know they value the show because they listen to it. Time is money. Time is the scarce resource, right? If you're spending hours listening to shows of mine, you are paying for it. But there, and you would happily, you would be very happy if some of that value came to me. But there's really no way of you to do so. Though that I have that voluntary thing uh, on my site, and uh, you know that keeps me independent. But by and large, there's no way of doing that. You know, when they come to you, in a sense, they're coming and saying hello to say, you know, hey, thank you for the work you do. Mm. But there's no way of transferring that value to you. So I think that it's these ways of transferring value that I think about because there are some Jugaru's ways which are better and more nuanced than the Jugaru ways of the past. The Jugaru way of the past was a TOI will gather eyeballs for you and sell advertising and you were a tiny pittance. Whereas today, if you're a YouTube creator, you know, there's advertising happening, there are sponsors happening um, or uh, you know, you can uh, direct your uh, people to Patreon and they mm -hmm. can pay at Patreon and pay you directly. Or you do another product like I do where you, I'm selling a writing course. So, okay, you know, the podcast gets me reach, the writing course gets me some revenue. Together, they kind of work in that way. But these are fundamentally Jugaru ways. Mm -hmm. You know, ideally in a world without friction and I'm just thinking aloud, how would it work? How it would work is that I I listen to a song by you and there is a moment of pleasure for me, which is value and automatically value gets transferred to you, yeah. right? That is a frictionless thought experiment world. And I think we are far from that. But I think the great opportunities of today are for people who solve that, hmm. you know, because I think there is a lag between the mainstream dying and other structures coming up to take its place. Today, you have these Jugaru intermediary structures like buy me a coffee and Patreon and all that. But there's got to be something else down the road. And maybe the technology just needs to get there. But that kind of gives me hope because I really think that, uh, you know, that most of the people who value Advaita's music or who value your music or who value my podcast or who value Raman's Singh would be really happy to express it in monetary terms because, uh, but there is no frictionless way of doing so. Hmm. You know, there was this, uh, I forget the name of the company, but uh, a streaming service based out of, was it French? Somewhere in Europe. And what they were, so the way, my understanding is the way this works, uh, the the split of the revenue from streaming works is that there are, there is a tier of artists that will get paid because then, yeah, they need to be kept happy and they need to be, you know, tomorrow Taylor Swift should not say, Ki main, I will not release an Apple. So Taylor Swift will be kept happy. Apple will do whatever it has to do to figure that out. But uh, see, if you get X number of streams, that doesn't translate to Y amount of money. It just does not. Like you just, you don't see it. Like I'm sure there, is a, there are those graphics which tell you that if you streams, you get so much money and all that. Which is minuscule. Like it's, yeah. it's nothing, right? Because like you said, time is money, right? So no wonder people are writing like 20 second ideas because jaldi karlo. Otherwise, making people sit through five minutes of it and then doing a million of that, like, come on, that you need some serious loyal fans. And, uh, but the thing is that the, it doesn't directly translate to X amount of money, you know? And what this company, uh, yeah, I should have remembered the name. Uh, if I remember it, I'll, I'll, text, it, I'll, think, huh, yeah. I'll text it later. What they were doing was, ki, okay, if you get a stream, 
and if you have clocked as like every time your track plays and or pass a certain duration like the money comes to you literally the money comes to you and they were trying this out over there and i don't know if other companies yeah like again the name is spotify like they were they're just too big and too evil to like not let this be implemented on the abhi there something happened in the states like there was this entire thing about um, artists getting like a greater share of the royalty and uh, a uh, songwriter collaborator is also getting paid and all that the only streaming service that's fought that was spotify they were like no we don't want to pay <laughs> like they're just yeah. like they're they like that but uh huh, and i'm i i guess i'm using the rant of the name spotify because i'm not on that platform i don't use it but uh huh, if anyone is listening to this take it from an audio guy youtube sounds the best <laughs> just be on youtube music it's the best and why would you not be on it you get like youtube premium for free but uh, one of those two services is free whichever you think is subsidizing the other but uh, but ha huh, i i i somehow i somehow think like this frictionless thing should be there if people's wallets are like open you know mm. like i still feel like there's a massive chunk of the audience which just wants it ki free mein de do i don't and that's a very can i say it i guess i'll say it that's a very indian thing i guess you know i i don't have any other market reference anyway but like there's a very thing you like you free me de do because it happens yeah like i i i i don't think i've ever played a gig where i've not got a call for like people you can afford to buy a ticket and you know like you will add people to the name of the guest list and all that dal do theek hai aa jao but but yeah it's always there like it's ki that this thing of buying into the the creative life of an artist like the creative course of an artist like the that runway to extend their runway like the audience has to chip in like my my realization 2012 we released silency adveta and uh, not that these numbers should add up in any way but we had like north of like whatever 60 70000 people on facebook which was the thing back then so we were thinking ki okay how much money should we put in so we went back to yashraj and my you know i was thinking ki okay even if 10% get this album pay for it like somehow the numbers make sense because i know what will happen when after 10% of say, of these numbers like our album sales the performances go up so that's where the money is right like more money is coming in from there and that gives you so 2012 ke baad we haven't put out anything that's one another reason like man come on like who's funding it <laughs> you know because we did this thing in uh, 2016 we turned 2016 yeah we turned 10 no 15 I'm losing the math, but uh, but we booked a theater and we were like, okay, let's go and play two nights. Uh, we will rearrange the like everything will be new. We'll rearrange the old tunes. We'll write new tunes. So the eight of us got together and we were rehearsing every day. And here's the point: like at the end of that stretch, we wrote t- tunes and we went and we did two nights and we it was an entirely new set. So the point I'm trying to make is that music will become music. Music bana ke to bring it out and present it to people, like that's a little depressing now, you know. Like ki 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 all of that goes into a very very short shelf life. Obviously, like it is like it is still c- like getting streams. We get royalty checks and all that now. That system has worked in our favor, you know. So some royalty is com- coming, but like it's it's nothing. <laughs> that money is nothing. So I and I'm circling back to that. Like is somehow that frictionless bit also needs to stem from. an audience chipping in with willingness to be a part of that you know and i don't know like whether whether in the say in any other any any other field like i don't know in the, in the writing sense and all like how does it work like do do writers get the incentive to write more <laughs> you know we i i here's the thing i i think we are doing it because hum kuch aur kar nahi sakte like I, that's my logic like what what will i do now like i've never had a job you know i'm i'm 42 i've never i've never had a job like i can't go looking for a, i was talking with my with my cousin yesterday and i'm like he he was thinking about like he slowing down a retirement and i was thinking like maybe should i really get serious and actually start working because i've never done that you know but i i, I don't know like somehow that bit about being at the adequately compensated receiving end of your efforts ab wo kahan se aayega wo pata nahi yeah this conversation is more like like successive rants yeah no no i mean uh, and these are not even rants i think it's just thinking about you know fundamental issues of the field so here's sort of my next question before we go in for our break and uh, go in for lunch and in a sense it's a question about lunch in a roundabout uh, way that you know 
one as far as uh, monetizing audiences are concerned i think it also depends partly on like one that you're right that perhaps particular groups of people may not want to pay like maybe indians don't like to pay for content maybe it is a scarcity mindset from decades past or whatever i don't know that's for other people to think about partly is also the depth of engagement that you know one thing that uh, i am grateful for about the show is that whatever the absolute numbers are and in podcasting terms they're pretty good but they won't compare to a youtuber's numbers but um uh, whatever they are the engagement is incredibly high so people are constantly writing in they are signing up for the course they are you know that feeling of ownership is there they're stopping you at an airport and saying hello thank you for your work and you know some things will be higher numbers and lower engagement yeah. and i think those will fundamentally be harder to monetize anyway i think higher engagement uh, audiences will be willing to pay and are willing to pay but how do you get there how do you even identify them how do you even know kind of big questions but my other question is this and this is a question that first came up i think maybe in episode 1 of the scene in the unseen about agriculture which was that uh, one of my guests there pointed out how unfair it is that corporatization is not allowed in agriculture because on the one hand it's not allowed because people say oh evil capitalists and all that but the result of not allowing corporatization is that farmers are also forced to be entrepreneurs and in a sense this is unfair i might be good at farming or i might have chosen farming but now you're asking me to learn something completely different which is entrepreneurship mm. and uh, why not let a specialist in that take care of this aspect and i find that the same thing is true with musicians with writers and so on and so forth in the sense that you're never going to make a living from the music itself yeah. right so you went into sound and we'll talk about your journey after the break and all of that in some, some detail but you went into sound other people might do things around producing composing all of which you also do and and also there is a sense among artists ki people say ki revenue stream badal gaya hai you know it's not just about making the music so people listen to it it's also about performing and my question is yeah that that's bloody unfair i could be a musician who just likes creating the music uh, maybe i'm not extroverted maybe i'm i'm not i don't want to go and perform on a stage per se yeah. as you pointed out your the beatles best creative spurt happened after this left performing live and they were just in the studio and then one thing after another and had they continued god knows where they would have gone mm. right so and it it feels unfair to me that all the time artists whether it's musicians or writers or whoever are being given a list of boxes to tick ki aap instagram ke liye aisa karo aap uh, facebook pe aisa karo aap tweet bhi karo yeah. you know uh, if you're a musician live mein paisa hai aap live perform aapko karna padega and it, it seems in a fundamental way unfair because all of these things are different you know there's a different part of you that is sitting down and writing a song a different part of you is singing the song you know there's a difference there also i'm sure and a different part of you is standing in an arena to people who want to hear the song played exactly the same damn way you played it 15 years ago yeah. and um and it's this sort of like how do you deal with this because for someone like you you know who's made a career in sound hmm. uh, who I, i'm guessing you don't mind performing right so all of it is fine you you've kind of managed but should you have had to manage in this way and what does the artist do who cannot do all of these things he may not even bother to try in the first place you know i i use this term like there is this term that <laughs> that ki i'm a professional hobbyist you know man i re- i refuse maybe it's a part of me that just wants to say that i i went through the 4000 weeks without doing a job you know uh, but uh, i'm also saying that because there is no there is no there is no sense of like like a formal industry thing below a certain tier there it just isn't is isn't but there you you are expected to do all of those things in the in the chain take care of everything and you're right it is unfair like i'll give you an example i i i don't have a facebook account and i had to open one because i had to advertise something i wanted to see ki kya hota hai ki agar thoda paisa dalo to boost a post you know i released this i had released some music a few years ago a solo venture and uh, in my mind it was like if 10 people hear it it's a win so picked up decent numbers by that 10 wala metric and but i put some money into it and i realized that 
कि आई कॉन्ट जस्ट लाइक टेक दिस मनी एंड पुट इट लाइक ओके आई वॉन्ट पीपल टू इन बर्लिन टू लिसन टू दिस म्यूजिक बिटवीन लाइक द एड शुड रन बिटवीन लाइक दैट्स दैट्स फॉर माई जॉब यू नो सो देन आई रीचिंग आउट टू पीपल दैट कैन यू हेल्प मी विद दिस एंड ऑब्वियसली दे अग्रीड यू नो बिकॉज दे वर इंटरेस्टेड बट देन केम द थिंग अबाउट लाइक द कॉमर्स कि इतना लगेगा दस द मनी दैट दैट यू नीड टू स्पेंड एंड दिस इज द मनी यू नीड टू पे मी ऑब्वियसली लाइक यू आर आस्किंग दम फॉर लाइक यूर प्रोफेशनल सर्विस राइट सो देन यू लाइक ओके हाउ मच मनी शुड आई पुट इन एंड देन द क्वेश्चन ऑफ लाइक यू डू आई नीड टू पुश दिस म्यूजिक बिकॉज माई 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 जॉब जस्ट लाइक गेट द म्यूजिक मेड एंड देन फिनिश इट आई डोंट इवन वॉन्ट दिस टू बी अ परफॉर्मिंग एक्ट लाइक आई एम प्लेंग गिट लाइक मोर देन वन गिटार ऑन एट आई एम प्लेंग द बेस आई गॉट सम ड्रामर्स बिकॉज और ड्रमर एंड हाइडिंग एन ऑल आई वॉन्ट वॉज द पावर टू टेल ए ड्रमर की हाई हाइट उतना ही खुलेगा लाइक यू नो सो बट बट आई डिड दैट थिंक फॉर अ मंथ और टू एंड यहाँ पे लाइक इट्स इंटरेस्टिंग लाइक यू नो लाइक से वॉरन फॉर एग्जाम्पल ही वॉरन पुट्स आउट द म्यूजिक एंड नाउ इट्स गॉट लाइक दिस थिंग की लाइक द रन वे इज मेड ही जस्ट नीड्स टू ही इज डूइंग इंस्ट्रूमेंटल गिटार म्यूजिक यू नो लाइक कम ऑन कि इतना मतलब हम लाइक इट इज सच अ स्मॉल मार्केट यू नो आई दर यू हैव टू बी अ गिटार गीक टू लाइक इज म्यूजिक and uh, to to at least like get introduced to the music or somebody has to push you into hearing it once you hear it you start hearing the tunes you start hearing the music and you're like okay there is form structure all of that and like you know his it's like great playing <laughs> so you get into it and it becomes a soundtrack of part of your life and all that. but i don't think he's pushing it i don't think he's like creating instagram ads or whatever he like gets on instagram and he'll play for a bit and all that and that's i guess like a form of marketing but i don't think he's thinking of it from that point of view maybe that is the escape route that you start doing the things without telling yourself ki you're doing it this for that reason you know and then you'll be okay with it and the pressure of being that kind of person will not be there because at the at the other end of the spectrum for me at least like there is a, there is a dwaita like when we were getting our website redone <laughs> and the guys will hate me for this if they hear this you know which i'm sure some of them will but uh, i'll tell them the time code ki yahan pe skip kar lena here i'm ranting about you <laughs> but like you know we hired like this a guitar player abhishek his friend um, dev fantastic designer you know and we we spoke with him and he was like yeah i'll do it he did the album art for a second album fantastic album art won, won an award also for it and uh, you know we started sitting in those meetings Uh, I went for one of them. Ki website ka design aisa hona chahiye. Like this is the functionality and all that and vagera vagera. And then I realized that you're you're asking someone professional to do something, and then you're getting involved in that. You know, just because it happens to be presenting your music or your identity, I get it. Like it's of course you have to do it because it is. It, you are the finish line, and you need to check. Say ki okay, this works for me. But I don't know what that point is where that involvement becomes intervention. and that intervention becomes impediment and i think like a lot of musicians because their inefficiency to just step away from something that they think is sacred and created like you know like ki this music and all of that they just impede intervene and they, they just become obstacles and what ends up happening is that this i think that's also partly responsible for this almost like this informal chalta chalte ja raha hai you know like it it nobody is stepping in and saying that i will fix this by supplying like say a social media manager who says more than uh, speak about your day or speak about your past you know like have some sort of an angle to your thing like we hired a social media team once and we were told that ki we will do like a fortnight of nostalgia i'm like really <laughs> you know like okay fine let's do it and then it was like you have to post every day you have to blog every day not blogs but uh, like something or the other like you have to keep creating content like keep, keep. and i'm like man like this is not cool <laughs> like you know when do i and i'll i'll digress for a second yeah so we went we went and shot this thing the durists which used to be the show where uh two musicians from seemingly different universes would get together and like they would meet obviously like it's easy. should i just do it i'll do it like it's put on right like wo ho chuka hai like they've decided and, and like the gana decide new we are writing the song together sure so we we were uh, we were not in that space like in the, not in the not in the on the radar of that company that was producing the show we happened to win the jima which is this thing called the global indian music award whatever from an album we did 
and we got the call the next day that would you like to be on the show sure why won't we do it anyway we go there and uh, so it's advaita and this another um, solo artist called duelist inquiry uh, inquiry whatever he prefers a uh, sahaj so we go to shimla yeah this is a nice setting you know f- we set up our studio space we set up our instruments all of that is happening and i'm like okay chalo but then you realize a show about music right and the show was great okay like this is a rigby disclaimer all of that is given but having said that a show about music all of this man we were there for four days the music happened on the e- third evening we were like do you realize there is no song <laughs> we need to make this song they, like there is all of that content is being created around the main thing which will eventually get showcased and that was kept ki ha wo to bani jayega <laughs> that will happen on the last day so some and the song like you know we've never played that we actually played that song live once we just like disowned it you know like a uh, accidentally swiped right on some tinder date i have no idea what that means i just wanted to say it like ki so, current cultural reference but but yeah it was just about packaging of the entire thing here's the positive thing that i'm trying to talk about like somebody thought of all of it before the music was made over here you make the music and then you have to begin to think of all of that and that i think just keeps makes you distant from the track or from the piece of music that you create from the album that you do whatever like it just it just seems so long ago because in the middle of all of this you're just constantly churning out a new twist or a new reel or a new post so when i guess that's a good thing that the finish line was the song not the starting line and maybe that whatever pipeline needs to be inverted you know like all of that shit is going to flow towards a track which will get made and then it begins to make sense and i think like when musicians artists indie whatever like we start thinking thinking like that maybe it will begin to churn the other way and probably it will work that's a big probably but like yeah <laughs> Other, otherwise wo hi na ki like otherwise there is no there's no right th- 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 what's the word for it like I, i don't know it's some context like a deadline of sorts you know like it's going to get over here you know where is it going to get over at which post at what interaction at which instagram live like at what point do you say ki okay enough has been made for this now i want to sit back and see like it churn on its own and something happen that's also the other thing like no, you just don't allow it to sit and seep in apparently the rule of the game number is that you have to keep doing it it's just exhausting it's not our job you know it's not our job and i have been doing this music thing for 20 years right but this so called whatever media interaction social media thing and game like i can't even claim to play it properly you know i'll do a repost here a tag there and all that but i don't understand like you what is it what is supposed to be the like somebody else has to do it yeah i i, I think a lot of it is you're just ticking boxes in the sense that by now template ban gaya hai ki instagram mein ye karenge isme wo karenge and you're just ticking those boxes and none of it really is meaningful like i sometimes idealistically say that a good product is the best marketing but part of the reason i say that is one i'm privileged enough to have gotten lucky that my product did well enough on its own without me needing to market it and maybe it doesn't hold true for uh, everyone and perhaps i'm just rationalizing my laziness but i think it is unfair to ask all artist like every uh, creator today is in a sense an entrepreneur of his own brand and it is unfair because they, they, they may not have entrepreneurship skills or branding skills and any work they put in for that is taking away from what they could be doing just sitting and uh, creating you know which is why i don't do any sales for the scene and the unseen i'm just happy kind of going from one episode to the other and actually working on the recording of the thing and the other approach that i have towards uh, instagram and all of these is that if you have to do them don't think of them cynically as marketing but think of it as a creation in its own right yeah. so you put in that effort there and you never know maybe that sparks something and that becomes something on its own but let every single thing that you put out there be something that you're happy with as a creator ki yeah. maine ye create kiya hai and not that this is oh you know i've done a 10 minute youtube video abhi i'll promote that with a 1 minute instagram thing <laughs> and you should not think of like that i think you should yeah. think of everything as a separate creation and it's good i think for creators to 
sort of push yourself with new constraints and new formats and all that yeah it the one last thought on this you know i i somehow feel that so i just lying ki ki nah, it's not mine i'm sure i've come from somewhere ki jeetne nahi denge <laughs> you know and i and i somehow feel that at the end of finishing a like a piece of music which comes out into the universe and has now got a life of its own right unless and until you wait for it to impact the lives of whatever fan base you have and patience is well ki wo kam hi hai but uh, unless you wait for it no like it will always be like ki you've not won because i don't consider myself like you know ki 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 it's not working out like it is of course it is but like because kyunki there will always be a team of people or a team of critics or whatever like a bunch of people who will sit down and say ki it did not work because he did not do a dozen instagram posts you were supposed to do a dozen You were supposed to release the video at six o'clock. Why did you release it at four o'clock? <laughs> Why didn't you get behind the scenes and figure out like it is supposed to go out then? But th- that's the that's the part I'm trying to make. Like there is there should be somebody who you should be and like here here's the thing. Like if you if you want to use that kind of service, you should be able to pay for it. Which means that you should be able to rationalize that I am doing this. I'm putting in the money because it will get me to a point where I can. charge more for whatever i'm doing you know like a performance or jo bhi hai like you know some sort of thing but yeah wo jeetne nahi denge <laughs> like there always be a reason i feel like ki you can rationalize ki why did it fail you know but i am now looking at it from the flip side ki there has to be a reason that that i've that i've made, that people like me with like who've been around for like 20 years and kar ki you just doing it you know and you're doing it because you get it done and you move on and eventually that catches a life of its own and it feeds into something else that you want to do right now yeah i don't know maybe it, uh, it goes to that surface area of luck thing again you know it just has to it's it's just becoming wider over a period of time but we have to give it time yeah i mean i think another activity where something that is created with a lot of love just disappears into nothingness uh, is uh, lunch so <laughs> let's take a quick commercial break and then we'll come back at the end of it Long before I was a podcaster, I was a writer. In fact, chances are that many of you first heard of me because of my blog India Uncut, which was active between 2003 and 2009 and became somewhat popular at the time. I love the freedom the form gave me, and I feel I was shaped by it in many ways. I exercise my writing muscle every day and was forced to think about many different things because I wrote about many different things. Well, that phase in my life ended for various reasons, and now it is time to revive it. Only now I'm doing it through a newsletter. I have started the India Uncut newsletter at indiauncut.substack.com where I will write regularly about whatever catches my fancy. I'll write about some of the themes I cover in this podcast and about much else. So please do head on over to indiauncut.substack.com and subscribe. It is free. Once you sign up, each new installment that I write will land up in your email inbox. You don't need to go anywhere. So subscribe now for free. The India Uncut newsletter at indiauncut.substack.com. Thank you. Welcome back to the scene and the unseen. I'm chatting with Gaurav Chintamani, who, besides being a musician and the editor of my show, also happens to be, as I accidentally discovered in a strange way of speaking, a cousin of mine, <laughs> which was uh, kind of uh, bizarre because I was sitting once at uh, uh, Gaurav's house after a recording or after a trip to Delhi, and we were just chatting, and he told me about uh, this cousin of his. who sounded this disconcertingly like a cousin of mine so i said what is his name and he took the name and i said oh he's my cousin also so there was this moment where gorov looked absolutely shocked at me like what the fuck are you talking about and then we realized that uh, his aunt married my uncle to put a long story short and uh, their child was a set cousin in uh, question and uh, also uh, by the way a cousin that i met only in adulthood because the family was kind of strange and estranged and all of those things so uh, which is kind of weird but you know when it's like cousins by marriage in this kind of long about way does it count ab <laughs> we'll make it count <laughs> we'll yeah. make it count uh, that's that's the thing now like ki i have extended the the circle of like ki who falls into the family like based just based on this like you know man come on like that day was like i was ki 
two things happened one was like i i'm convinced now that everybody you're supposed to meet you will end up meeting them like nothing can stop from that happening and dusra like what like ki <laughs> kya what was that connection also but yeah it's fantastic <laughs> so also you are the only player in the family who's beaten me at chess so yeah okay so that is all the more reason i should not be counted as part of a family <laughs> right <laughs> yeah no we'll play after this maybe uh, i'm i'm sure you'll beat me uh, i'm not always good uh, and and you were drunk that day i think when we played well i uh, as a couple of drinks in and uh, you were off like uh, you were, you had just finished like that marathon s- s- bunch of sessions at the studio and i think you were extra alert okay. like yeah i don't think yeah, the post uh-huh. recording uh, crash of epinephrine had happened <laughs> like but but of course you're better when come on like yeah, yeah. no i mean so, uh, you had alcohol i had modafinil so uh, <laughs> that does uh, together uh, i think amount to a lot of uh, uh, difference so you know you are possibly uh, the <laughs> cousin of mine that i know the least about so fill me in a little bit like uh, where did you grow up what was your childhood like yeah well uh, so dad's ex army so the growing up thing happened all over the country and i was born in madras and my, around that time my dad was posted in jamshedpur if i'm not mistaken jamshedpur so we've done matlab i've i've, I've done jamshedpur firozpur devlali alabad gurdaspur back to delhi agartala it's agartala and then delhi so yeah like changed a lot of schools uh, never made any friends and never yeah i i it, it happened uh, after devlali i think devlali were the happiest years uh, of my growing up bit uh, made a lot of uh, i mean i didn't stay in touch with those people but uh, made a lot of good friends and uh, from there i realized that when i was just settling in when i'd finally cracked the like the social aspect of i don't know the like the constant army moving thing and all and i was never friends with uh, i i could never find uh, people to hang out with uh, in the kids of the officers that dad was working with and uh, yeah from there we moved to agartala and it was uh, it was miserable man <laughs> like what a like i'm sure it's a great place now or maybe it is a great place from a certain angle from which i never viewed it but yeah i was i was miserable and before agartala we were in alabad my dad's side of the family like they are uh, they had moved to alabad so my uh, dad's g- uh, grandfather my great grandfather he he was um, so he was from vizag and he started uh, writing he was a journalist and uh, he was asked to move to alabad by i might get this wrong but i think it was madan mohan malviya who had a paper and he asked him to move so he went and he uh, he took over what became the leader this newspaper and um, so that side of the family has like a past in alabad and all that so when but anyway so we were in alabad wahan se devlali gaye and alabad was miserable i was in convent for a for a better part of the first few years and i hated it i hated it like my yeah i have very very few mem- memories and i don't think any of them are happy <laughs> it was just like uh, there was this fixed thing of yeah i i i, rem- I remember seeing like some really bad movies uh, which were forced entertainment in convent schools bad ke chidi chidi bang bang dikha rahe and wahan se i think devlali we i shifted to a uh, kendra vidyalay made some really good friends and uh, started uh, yeah like just just uh, started being okay with like being in a place and then we moved again agartala miserable hated it <laughs> and uh, i'm jumping through hoops here but agartala there was a regiment band and uh, so my take on that became ki acha agar yahi pe if i'm stuck here i might as well uh, make the most of it so dad was always posted like we, he would get posted but he would be moved to a forward area uh yami they have this thing like the family stays back in peace areas and field areas or where the officer moves to so we were in agartala and dad was uh, moving around in nagaland and uh, so whenever he would come back uh, the little time that i would get with him a lot of it would revolve around music and uh, again i have very few memories of of growing up but i i remember the time like i heard uh, hard days night you know my dad played that song and that first chord came and i was like ye kya hai and uh, hard days night and uh, thriller michael jackson and die straits 
like it it was so i i started getting into that music because because of dad and then the, like i said there was a regiment band so i went in and i started with the drums did a little bit of drums I couldn't convince my parents to buy me a drum kit ki ghar pe hoga shor sharaba and then i figured like uh, the easier way in is a guitar it's more portable <laughs> so i moved to the guitar as per and uh, yeah after agatala we moved to delhi in 94 and uh, we spent a couple dad spent a couple of years in delhi and then he got posted to kashmir and obviously like again that forward area field peace thing and we could not move like, uh, we stayed back in delhi and 94 say i've been in delhi finished the last four years of school in delhi and uh, now the guitar was in like i was yeah in delhi like suddenly it opened up i i got to meet a lot of people in the in the school who were listening to like cooler music <laughs> newer music like some shit like guns and roses and all the pantera and all all of that started happening but uh, but yeah 90 94 and 95 ke aas paas uh, i started uh, i was always good at studies i i could get by we were chatting about this about how uh, we would you, you could do uh, crack this up really easily like it wasn't hard like you know once you understood the the system of like ki padhane ki koshish kya kar rahe hain like i could just get it you know and i was initially i was one of those really irritating kids as my as my my wife priya calls me ki oh, you were one of those who used to finish the curriculum in the summer holidays i used to do that and just try to be like you know pale i was one of those kids but then eventually like interest just it leaned more and more towards music and uh, i just yeah i don't know like you know i did the there are two things that which can totally ruin you if you start listening to the doors at the wrong time <laughs> and if you read ayn rand at the wrong time and i think i did both of those and i was very easily i was i think i was very ductile i just got you know i, I got this idea of myself which was it's not really like is made up and uh, but between that the music and a few other things like i realized that there is only one thing that makes everything else is like to calm down a little bit you know like every, every time i would sit with the guitar and i was not really good like i i didn't have any teachers and all that i'm listening to songs cassette player pe bar bar ja ke and then i'm trying to figure out the mechanics of what is going on so i'm i'm self taught in that way and um, and yeah so uh, school gets over and i ask my parents for um, a year off because i like i can't choose this is 98 i finished school in 98 and i said yeah i can't i don't know what i want to do like i just can't jump into something and the last two years of school were like all like seeped in music like i was just doing that but uh, south indian parents not that they were strict in forces or whatever but they said ki degree le lo just do something and then you can take a year off so i enrolled myself into uh, two things i you know i was like i asked dad ki kya karu so he said computers kar lo mom she said commerce kar lo <laughs> so and i had sciences in school i had, <laughs> I had that so like sure so i uh, but my thing was ki i won't go to a college like i i'm very introverted that way i don't i feel like i i i get sapped if i hang out with people out of like you know like forced interaction so i just i can't do it so i didn't go to college and every every one of my um, like the, the people i used to hang out with in school all of them left the city and i had this blissful two year stint from 98 to 2000 where i didn't know anyone in the city that i had been living in for 6 years <laughs> and it was amazing because initially i used to complain about you know like making friends and then moving away and then having to start all over again and it felt like that like i could start all over again and i chose not to like just hang out with anyone so i had this thing where i would uh, i was doing computers uh, i would I, i would assemble computers for people just for like a little bit of pocket money take that pocket money buy <laughs> cassettes from clydes and uh, the odd guitar thing and delhi has that used to have that uh, sunday market darya ganj market where there was book books on the yeah like the entire road would be cordoned off and there would be books so i would go every sunday and i would pick up books and uh, just that's it like spend a week just like doing a little bit of coding assembling playing guitar brilliant two years like i didn't do anything else except that you know and uh, at the end of the two years i like i have figured ki okay this computer thing is not going to work you know like it's a no conventional south indian trad thing ho jayega computer engineer ban gaya and all that like i can't do it and uh, the commerce thing also like i loved uh, i loved the thing of like flipping from science to this and uh, then a part of me was just like why don't i do this in school like why did why did i just assume that i have to do science 
एंड देन आई स्टार्ट हेटिंग द सिस्टम इवन मोर कि वेर आर द काउंसलर्स वेर आर द पीपल हु फाइंड हु यू आर वॉट यू आर सपोज टू बी एंड देन देन ऑब्वियसली लाइक डिस्टल डाउन टू लाइक वेर आर द टीचर्स एंड आई जस्ट स्टार्ट हेटिंग एवरी थिंग अबाउट एनी थिंग दैट इज लाइक ऑर्गेनाइज दिस होल विच इज आई रॉटिकल बिकॉज आर टीचिंग राइट नाउ बट यू कैन वील कम दैट लेटर बट बट या आई आई फिनिश कॉलेज एंड देन आई गॉट माई ईयर ऑफ and i then doubled down on the whole thing of like up to like i will do nothing so i was i was playing doing that whole sunday book thing and for a year i just did that like i just played as much music i i formed like a band and nothing like just meeting twice thrice a week and just like playing tunes and even from then like the idea was ki okay these are a set of tunes that all of us know uh, if you can find like a common language in this like do jam based music which is stupid because i mean none of us were educated enough to improvise with any sort of skill we were improvising by just like we land somewhere and uh, i changed the kind of music i was listening to uh, like from i discovered blues and that's it like i remember the day i heard just like the day i remember like i heard beatles i remember the day i heard stevie ray vaughan and that first note like just just sliced threw me and then i was just hooked the song was it it was this song called the sky is crying which is a uh, his his take on the elmo james classic and that's it like i was like ye hi satya hai <laughs> you know <laughs> because i i don't know like I'm, there is obviously like there is a there is a sort of um, personality in rock hard rock metal all of that which just doesn't you know it was i was convincing myself that i kind of like that music and people around me are liking that music anyway so uh, this this gets over and um, I figured that I need to find a way to be next to this audio music thing. I still didn't know like audio and sound is you can get into it. So I did a little bit of research, found a place in Chennai, and uh, told my mom. And she grew up in Chennai, uh, Madras, so born brought up. And I told her that I want to go to Chennai and study audio. I kept muted that and I said engineering zor se. <laughs> so she like yeah yeah go go go. And my grandmother was still uh, living in Chennai back then. So 2001 I went. I did this thing in uh, Chennai for a year. And uh, yeah, that was like the short version, which I think are the only relevant version bits of uh, landing from all over the country to Delhi and then just like finding my way to uh, like get closer to doing audio and music. Yeah. you didn't uh, strike me as a misanthrope all this time so <laughs> you know the fact that you were like in the city and not going to college because you don't want to meet people and 6 years um, after 6 years you find yourself with having to make friends all over again is like uh, kind of very uh, sort of interesting it reminds me of both of me and i think jay arjun singh also in his episode uh, yeah. had a similar kind of uh, uh, not fitting in uh, kind of story which which, which actually makes it um, makes us all very lucky that we live in a time where we can discover friends outside of our uh, you know geographical constraints or whatever it is i mean if you weren't in delhi if you were in a smaller town maybe harder to get into music yeah. if i didn't have the internet i think if jay didn't have the internet if you know anybody listening didn't have the internet we'd probably you know just be in a different world and part of different communities of circumstance rather than choice yeah yeah i you know the i think I think a lot of people just who are I guess of this they have this thing of like not like introverts you know like they it was a crushing time <laughs> to grow up in and I mean it was good when you were really on your own at least like I I remember like you know sitting with a book or listening to just music and all that and being very happy like and the the, the, the pressure of just like meeting people and like you know striking up conversations trying to find like middle ground or something and I remember when you moved to Delhi uh, 1994 94 it was uh, i had the sentence exam to school and it was uh if is that uh, italy brazil world cup final mm. the way bajio missed the uh, penalty kick mm. and brazil won i was up till like 6 in the morning or 4 4 in the morning mm. it was, it was, the world cup was happening in america i think i was watching uh, soccer and uh, next morning went and went to the school that i was i was going to join and uh, massive school yeah. mass school to way too many people and i just remember feeling like nervous and all that ki yaar yahan pe to it will be instead of feeling like there i i will be able to like find like a tribe over here i just felt like ki man to get lost in a place like this will be some and for the first i want to say three months at least i did not speak to anyone i just go to school 
like do my thing and then come back home and then just wait to get to like you know playing a little bit of guitar or just like listening to some music or reading a book or something or the other but like i just yeah it was it that time was just like very i very difficult and i think like post the the internet and thoda sa like being okay with who you are for, because i really think like this constant moving you you have to be really lucky like this this whole army kid thing and all that you have to be really lucky to be able to find who you really are during the stage of growing up which it's supposed to be like right it it never happens like it's you you're always like in two years like you're thrust into a different part of the country and some people really take to it i didn't you know my elder brother i guess did in a certain way but i i didn't like i just i used to hate it and because the culture changes and uh, slangs change and the uh, like everything everything just changes and you're also growing up through all these times like, it is bloody difficult and i don't know like this is not the kind of at least like late 80s and 90s and all that you can't i don't even think like i the thought crossed my mind that i should go and you know ask my parents ki like karte kya hai like how did what happened when you were growing up and how did you tackle this and all that and which i didn't and that though was always like somewhere else you know but uh, but really difficult time agar wo this whole early 2000 internet music thing had not happened yeah i would have been a sad mba somewhere <laughs> yeah like just taken some sort of a path which was said ki okay this is this is what you need to just follow because i i, I guess that that's what you end up settling for eventually ki okay theek hai if you can't i'm not saying like i've charted some great course or whatever but like at least it's mine you know so that but yeah it's, it's it was really difficult time man really i, I think one of the parts of growing up and and with some people it is not even something they reach into adulthood but maybe later and some people perhaps even never achieve it is that going through that whole process of becoming comfortable in your own skin right and 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 before you become comfortable in your own skin before you can get out of the anxiety of what others might think of you i think you also have to discover what your own faking skin is yeah. right because too often you know your parents will have one expectation of you people around you will have another expectation you will have expectations formed from mimetic desire as it were yeah. uh, in the modern age i guess uh, instagram can be crushing for many young people because uh, uh, you know they keep comparing the projected lives of others with the real lives of their own and that yeah. just can never end well yeah. it's i can imagine it has been crushing and maybe it's like you said is lucky for both of us that the internet was there that we had access to books and all of that and we could at least come to a definition of our own skin or a better understanding which we might not have 30 years earlier so what were th- those sort of tugs and pressures happening with you like i'm guessing that you feel kind of comfortable in your own skin now that you know what you're doing and why you're doing it and you're cool with that but what was that process like of arriving there i think uh i think the awareness of making that kind of nudge constantly to figure oneself out was not really there like it was just too much uh i don't know if pressure is the right word but i think it was just too much of uh, uh, stimuli and being present like you just have to be you have to play a part you know and i'm not saying that i i was expected to but but i was like like i said i was you know i was good in studies and uh, i started thinking that okay this is what i'm supposed to do like this this i'm i'm i don't i don't have the i don't think i understood the concept of like the job or whatever but uh, this is also growing up in the 80s and all nobody's telling you what to do and uh, this is equal measure like the lack of awareness on, on my parents generation like they didn't know like i don't think they knew that the parenting was a thing <laughs> you know so either that or like ha huh, abhi like ki i'm not saying that they didn't pay rent but like there is no thing of ki nobody's telling you like this is the pa- part that you're supposed to execute so i think like i ended up saying that ki okay i have to do this like ki oh you have to be good at studies ki okay so dad goes to office you know mom is doing her thing and uh, i'm going to school for 6 hours so this is my job so be good at this so i became really decent like i would do my thing like you know like study well and all that and then uh, there is like a ceiling to that also ki like okay oh the, so you you know some forgy party is happening and mom is like ha ha he's the academic one and he's the creative one so like referring to my uh, creative matlab yeah whatever the non academic he's on good at studies 
which uh, which is so much less of pressure like you know it's it's i i feel like at least through the education system that the school that the country offers us like it's better to be average <laughs> than to be exceptional like yeah. don't peak so early you know 85% rule or something but uh, but i feel way like i was constantly looking for what is uh, i i guess answers for what is it that is expected of me you know because every once in a while you get reprimanded like you say dad's dad's like commanding officer for a regiment for example you know and you are you're a serious kid you're doing your thing and all that and then like this chatter chatter starts around you like see your sabka beta is doing something and all that okay, okay. so i mean i'm i'm not saying that it's kind of shaping you but like you start okay fine like there is a, is there a part that i'm supposed to like execute pull off and there's no directive coming from the higher of authority there's no memo which is being shared ki aisa karo waisa karo and before you know it like you know you, you are thrust into like different schools where different pe- where you just trying to figure out like who are the people you're supposed to hang out with and it, what i'm try- i think what i'm trying to get at is that there are too many roles and too many parts to play and that the the nudges were now i'm thinking about it like thinking about it in hindsight like it's it's just that i think i was at least me i was i was just waiting to you know way to get away from having to deliver to other people you know whether it's my parents with my academic performance or whether it's my school teachers with whatever or whatever and like is there a st- is there a st- defined some sort of a thing or a standard that i can come up with and i can work towards that and uh, yeah i don't I, i don't think i remember a particular event or a process but it is definitely like the like the thing that you know like music could be a thing <laughs> like that and in that like it's truly ki ye jo abhi ho raha hai like whatever i'm doing whatever i'm playing and it's nothing it's like i'm trying to play a cover i'm trying to learn a jeff beck tune or something or the other but like this is mine right now you know and it's and i ended up i think that's what i ended up doing i ended up using that very feeble thing as a definition of like ki this is me you know because nobody is telling me to play guitar but I, but people are expecting me to study <laughs> or people are expecting me to do this or exp- so this is my thing you know i i fi- i got good at a, s- s- some sports for example and then i think that comparative thing doesn't make didn't make like just didn't work it and i think like just this finding a bit of playing a little bit of music and just figuring out my reactions to every obstacle or every every thing that i climbed over in trying to get better at a particular instrument yeah i guess it's that cliche thing of like akela chhod diya and over a period of time like you just took the shape of the thing that you're sitting in you know mm-hmm. like in the sense ki like it it becomes you like this th- there's no problem with being around here and this place is okay and uh, also it's it's only the sense of like playing a little bit of music which made it so that i was fine with now being anywhere you know like i was completely okay with like not having like people to hang out with initial parts of delhi you know that was fine like you know ki guitar baja lunga and once school got over and people hooked off in different places like a lot of them came to pune or went to chennai and all to study and all that right after school it was fine ki theek hai like i'm just doing this i think the the minute i let myself be okay with that i am not much to the disappointment of a, of a lot of people you know like you know i'm sure my mom was pretty disappointed because serious like, good academic you know in in this conventional school sense and oh you're not going to do that and uh, you know ki the doctor nahi banoge or some shit like that like yeah but like yaar nahi banna you know and kyunki uh, it, it it just felt like you're playing some parts but uh, but i have to say this like ki at least like dad dad and mom both like are like ki okay it's your life theek hai this is the expectation but figure it out that then your mistakes will also be yours you know so you can crack crack that if you can if you can be okay with that and if you can crack that open and be okay with that being exposed to all of that ki whatever decision you're taking make it right you know and make it right to the point where just it's there is there is no pressure and there is no i'm not saying there's no support system but there's no yeah like the, the ki ki this is something that you're getting into on your own accord so sort that out and i think that's more liberating than like pressure ki acha theek hai i will take care of it like you know whatever happens yeah but uh, again like I, i don't remember that particular set of circumstances which which took me to that point but i'm sure there's the soundtrack was you know <laughs> out of tune guitars which i was trying to like play so
yeah and i i guess that's also a pressure of its own uh, or maybe then it's not because you know today we can look back and you know that whole thing about owning your mistakes right your mistakes are your own and today you can look back and say right okay i took this path and that means i didn't take that other path and this is seminal it is a complete break you know it is what it is and there's never any turning back once you take a particular road you're never going to go back and become a doctor or an engineer or live that conventional life and so on and so forth but you know that now but in the moment i guess you're just kind of going with the flow doing what you enjoy and uh, you know uh, all of that what what was audio engineering like because one thing that you've expressed uh, at at different times is and even earlier in this conversation i think is about how when you're learning something whether it's music or whether it's cooking it's 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 thrilling to go back to first principles and try to figure shit out from there hmm. to kind of understand the why behind the thing hmm. uh is that a sort of a, a trait of mind that you always had growing up or is that a trait of mind that formed itself when you found something that you loved like maybe playing the guitar or like maybe just learning audio that then it doesn't seem like work anymore then you want to know more and the and the why is you're going to get there anyway yeah i would like to believe as the former but i definitely think it's the latter <laughs> that you know i think this whole music audio sound thing was the first time where so for me it I I'm very I was very clear I think about one thing that there can't be life and work ka separation like it can't be that like I can't be ki okay now I'm doing this and I need to stop doing this to be able to live my life you know that just that arrangement just does not make sense to me so this whole thing of like just just to go, go back a little and like talk about that whole school thing and like picking ki decide karo college mein kya karna hai and, and as if like is going to dictate and the kind of pressure like you know like i'm talking about 98 99 like the guy you know everybody like cut off list mein everybody ke marks upar chale ja chale ja rahe hain best of four mein itna hona chahiye like the, the whole thing of pick now stick with it because you have to do it there is no other way and you know the awareness like is not there and i to refuse to give in to that pressure i i was just like yeah, i will crack man like you know and also i have done the contract of studying for 12 years so i don't even want to do college <laughs> you know like i really i haven't gone back and collected my degree also i'm like yeah, i finished it you know the marks came i graduated whatever and wo ek degree wahan padi hui ek yahan padi hui i haven't gone back and uh, thankfully i've never needed a loan in which i have to show like i'm a graduate or something <laughs> but uh, but i haven't because i was like that's the contract i've finished it you know now i need to really find what is it that i want to do which in which i will be you know you can say either you're always working or you're always living like so for me i find i know it sounds like i don't know cheesy or what the word is but like i find audio everywhere you know i will yeah i will look for hacks of like say contrast around me and try to apply them in a in a sense of audio so i it, it's become this like the, the only con- precondition to the entire thing was ki i want to do something which makes me feel and this is as early as 2000 like which makes me feel like i am not like moving between different versions of myself like that is that just sounds exhausting tiring and demanding and then add on to this a layer of eventually if you if you if you find a partner and all that and then like she will also be going through like her own set of like shifts and like what we are four different people <laughs> you know and the and according to the gospel it's two lost souls in a fish bowl not four <laughs> so yeah. so so if you're alone you're two lost souls in a fish bowl already yeah <laughs> that's the starting point so the mere hisab se like just the just the just the main thing of doing something which doesn't there's no line separating that, that that this stops and that begins that's the criteria and and the criteria is music but then you know like let's like increasing the surface area so as to speak ki what is music and what are the different parts of it so i i was very clear as early as 2000 because i looked you know you would never hear about like gigs happening ki delhi there are there are concert venues or there's like a cultural thing where performing musician is a thing there isn't the, you know there is n- a two i want to say the word there there parikrama <laughs> you know and i remember like sneaking out of the house like you know with a friend of mine his dad's scooter which we pushed till like a certain point on the road ki awaz na jaye you know then we started an event and it <laughs> i remember this gig uh, it was happening in a school in uh, delhi father agnel school south delhi mein and parikrama was blasting away 
I'm a, like, I'm a kid. I'm class 12, like, yeah, like final year of school. And Soli Srabji's house is pretty close by. And he's having a dinner. He sent cops, man. Like, he's very loud music. Band karwao. You know, so like, I'm saying ki, that is, that is, there are no clubs, there are no pubs. And the concerts are getting shut down by like... Soli Srabji. Yeah, people <laughs> who's, who was... I think he was on the Jazz Yatra committee. Anyway, like the, the like a lover of music, so I should speak. But like he band karwao. So I was very clear ki performing musician, like I don't know what that means. You know, and then I was very aware that I'm, I'm not, I wasn't at a point where I could like say ki, oh, I am something worth like, you know, ki, like hear me play. Like I was not that good. I was not. So then I figured like there, are, there have to be these points which are connected to the world of music. And stepping away, music becomes audio, audio becomes engineering. And then I'm like, okay, fine, what are the places where we can go? So Chennai happened to be one place, Bombay the other. Bombay said to Bombay, uh, FTI was one place, but then it was very, it was not about music. It was about like sound, which maybe would have been a good thing. But uh, again, I thought like he bought formal entrance exam, all of that. And there was no way like, you know, like I, I just didn't make sense in my head. And uh, so I went to I went to Chennai and I don't think I was taught anything over there. <laughs> like I was not like again, like it was it was just this. Um, yeah, at least I was, uh, you know, I, I, I had been uh, I had prepped myself for 12 years of disappointment in, in schooling anyway. So it was fine. <laughs> like it wasn't that great that uh, that school was OK. But what they did have was a couple of studios and uh, I happened to be one of the guitar players. Maybe there was another guy, but uh, probably the only guitar player for like a for a short window of time, where I ended up playing on a lot of people's recordings. So I just ended up being in the studio for a for long stints, you know. And we were staying close by, and uh, yeah, I just spent so I just spent so much time in the studio that uh, that I I started looking at uh, how to connect these dots of like being performing musician to maybe writing some music on your own to maybe just engineering for other people and uh, it did not it like nothing nothing seminal in learns of like uh, in time in sense of aha moments happen during the engineering thing like you're you're too close to it you know you're just trying to like put in the hours and finish uh, assignments or whatever and finish curriculum jobi and uh, that got over and again the same thing like of all of my so-called friends like just moving away that happened like people came back to Bombay some stuck around in Chennai but everybody joined the studio and uh, I wanted to give the whole performing musician thing a bit you know like a chance ki maybe and uh, I remember I came to Bombay my brother had some uh, friends and who had some go uh, through some common friends I met some people who who were like uh, some were performing musicians some were just like technicians engineers but like also play a little bit of guitar so I met a few people and uh, I remember I remember telling my like I, I met this guy called Floyd Fernandez and he's from the city uh, he's one of those like his level of his, his mastery on the instrument is like scary you know and he doesn't care. He doesn't give a fuck about it. He's so good. He doesn't, care. and he just, you know, he's not a professional musician in the sense like he's not performing, but he is, uh, he's always playing. And I remember I met him and he was like, oh yeah, yeah, let's go home. And uh, we went to his place and he opened his closet and there were black t-shirts and guitars. That's it. Took out a guitar. He's chatting with me. He was telling me about the city, about blah, blah, blah. And he's a, he's an engineer. Like he's a systems, in, uh, like a studio engineer, not uh, in front of the desk, but like maintenance and all that and serious electronic brain and all. Just talking away, chatting away, just playing, like ripping on the guitar in front of me while doing this also, while talking to me about the harsh realities of Bombay and all that. And this is my first time here. And this is like the center of the industry and all that i remember going back like when i left his house and i remember telling myself ki boss guitar baja ke to it's not you're not going to cut it <laughs> so you better find like like what is the next knife in that so-called swiss army like bring that one out <laughs> this is not fitting it and then i just went all in on figuring out this whole production thing so i went back to delhi and uh, i had a I had a couple of like just interviews lined up with like some studios and all that. And I was like, yeah, I'm very lazy. And we were living in Gurgaon. My dad had retired uh, from the army. So we moved to Gurgaon. And uh, this is Gurgaon in 2002. 
so it is it's a nightmare right now it was a barren nightmare then it's just like it's nothing you know mm-hmm. and uh, anyways we're living there and all the action is happening in a certain part of delhi and by action i mean like minimal action like it's not bombay level at all but but yeah i, I figured ki ye to nahi hoga like i can't like go on my bike and go to a place and sit in front of a desk and hit r <laughs> you know like i can't do it r for record but i can't and, and then i i said ki theek hai like maybe i'm not the level of like a floyd fernandez of all those people but i can play i know that much so started moving around in the circuit a little bit find look you know doing the hard thing of making friends and telling them i'm also a guitar player and all that and i and there was this p- a point from 2003 to 2006 where all of this was happening together like I, i would get a project like say maybe an odd jingle and i started taking it to uh, i took it to a studio uh, which which is the one that you record in when you come to delhi and uh, this gentleman called arjun sen he was running a studio and i went in there and the first project i ever did was uh, people in delhi will be familiar with this there is this spiritual guru nirankar <laughs> nirankari baba i did his anthem <laughs> so everything from like kidish nursery rhymes to like spiritual gurus ke anthems to whatever like corporate presentations and, and you been like playing on them or composing i composed it i composed it and so nirankari baba's anthem is composed by you ha the, the <laughs> at least the one that came out unless until they have uh, changed it the one that came out in uh, 2003 yeah wow, wow. yeah kishor kumar's son amit kumar mm-hmm. he sang it Wow. Yeah, yeah. He I remember we were doing the session uh Delhi the, in the in the studio. It used to be called Sound Advice then now it's called Quarter Note. So, uh we were doing the session and he came in and he sang his thing and he did a take. He was in Delhi and he did this whole Kishore Kumar tribute night thing the night before. I remember I went the, the, so the director told me ki ha unko ja ke de do aur bata do ki kya tune wagera wagera. So this kid I walk into the room and I'm like I'm obviously halka sa enamored like I'm a fan of like Kishore Kumar who is it? and this is his son like he'll be as cool and he was i actually don't have any memory of him but he was okay he was not rude or anything but he heard the tune and he said ki what am i supposed to sing this is just the arrangement so i had so i played the entire melody on the guitar he said nahi 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 koi kisi se gawa ke and then he just left so i said okay so i sat up the entire night and i sang and i can't sing i can't sing two notes <laughs> you know so i sang and i uh, tuned it did other things dro- dropped it off uh raat ko so uh, like at 3 in the morning at high thinking that he will see it in the morning the cd will be delivered to him and hear it obviously he did not hear it but he came to the studio he did a take he learned the tune he's like ha ha bahut acha hai bahut acha and he sang and he was very happy and it was a good take <laughs> and i remember like i said i had was making notes you know i i have this thing of like uh, which everybody does like uh, whoever is producing vocals ki uh, the lyric sheet ke upar they will making notes ki or oh, do this again do that again and all that so he said ki ha sahi hai like party is over i said so can we do again so, do some takes again and he's like what do you mean again like what do you want to do so i pointed out things to him and suddenly like the weight changed you know and he was like oh this shit just became serious like you are also listening and you know like he he was very he was very cool like he was like okay okay i see what you want and i'll also deliver so that was the first session i ever did like you know and uh, then aj arjun sen who used to run the studio he was like man like kind of cool you know like you hang out if you ever want to bring a, work, a project here your work here just forget little did i know that aj uh, i don't know if you're familiar with uh, this gentleman from uh, northeast called uh, luma jao yeah, yeah, society so Legend. aj is luma jao's guitar player he, no. aj was the guitar player for luma jao aj he's legendary <laughs> right like he is um, it's a shame that like not enough people know about him and his music has not reached but he's he's the he's my favorite guitar player of uh, country yeah and if not like also the list of like your guitar players of all time anyway so we i started hanging around the studio and i would take projects over there and uh, one day i walked in and um, aj was practicing with his trio and he has a band called hft uh, which uh, stands for high fucking time <laughs> and uh, fantastic music fantastic music and uh, i yeah i just i just started spending more and more time over there in around 2006 uh 2006 aj was like he's had it he's had enough he's like he's done with the city and he wanted to move so he uh he was giving the space up and he was moving to himachal beer and i said i will take it so uh i mean i obviously did not buy the studio but like everything inside the studio equipment little bit that was put up i yeah i, I went to my dad and i i borrowed a little bit of money i had had some money from the projects that i had done and i just bought the space with a friend who who was my partner at the studio and we ran the place together 
well, together in the sense like it was again like professional hobby it's never a business but yeah 2006 i got the space and then i just started now by 2006 i was just playing with as many bands as i could like i would get a gig i would just take it you know i i i played gigs with, i had two slip discs by 2007 Wow. I played a gig with like you know sitting in a like almost like a wheelchair thing I was wheeled up to the stage and I because I'd committed and uh, yeah I was playing like 3 4 sometimes 5 nights a week like wherever I wherever I could find a gig and uh, but this engineering side of it the around that time I was not devoting too much time to it but I was I always always had it like thoda sa production work the odd jingles coming in you know and delhi is very like uh, corporate film documentary film that kind of thing so i started doing a lot of that and uh, yeah 2000 2006 ke aas paas like i've i have i was playing with this band called artisan limited and uh, enet philip the, the the girl who runs the berkeley indian ensemble so she started this thing in delhi called artisan limited and it was a really cool thing uh, f- about 30 40 singers and the core band and uh, you do everything you know from gospel to r&b to hindustani classical all of that and uh, we recorded an album and uh, a lot of the people in uh, artisan limited are also in the beta so i met a uh, just a circle of musicians that you ended up meeting like just like you know they grew a little bit and uh, 2007 i 2007 yeah around that time i just uh, there was a opening in advaita like i heard that ki ki bass player ka spot available hai so i went and i said ki like i will audition and i will if if there is a spot open thankfully they didn't ask me to audition because uh, i didn't know how to play bass <laughs> yeah i just figured like you know ki i did the cheesy thing of like the stupid thing ki ha do string kam hai aur ek octave niche hai <laughs> like <laughs> kya hi hoga baja lenge but uh, but i was subbing with a few uh, subbing in a doing sessions with a few bands of playing bass you know this is really cheesy joke ki this guy uh, i was literally that guy in the joke ki this this guy goes to a master you know bass player and says ki can you teach me like how to play the bass he's like yeah yeah sure 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 no problem so his first lesson sets down is like there are four strings these are the frets these are the notes uh, now memorize this and come back like you know in two days and we'll begin like two days later he doesn't show up so he calls him he's like where are you he's like no no i'm playing a gig you know <laughs> so that's the thing of like bass ki ha baja lo root note and all that but anyway that happened and then i always managed to maintain this balance of doing production work to live work like never make any one of them the staple through which like you know life will be lived out and food will be put on the table and all that so not putting all the eggs in one basket and being being as uh, yeah as seriously like pursuing both of them so but but this thing of like uh, audio engineering uh, uh, and uh, i still think like it's a, it's a, it's a very uh, like the at least at least le- leading up to leading up to the first few years of the of the working life i i really felt like you know it's like learning on a job because you learn certain concepts in school which were not drilled in properly and i think like the entire angle of the the way it was taught in school also was wrong like it's by wrong i mean like it's not it's not the right way to teach it and i think eventually like yeah i'm, I'm jumping ahead but like that's what i like i figured like how would i like to be taught and that's how i teach the production gig now but yeah that's how the whole engineering game played out and i still have the studio it's still that basement in shivalik in malvianagar and uh, yeah it's like my hotel california i'm not leaving <laughs> yeah yeah so, i'm glad you're not leaving i'm feeling a little uh, sort of uh, i i have great affection for the place and now i'm uh, i also have a feeling like i didn't appreciate it enough now that you've told me the back story and who all played there and uh, what all uh, happened i remember when i was in uh, sort of delhi last in august i was recording 12 episodes in 12 days <laughs> kind of foolhardy so i don't know if you you were there for any of these sessions because uh, one or other of your assistants would also be there on the days that you weren't but um, the 10th episode i recorded on the 10th consecutive day was with natasha badwar mm, and that that, huh. uh, that started at 2 pm and uh, it i think you were there 
yeah uh, for, for the, the start starting of bit really. yeah 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 where you discussed unschooling and so on so uh, that started at 2 and ended at about 10:30 at night and we didn't record for the entire period the episode is like 5 hours 48 minutes yeah, yeah. amartya messaged me in the middle and said ki yeah, amit doesn't want this to end <laughs> <laughs> like yeah. it feels like that so yeah so yeah. it was 2 to 2 uh, to, to o'clock in the afternoon we were there at 10:30 it ended and uh, the next day i had to record with soyash soyash rai and that was a morning recording because he wanted to start at 10 yeah. but he said ki 9 baje pehle ब्रेकफास्ट करते हैं ऐसे तो मेरे होटल आ जा मैं कहीं नहीं आ रहा तो ही केम टू माई होटल बट नाउ बिकॉज आई हैड टू डू सम प्रेप फॉर डैट ही इज नॉट रिटन एनी बुक्स थैंकफुली सो नो बुक्स बट आई हैड टू रीड ऑल इज वर्क ऑफ दैट सो आई वोक अप एट फोर सो टेन थर्टी आई गो बैक आई ईट समथिंग आई स्लीप आई वेक अप एट फोर आई एम इमर्सिंग माई सेल्फ इन इज स्टफ एंड दिस इज नाउ डे इलेवन बाई दिस टाइम एंड आई एम टोटली स्लीप डिप्राइव एंड ही कम्स एंड वी स्टार्ट एट टेन एंड वी एंडेड एट सिक्स थर्टी इन द इवनिंग and at one point in the middle uh at one point in the middle his face dissolved <laughs> and the words turned into sound and i remember thinking you know everything was like soup and i remember thinking at this point and uh, for my listeners uh, quarter note is uh, the basement and i remember thinking at this point that if i have a stroke or something <laughs> how are these two guys going to get me up the stairs <laughs> <laughs> because suresh is kind of plump and amartya is kind of thin and yeah. yeah but nothing happened i i i kind of uh, kept getting back on track except after the recording ended like one often has of traumatic events i did not remember a word of it so until you sent me the edit yeah. i had no memory of what we have spoken about and the mistake there was obviously scheduling a session in the morning like if you're starting in the afternoon every day i've learned just do it the next afternoon you give yourself some time to yeah. uh, kind of recover no but you also you were the first person who's come to the studio and sticks in the recording room for longer than an hour mm. oh, because yeah. so so like the studio like most studios in delhi like the whole central air conditioning through the vent and all that is an expensive deal and you would just put up like an ac it cool the room down it makes it you can you can survive for like about half an hour and then turn it on again between takes and all of that and then, yeah you can spend some time but you like once you go in you know like you have like that a classic thing of like time lapse <laughs> you know yeah. yeah it's that so ha but with the next time you come back like the is the cooling system in the in in that room is changing just to make sure that yeah the, you can sit for longer duration but ha those that was some insane the, 12 days That yeah. was not I was actually wondering that later I thought it never struck me at the time but later I thought ki kya yaar basement tha main matlab sunna pad raha hai concentrate karna pad raha hai baat bhi kar raha hu is there oxygen deprivation happening to me which would surely not be uh, healthy having said that what better place to pass away suddenly than a recording studio <laughs> in the middle of a scene and the unseen episode but not not fun for the guest I'm sure I remember when the when at the uh, the last episode got over and then you came over for dinner mm. and that's the day we played chess <laughs> and uh, and I lost both games you know and and Raman was staying over uh, mm. that time and Raman told me later usne 12 din mein 12 recording ki hain theek hai and ye karne ke baad wo yahan pe aake kharab hi rahe the ko like what is going on <laughs> <laughs> so, so yeah it was uh, yeah man i don't know how you did it yeah the the longest stint i've had in terms of like being involved with So 2007 was the 150th year of the the 1857 mutiny right so the there was this event happening at the red fort which was uh, basically showcasing like this cultural thing and all that and Royston Nable was directing it and AJ uh, came on uh, board with the last minute like to do the music for it and a friend of mine Bhuvan Sesdeva with whom I went to sound school he was uh, well you could call it like production So he got, he uh, we had actually gone into the studio space together, and uh, he left to tour with a musical, smart move, and he did that. And he came uh, when he came back, so he got me on board to do this. So I went in uh, with a I think it was a three twenty day thing, twenty day gig, but the thing was that they were putting an event at the Red Fort, seven stages, like some two thousand musicians, folk musicians from across the country, and we had to. AJ had to compose the soundtrack to the timeline which Royston was directing which I had to record and keep ready for a playback and which like it'll be like let foot be set up kiya and I'll hit space bar and the music will go to like seven different stages you know we were running like kilometers of cable and all of that and they they were rehearsing at the Indira Gandhi stadium so they gave that as like that's your studio now so i did this thing for i think 9 days i 8 9 days like i i don't think i slept <laughs> like i was also like 2007 like a kid 
एंड वे आउट ऑफ माई डेप कि मैं कर क्या रहा हूँ बट जस्ट वेंट विद द फ्लो एंड दैट्स द हार्डेस्ट आई हैव गॉन एट अ गिग यू नो एंड आई रिमेंबर द द इवेंट हैपन ऑन वॉट्स दैट डेट ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट मे वेन द बेसिकली दो पीपल फ्रॉम मेरट लैंडेड अप एट बहादुर शाह जफर थिंग एंड सेट की जॉइन यूर आर एम्प्रोर एंड सो दैट्स द डे दैट द इवेंट वॉज हैपनिंग एंड द द गिग गॉट ओवर एंड दे हैड गिवन अस दिस कंट्रोल रूम एट द जस्ट जस्ट अंडर द रैम्पार्ट ऑफ द रेफोर्ट I was hot. It's hot, right? In May in Delhi, and the AC stopped working, and we were running two systems: one backup and all that. But like, it's electronic equipment, and it's heating up, right? We were thinking that this will be closed. It will be closed. Sonia Gandhi will be sitting there. It will be closed. It will be closed. You know what? Anyway, the gig the gig got over, and everything was done. Hit space bar, control S. Like we are we are done. I stepped out, and I think. I think in a minute or so, it felt like that, or maybe time slowed down. I don't know, but like, I had like 102 fever. Like I've, I've had never worked so hard at something. So that thought of like working for like that for nine days, and then this looking at like you walking in and around, say like eight eight hours' ki conversations over 12 days. I'm like, man, you're made of something else. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's not easy. <laughs> Yeah no i mean i i i also kind of <laughs> i enjoy my work i mean i don't think of it as i it is hard work but it doesn't feel like work if you know what i mean it's 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 uh, so so tell me when this entire period where you were sort of doing sessions gigs and polishing your chops as a guitarist and all that what's that period like in terms of sharpening your craft because on one hand there is a thing that you're playing all the time different kinds of music for different kind of people you're composing some of it your chops are obviously just getting much better you're paying your dues as it were the other side of it is that there is also this sublimation of the ego that is required that you have to play a particular thing to a for you know you have to play exactly what is required especially when you're just playing the guitar and you're not the composer or the producer you you're just playing that little part and you're kind of going away and when you're young i think there is this tendency and certainly as a writer i had it to a high degree where you want to show off everything that you can do and uh, you're not consummate in that sense so uh, uh, and that's probably a separate question but uh, as a guitar player was there sort of an issue for you in terms of you know finding that comfort finding that ease that thera finding your own voice as it were and how did all those uh, sort of years of sessions playing contribute to shaping you as a guitarist and a musician i you know i i think i went through i got lucky Yeah, I went. I went through a phase where it's the it's a cliche like you. It's it's what is expected. Like I think like I'm you know the hot shit. <laughs> I can play. I could. Uh, I had uh, I had jam bands and I had like a quartet and a trio. Which we recorded some songs. I wrote some tunes and uh, I was really like you know, thoda sa ego zada ho gaya because I could. Yeah, I guess like I could. I could hold my own. Let's just put it like that. They were way better guitar players and there are. like just the i mean gritty or guitar players you know who look at guitar playing as a thing of like ki ki and like i am i am always focused on it as a part of like it's one of the elements in a set of sounds you know so i never looked at like like the getting at the chops and like virtuoso like never i don't even have the patience to sit and practice like that but uh, how to get better in a group of people like i was always working towards that but i think when i said that i i, I think i got lucky was because i met aj like really early i met him in 2002 and man you have to hear his music like it is so i was i was chatting with him he was great society right he he's playing rock and roll with like luma jao <laughs> who's like the image of rock and roll and i've played with luma jao like i've i'll tell you what i would tell you what the gig is just a bit but like they have you know like you're talking about touring the northeast where like you're putting speakers and stuff in your van you're playing guitars which like like they can cut your fingers they are so uncomfortable to play and like they have seen the grind like that's the real grind and they, i met aj in 2002 and man he's so generous you know i i went in with a little bit of ego and like every session with him we would i was hang out at the studio at his studio and then he would go back to his house and he would cook and he makes a mean you know pork and bamboo shoot thing and he would cook and he'd sit and drink and he would just chat and he would keep playing and uh, i think that i i realized one thing that uh, how how should i say this ki wohi music bajega 
जैसे आप हो इन द सेंस कि यू नो पहले बंदा बनना पड़ेगा यू कैन नॉट इवन इफ़ यू आर प्लेइंग कवर्स इवन इफ़ यू आर प्लेइंग वट एवर लाइक यू आर प्लेइंग चीजी ब्लूजी लिक्स वट एवर और वट एवर यू आर डूइंग योर एनर्जी एंड योर पर्सनैलिटी नाम ट्रू मेक सम दिस लाइक सम मेटा स्पिरिचुअल शेड बट लाइक यू विल कम थ्रू इन दैट नोट दैट यू प्ले सो द टफर गिग इज नॉट टू लाइक गेट बेटर एट एन इंस्ट्रूमेंट वो तो आप बैठ के लाइक इफ यू कीप इट्स अ फंक्शन ऑफ रेपुटेशन यू विल गेट बेटर यू बाउंड टू गेट बेटर एज लॉन्ग एज यू कीप रिपीटिंग विथ लाइक फोकस एंड इंटेंट बट लाइक वॉट इज बेटर रियली यू नो लाइक आई डोंट थिंक दैट गेटिंग बेटर इज बींग एबल टू प्ले समथिंग इम्पॉसिबल और लाइक वॉट एवर लाइक गिटार प्लेयर कंसिडर इम्पॉसिबल म्यूजिशन कंसिडर इम्पॉसिबल लाइक डार्जलिंग समबडी ऑफ विथ योर जॉब्स नॉल आई डोंट थिंक इट्स दैट आई थिंक इट्स अबाउट लाइक प्लेइंग like being on this thing about what is the right thing to play right now you know and that o- that only happens when your ears open up and uh, i think like just spending that amount that you know like a bunch of, that that time with aj and aj used to play a certain kind of guitar style and uh, there is a certain style of playing you know and he stopped playing for a while and uh, he went through this ki i don't i don't know the reason behind it but but like he was he was discovering like some new territory on the guitar like new, some new sounds and his band hft to be honest like you know i had never heard anything like that and i'd been like a lot of people say like it sounds like what jeff beck does and to that i just have a note like everybody on this planet who's playing guitar is doing something <laughs> that jeff beck did you know so do hi satya hai if you go back like there is the the trinity i i you know unless until you until you're going to this jazz wala zone but like if you're going rock blues like this side there is there is only hendrix and jeff beck and i'm willing to sit across if anyone's buying beer or coffee and argue this out you know i think everything can be traced back to those two people but so a lot of people like say hft's music is like that and all that but joby that's not the point but the the way he found his own voice in a bag of cliches that are not cliches anymore i don't know how else better to put it like you, people have to hear his music to to really understand what i'm trying to say but hanging out with aj i think like really helped a bit you know it just like you didn't even know it but the balloon had been pricked you know like it's deflating <laughs> it is it's it's like less less gas now like it, there is but you are now on some sort of you're slowing down to observe what's around you and i'm um, this thing happened where i figured ki yaar ki let it be a cliche but uh, it's fine but i really have to i started putting pressure on myself i guess like ki you know that thing of like ki i have to hear it before i play it or i have to feel it before i play it obviously that didn't happen and i'm still like struggling and it's like maybe some sort of unlocking of meditation thing that will happen one day but what is ha- started happening is that ki i definitely mean everything i play you know that is for sure i don't know if it means anything for anybody else but it means something for me and that approach coupled with the fact that i have this thing of i i guess imposter syndrome like all of all creative people have it and i'm just giving myself the benefit of being could being referred to as creative but i felt like i'll get caught you know so i should have the right balance of like every you know like akar patel does this no whenever like there's a government t- tweet about like something and all that so like about the failure of the so he tweets replying saying oh dekho cheeta <laughs> you know something like that so i had like a bag of tricks that i could throw you know and like just and at the same time like that would give by me enough runway to like do whatever i want you know play a note which maybe is not right or play something which maybe doesn't make sense not with the intention of surprising you big but i also want to try it no also find of also found want to find out ki what is it that i need to get to so age is a big factor and dusra like i just figured out that i need to be around people who are just way better than me at their instrument maybe not better at like playing with like you know like a bad real madrid team like just doesn't make sense together everybody is a superstar but they are all good players so kabhi na kabhi to click hoga and uh, au was one of them i was the weakest you know like there is there is anindo bose who is an advaitas keyboard player he's got mutant ears you know he, he will like he will point out in a group of 40 people who's singing out of tune 
so he will he can easily like when point like very sharp ears I, i was there was clarence gonzalez he passed away but uh, bass player he played with anushka shankar for a while and ex- exceptional ability to just hear music and immediately know where it is you know and uh, like a bunch of musicians who were really really good at their thing so i just started like i was the weakest link and it made me just like try and balance out the the fear of being caught to actually making sure that i don't get caught because i'm getting better and that i think led to the point where i started looking at keep be the guitar player but be a part of like the bigger sound so you fill in you don't try to stick out you try to blend in you know and yeah like that that approach just changes the way i look at the guitar for me like i i think every guitar player i've met is a better guitar player than me you know guitar player but what role is this guitar supposed to play i think like i started spending more time in investigating that you know there are tunes like i have uh, like production tunes for example you know like i will be doing jingles or scores and all that i go i might be thinking on the guitar but i go maybe i like 20 tracks you know i haven't even played guitar on it like it doesn't need it you know so i i i think what it ended up doing was this this balance of hanging out with the right people and playing with musicians who are just way stronger than you you know who are just way stronger way better just it's it's a team gig you just sound better by being with people who have, and then you 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 ha- if they are making you sound a particular way then your job is to make them sound better also so if the drummer is doing a thing and if i could just nudge my guitar part a little bit and make his drum part sound better little bit i mean i i didn't realize it back then but doing all of these things just make you hear music differently you know and the production chops get honed because you start hearing what are people supposed to do in a like how does the puzzle fit you know it's it it's not the only way it fits but it's a way that it fit that it's fitting that it makes sense to you you know like say even the like the 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 panels that you've got right behind you i mean the reds could be black and blacks could be red that's a way to make it fit but it's it'll still work so the way that it started making sense was all of these things coming together and then the the big thing i guess is also stepping away from the guitar i had this thing like i was i was playing i was playing a fair bit and i had a blues trio and we used to do i, I wrote some tunes some arrangements and uh, we started we got into the studio and we started recording it and uh, i fell in for the trap like you know i had the sound in my head and it was not coming i not as a guitar player but like as the, as the band it was not happening like that's a miracle laga tha because i had i had made it so in my head that it 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 needs to sound a particular way whatever long story short like it didn't work i disbanded like i broke the band up and i just said ki acha abhi na guitar rehne dete hain ki that's when i arrived at the point ki okay i want to play blues but i can't play that like i cannot do it because there are people who are doing it there are people who are doing it better and there are people who are doing it with with what i feel is meaning you know so i stopped and this is around 2007 thankfully adwaita happened at the same time you know because otherwise i would be totally disconnected with music so i stopped playing guitar uh, for 6 7 years and i think it sounds like a weird thing to say but i think that is that's the best thing i i did like just stop for a while to really assess ki bajana kya hai because uske baad i i started writing some tunes and all that and and i would it's not like i'm not playing i'm practicing i'm doing i'm keeping muscle memory sharp and all that and I, and i like i said i record everything i do so before i knew it i had like some work in progress folder populated with some sort of like 70 72 files you know like there are ideas so i was like okay these are ideas which are which are have like a sense of personality have something or the other which is which can be used in to make like a, a key, okay this picture makes sense and eventually it led to this thing called the dirt machine which i have like which i wrote some tunes uh, did some tunes guitar based tunes around yeah but like yeah I, i think that's it like stepping away from the instrument because just like creating some distance you know otherwise that ability to assess is is very tricky you will always be like you know riding on ego or seeing somebody weaker and saying ki that you are better off or seeing somebody better and you are saying ki usko bajana nahi aata yeah we are very fragile people like that man like it's it's very tricky but stopping stopping for a bit yeah it's 
it really helped it really helped you know i i i think of that notion of distance as you're sharing it and it strikes me that one that distance is com- totally important if you have to grow in any way and that right now two possible ways of getting there uh strike me and one you know at lunch we were earlier discussing this friend of mine who was br- so brilliant at everything he did that you know he would study for an exam on the night before which actually even i did mm-hmm. uh and uh and could wing his way through everything ceo at a startup in his 20s mba at an ivy league um, uh, university in the us joined a top consulting firm and uh, and then went to pieces and uh, everything kind of fell apart in ways that i won't elaborate on but part of the reason so, uh, what somebody close to him once uh, speculated was that he had his e- had it easy all his life he could just wing it which i have found in most contexts i can also uh, sort of just wing it whether it was studying in school or college or whatever whatever and therefore you never really try you never put in the effort and when he got to this consulting firm everybody was brilliant and everybody was working 25 hours a day and he couldn't wing it anymore mm-hmm. and everything kind of falls apart and um, and and that's as we were discussing a danger you know it's in that context that you mentioned that when you were doing your college and your school and all that everything was too easy the academic part of it was really easy there was nothing there and it's a trap and uh, you know uh, sometimes you need to uh, sort of um, uh you need to fail you need uh those setbacks and you need to see people much better than you like maybe f- when you came to bombay floyd on the guitar yeah. or maybe watching aj do his thing and realize that it came from a place of such authenticity to himself that uh, you know as a young person in his 20s you could never have had at that point because you won't even have known yourself and that's perhaps one way of getting the distance where you realize that you are not there yet in fact you know where you got to just work hard a lot so you take that step back and you start listening and you start working hard and you like if you're playing in a band then you start fitting in you don't need to do that hero solo you know you can just um, sort of do what is required and that's one way to come at that distance and another way at that distance and perhaps it's the same way in a sense is just um, uh, sort of being part of that collective and realizing what will make it work is that you know you take the spotlight of of yourself and you th- this is lovely quote by stephen covey on listening in fact where he says that um, uh, we should listen to understand not listen to respond yeah and the difference is the ego that you take the ego out of it yeah. that when you're listening in a long conversation for example we have to take the ego out of it in terms of not thinking about what is a smart thing i'm going to say next what is a great question i will say next which will make the listener think wow what a good this thing but instead you just listen and you try to figure out where the person is coming from and kind of go with that flow so in a similar sense i guess that's what happened to you that you you know it's like a sublimation of the ego that you're just sitting down and therefore you're paying attention to everything and because you're paying attention to everything it makes you a much better producer because you can see where all the pieces fit and maybe the causation goes the other way that because you're producing yourself you are better able to see where the pieces fit and therefore your own part in all of this is this stuff that you thought about then or can you put a frame to it in hindsight and mm. see ki you know aisa hua mm. and could it have been different like what if you never met aj mm. what if you think you're the cats whiskers what if you join a band and you're the lead guitarist in that mm. or do you think that because of the kind of personality you are you know the way you study stuff and the way you want to know stuff that you would have got here anyway i i think it would have been much longer yeah i uh, i don't want to give myself too much credit by saying that i would have gotten here anyway you know because i what would have happened let let's just say that i wouldn't have landed in the like, like landed in the studio that day and met aj and like you know just like like okay first of all i'm okay to listen to this guy to tell me what's what without him trying to tell me what's what like he's just chatting right nahi hua hota so what would have happened i would have uh, eventually run on a steam but you know like i would have gotten caught so as to speak you know like then i would have had to either reassess or like to stop i stop growing the, you know i would have carried on doing what i was doing and like you know there are a lot of people who who are good at that and i'm i don't mean it in a negative sense but, but it's because that they are very they they're fine with being where they are you know they are okay and i i don't think that 
कि आई वुड हैव बीन ओके विथ नॉट गेटिंग लाइक डेप्टी और यू नो लाइक दैट्स अ नाइट मेयर दैट्स अ नाइट मेयर सिचुएशन फॉर मी एंड आई एम आई एम ट्राइंग टू मेक इट साउंड लाइक आई एम इन द क्वेस्ट ऑफ समथिंग इन ऑल दैट इट्स इट्स नॉट दैट इट्स नॉट दैट इंटेंस लाइक इट्स जस्ट दैट कि वरना पॉइंट ही क्या यू नो आई इट विल बी ग्राउंड हॉक डे नो इन दैट सेंस कि लाइक देन then i know the part i'm supposed to play and i will execute it and like i will take my paycheck and i'll go back home but then think about it if i was supposed to do that like i should have done like some sort of degree thing job ye wo because then 10% bonus diwali bonus casual leave wo sab hota you know like the just the because then it just makes sense to do that if if repetition in that form is the key that's one dusra i also feel that ki this happens to every creative person every artist and if it's some people are lucky enough that they can spot it that it has come it's 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 asking you you know ki karna kya chahte ho and some people are unlucky that they don't even it's not like they don't have that moment it's like they can't acknowledge it you know it's gone and these are i hate saying it but these but, but these are people like who get grumpier you know who feel like they didn't get their due who feel like they Uh, they are worth much of course they are they, they you know their worth has not been realized and maybe you are undervalued and all that sure but then when when it came calling like you didn't do your bit you know i'm i'm not for a, i'm not even for a second trying to suggest that i acknowledge that moment and i changed course corrected and did all of that but i'm saying ki i'm aware of the fact and i'm always i'm keeping my eyes open you know my ears open rather i'm keeping them open ki ye kabhi bhi ho sakta hai and i'm sure ki ye hua hai like it's it's happened a few times and i have acknowledged that and i've also missed the train a few times i have you know maybe it was because of just like getting the like i will not be able to pull this off i will not do it so like i it's you know like if if you are used to swimming in a in a in a pond i am not going to have the arrogance of saying that ki drop me in the open ocean and like i'll make it you know i need to prepare so if the, the other flip side is like they'll say ki okay yaar this open ocean opportunity will not come more of you know again so fine let it go either you go and mess it up totally or you get better at getting to that open ocean but i'm saying ki all at at a certain level of being okay with who you are it really requires that bad kid like to figure out who you are and i, and I think and i think like the biggest learning has come from points where music has not been involved because like i said you know like i am trying to figure out this i this way of not having to switch lives not having to change lives just be in audio and audio music sound all are interchangeable for me so just be in that zone for as long like as long as it's possible you know not shift it so when so i'll give an example like when uh when i started teaching right i i went to take a workshop uh, at an institute which uh, the sri ramana center for arts in in delhi i was called in for a workshop uh, with the guy who was running the film division so we, i knew him and he said ki can you come and like thoda sound pe and i said sure mai aata hu and the reception was good and my only thing was ki uh, ki i need to uh, the reception was good and the and the director of the institute asked me that will you design something for us you know so i asked like what do you need like she said me say what will you do if you, if i if it's a one year program for example so then i had like a uh, and i'll and i'll circle back to the learning thing in in just a bit but then i had like a blueprint ki okay theek hai these are the points that you need to cover but the criteria was ki what is it that i missed out on which has taken me like 10 years you know or 7 years or whatever like to get to the point of understanding a certain concept and all that so teaching the way i would have liked like to be taught right the minute that line like you've heard that line in some like cheesy whatever like i have it actually but yeah. <laughs> you know like code type thing like which is hung on a wall in some yeah so but so i was like okay theek hai the minute i took that and i started applying it to to music and just like changing teach with like listen you know like so there have been bits where i've gone into rehearsals and i just stand there and i do the bare minimum you know bare minimum in the sense ki i will play a particular pocket of like a particular chord change and all that and just 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 so that i can hear what everybody else is doing you know just to not step on other people's toes just to not like overplay or and taking that and just concept and trying to apply it to as many fields as possible like what is it that if i was to be taught or if i was to be told that play this part like you know then then how would i like to be 
told and i think like that beginning of like the teaching bit and the second thing is like when you know the first kid was born like i was like ab meri value kam ho gayi hai like i now have i have to now figure out a way of getting uh like on like you know the questions of like like ishan asking me like like the basic the what why when you know why why like the why never stops and being able to explain it which basically means that you understand it yourself you know and it's and it could be something as simple as like what does this word mean and i've never really thought about it what the word means because i'm just using the word like i i understand but like now i need to explain it to you and i was like okay theek hai agar yahi music ke angle se dekhna you know then what is it that what i'm playing what does it mean <laughs> you know and i'm and i'm giving it more weight because see the ki i have this line <laughs> ki i follow ki apni kahani mein aap hero ho aur aapka bachcha sabse cute hai that's a given okay so then this is about me like this is about my issues of not playing a certain way or playing a certain way or playing these chords as opposed to those chords so these notes opposed to those notes so why am i doing it like i really need to understand it and this is <laughs> the best i can't answer this question so i started playing lesser and lesser and lesser and here's what here's the cool thing like i figured that the lesser you play the more weight it carries i some i i just think like it just makes so much more sense like to and this obviously does not apply to people who shred <laughs> and who like are like virtuosos in that sense but like it just became like each note is carrying so much more meaning at least in my head you know it might be it might not be the case for other listeners or people but that's fine but like this is the only way the world makes sense to me like just slow down cut the excess and slow down cut the excess and now it begins to take a shape which is recognizable within within which i can make a boundary and say ki okay like okay ye ab rules to nahi but these are the parameters within which like answers at this level will be found and i i just i just feel ki if if the obvious steps of life like meeting aj and then playing with all those acts to eventually get to a point where i you know find it better and you are now one voice in eight you know and that is assuming that you're counting the drum kit as one voice it's not it's like four different the char limbs you know but you're one voice in eight and then what do you say over there if all of that would not have happened i think it would have been a much 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 slower process and yeah there you go so the, the, the luck factor just cannot be played out you know but i what i think it's this balance of equal balance of being being a little afraid that i'll get caught you know and really wanting to i don't know get better it just sounds like such a cheesy thing to say but like get more meaningful you know yeah you know one of the themes i kind of think about is how the form of what we do can shape who we are in the sense that I do these long podcasts so I do a certain kind of listening and then I take it a certain kind of approach into reading the books that I read as preparation for that and uh, and everything is shaped by that and because the content is shaped by the form and what I do um is shaped by the content who I am is shaped by what I do I think the form makes a lot of difference in the person I am and I'm wondering if there's a a connection that flows that way uh between what you were doing which is as like both as a producer and at one point as either a sessions musician or a band member or a composer the key thing that you're doing is that stepping back you know making yourself a non protagonist for the moment and just looking at that big picture and where the pieces fit right and i wonder if that then plays into what you become as a person like i would certainly in my personal space want to be more like that you know you want to be in the moment when it comes to enjoying the happy moments and the small joys and all of that but you sometimes want to be less present when you feel that you're acting by impulse you want to take that step back you want to think about how your words may affect someone else you want to think about when you want to give the spotlight to someone else and not kind of get in the way so uh, and equally it can be that you are that kind of person and therefore all of these fields all of these activities fit you well which is why you do them so the causation can sure. uh, i guess flow both ways but i i can't ask you to ascribe causation because that's always obviously impossible to do but how did you how, how did you change as a person from say your early 20s or your starting this journey to your 
late twenties, by which time you were like well into Advaita and all of that was happening, to perhaps now. I think it's coming to realization with the fact that I think the dream that you start out with dreaming of when you don't see it taking shape the way you expected it to what can you do you can either double down and go harder you can or like just adjust a little bit you know thoda sa become aerodynamic with the issue and like it i don't know like you know duck your head a little bit do something or the other like change and or the other thing is like ki dekhna ki maybe na this like this version of the dream is like i don't know maybe it's not right so obviously like when you start out playing music and all that you think that you're going to sell out stadiums <laughs> you know sure why not who doesn't think of that and then farhan akhtar came and spoiled everything <laughs> you know ki ye aisa hi hona chahiye warna you apply nahi karta and and like this post aj thing when aj moved right and uh, aj was moving and uh, he of uh, majao said lu majao asked him like you know ki kaun jayega delhi mein so i aj recommended my name which was like wow <laughs> like ki mere dimag mein to woh tha ki like i will play with lu majao these are small venues but man the, uh, these are some serious rockers these people yeah like they have been playing since before i was born so i'll tell you this one thing <laughs> so the first gig with majao right like when when aj uh, moves out and i get in touch with majao and like so will you send me the songs that we're supposed to do he's like yeah, yeah i'll send you the song then radio silence nothing so he lands up in delhi and i'm like so should we meet should we rehearse yeah we'll meet we'll rehearse like radio silence and, you know one day before the gig i'm like should we meet so he's like yeah i'm in this guest house like just come up you know so i go there and there is uh, luma jao and uh, Sam Shulai, uh, he just passed away. Uh, fantastic drummer. Uh, he used to drum for Soulmate also, and he was there. He was doing, doing, doing the drums. This gentleman called Lou Hilt. He's this legendary figure. <laughs> he was playing bass, and uh, I was playing guitar. In, in, in you know, the, so I everyone sitting there. There are few bottles of vodka open, and I mean a few, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I started just like I'm looking around. I'm like, "Hey, gana kab bajayenge? Bata do kono se gaane and all that." and i had heard the songs because right i think a great society so now where i've been at the gigs and they nothing happens like it just just not like there is no talk of like the song that is going to be hap- playing being played at this gig which is tomorrow so i'm like okay maybe it'll happen at sound check you land up at sound check everybody plugs in at the same time and just starts playing the engineer just like through 5 minutes of palpitations like balances the sound and all that and i'm like ki okay what is happening here so then lu told me ki every song lu hilt <laughs> he said ki every song that starts like you know ki i'm bass player so just look at me see the form and then learn <laughs> man that was a 3 hour gig you know and uh, i think that one 3 hour gig taught me more than i i can't even like i i can't even phrase in this way like ki how do like what are you supposed to do and i remember like wo pehla solo chal raha hai had this like a pehla solo ni wala song chal raha hai and i we were playing and i'm i'm trying to learn the song like while we are playing it i remember the i remember the song i don't know how to play it like right but i have to pick up like the chord structure so and so forth and and it's a different thing when you're playing a song which you think you know like i don't know how to explain it like supp- suppose for example like i've heard blowing in the wind like a million times but now i've learned how to play guitar now i have to learn the mechanics of oh this is the chord change chord. like all of that like i'm doing this on the fly right <laughs> and i remember like just the majao looked at me and he's like he nodded his head ki little you know your solo like play something so i'm laying back i'm holding back and you know like ki i don't know if the solo has different chords like what if and when he walked up to me and he this gigs going on <laughs> like he walked up to me and he whispered like he leans in and he's like so are you going to play or are you going to wank about you know and i said and i was like chal theek hai ab to wo ho gaya like so i just let i played everything that i knew you know in that first song and then it hit me ki shit i have like three more hours of this to go like you know i just given everything but the the ability to but the the thing that you said ki thoda sa step back karke you know and just to see what is happening that helps a lot but going back to that dream wala aspect i told myself man these like these guys like lu majao right he's been playing since god knows when 
he must have had a million dreams i am not for a second suggesting that his dreams did not come true i am not right but what i'm saying is he must have had a million dreams and maybe a million dreams like like some of them did not come true some had to take a left turn and the, the thing that i'm trying to get at is that i started i had the unbelievable luck of playing with people who were twice my age who were ahead in the game and though they are not selling out stadiums you know they are not selling records they have never recorded like there is some bootleg cassette of some shit like floating around in like mythical ye wo legend wagera chal raha hai but they have they have never done this so i really you know had to say ki okay please reassess the like this these dreams that you have like tum karne kya wale ho okay it's a different time now it's not the 80s right it's so and things are bubbling up slowly like you know indian ocean has had kandisa already so maybe the market has turned maybe people are going to buy music now you know which obviously did not happen but uh, but what i guess what i'm trying to get at is that i i was fortunate enough to not get crushed by the weight of my own dreams i'm very okay with like that fine line between success and ambition you know i'm like i i don't think success for me would be like ki carnegie hall baja rahe hain it will be nice <laughs> of course it will be nice you said no. something about a grammy earlier before we started Haan, this this is this sitting here across the table like and chatting with you like is bucket list item here come on <laughs> i mean come on man i mean it seriously so like who'd have thought i I've, just to digress a bit like i i i've been listening to your show for ever you know in 20 years of like doing this gig you are the only person i have messaged and said that if you ever need a studio i am very short on twitter yeah yeah and i said if you're in delhi and if you need a place like please let me know i have never written to anyone with the intention of working with them or for work <laughs> never <laughs> you know so from that to finding out that ki we are related in some weird way and like here i am chatting with you like ye to kanagi hall hi hai you know <laughs> but i'll say this so we like like success might like it will be nice of course it will be like you know why not and i did this like i remember some random interview once like you know dream venue and all that uh, sydney opera house why not jo bolna hai bol do that might be amb- fine like that's my amb- like that can go in the ambition category like you know ki but i will not let it not i will not let it take away the relevance of whatever i think like i am successful at you know i ha- i come from this position of privilege that ki like i just happen to be getting lucky band after band project after project you know like yeah and i cannot say that ki ki that is not that's a great thing so for me like that idea of like that success and now that applies to music also like advaita fine i could sit back and say like in 2012 say we've not released an album we did a live album but you know i mean that in in for the band also it doesn't count but uh, but yeah we played at uh, the pyramids you know we've played for presidents we've played uh, venues across the world like abhi agar wo success nahi hai to fir kya hai so what i'm trying to get at is i guess like ki i am not going to get crushed by some unrealistic dreams that i have and you know and then like theek hai the grind is one thing but then there is life also no like it it just cannot be about chasing some version of yourself that you think that you should be because of now i guess like that term mimetic desire can be thrown in like it can't be that you know i'm and i'm so glad that i'm aware of that concept now and thanks to like you know like you talking about it on the show also and then reading the book eventually but but that thing like thankfully now somebody figured it out because oh that is a soul crushing thing that ki mere ko bhi chahiye <laughs> you know mere ko nahi chahiye mere ko wohi milega jiske liye main kaam karunga and i know one thing that once i get into the gig i will work you know and here here is the catch i think i've i've told myself that the only thing i need to ensure is that my bare minimum needs to be more than what the other party is putting in like i will always work i don't know like l- longer is not the right word because i pack up at 6 o'clock <laughs> but like i will i will always yeah like i was just try to get better at that and in 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 that sense like i feel like all of us are in that same trap key of dreaming the wrong dream chasing the wrong dream 
you know i won't i don't know i'm not going to fall and fall and fall for that trap man yeah it's hard <laughs> because who doesn't want to sell out stadiums but yeah it's no it's it's not i don't think that's the way to be yeah yeah that whole strain of mimetic desire is actually almost a cliche on the show so i had decided i won't talk about it but in case some listeners haven't heard it before i'll quickly kind of recap it luke burgess wrote this great book called wanting which i'll link from the show notes where he talks about the philosopher rene girard and Rene Girard essentially came up with this concept of mimetic desire where he observes that in many of the great works of literature people who want something want it because somebody else does not because uh, it's intrinsic to uh, them or who they are or whatever and and that's mimetic mimetic means to copy and uh, uh, the, the the useful frame i picked up from there was of thin and thick desires mm. where thin desires are those mimetic desires kind of thing ki mercedes chahiye ya whatever uh, you know it's not intrinsic if you're a young person in india you might be like get married have kids when you don't even really think about is that what you really want or is that what you're supposed to want whereas a thick desire could be something much deeper which did, which is much harder to figure out and the thing is the thin desires can be the most intense and the mm. thick desires can be the most subdued and even what you said about chasing the wrong dream is i think someone i, I mean i'd like everyone listening to this to really think about this because it's taken me a long time to kind of think about that and and realize that not only have i mostly been chasing the wrong dream but that most dreams in the way we think of them are wrong dreams yeah right we will we'll think about uh goals and things to do and we'll say ki ye kar lenge to khush ho jayenge you know itne paise kamayenge to khush ho jayenge ya book likhenge to khush ho jayenge ya uh, royal albert hall karenge to khush ho jayenge but the point is uh, most of the time that shit won't happen yeah. or if it is modest enough or if you are lucky enough that shit will happen but you won't get happiness because there'll be something else beyond that and i think the key to happiness therefore is in not having a dream of something to do but just deciding that this is how i want to live my life yeah and then being in the moment that you can wake up in the morning and you can uh, you know feel thankful yeah. that you are living your life like i i i uh, i have a lot of self doubt and you know thoughts about the work i do but at the same time um, you know and I, i'm so thankful for where i am in the sense jab main chutti se wapas aaya i i got into my little room with this setup that you see hmm. uh, over here you know matlab aur kya chahiye you know bathroom mein garam pani hai room mein ac hai pure yeah. sab kitabe hai laptop laptop hai internet hai mic chai to hai hi but wo extra hai hmm. but basically everything i want in a sense is here there's nothing really going wrong per se and i think the trap people fall into is that you'll look at what other people are doing always yeah you know or uh, and various other things and and here's the conundrum here that obviously it strikes me that the the way to happiness is by being in the present and you know living the moment and taking uh, advantage of the small joys uh, but equally that what this guarantees and this is perhaps a very morbid thought is that at the end of their life everybody is unhappy at that last moment hmm. right it's it's a point in fact that david sinclair makes in lifespan where he says uh, is it him or is it some other book i forgot and the books mm. blend into one another mm. much as faces dissolve but uh, the point being that every death is a violent death even for someone who's died in a sleep you know organs are failing or heart is stopping it is incredibly violent mm. so in that last moment you're always unhappy mm. and but knowing this should not stop you from being happy in the present moment it's it's a very weird thing yeah i you know i this thing about you said keep waking up in the morning you just you, like you came back from a holiday and you enter this space and you're suddenly like the reset is such is like a joyous reset yeah you know and earlier in the like earlier you were talking about how like if you would have say feed an ai with the images of a sunset and all that and some like you know like melancholy ye wo like some sort of thing like like but for me like ab uh, So I've been I've been getting into like Sam Harris's waking up thing, and uh, this is also it's intensified post like this reading four thousand weeks. I'm like man, this game is getting over at a fast rate. My students sometimes you know like they like my I give like these really ki four thousand hours. Okay, ठीक है तो देख लो आप कितना सोना चाहते हो और कितना music सुनना चाहते हो like शुरू कर लो. But I you know I I've been getting up into this waking up thing and I'm still 
I'm trying to wrap my head around it. I've been trying to do the whole meditating meditation thing for a bit and all that. There are a few friends of mine, my band's drummer, for example, Aman. He's heavy into Krishna Murthy, and you know we sit and we chat, and he tries to tell me stuff and all that. And and a lot of what he says like begins to make sense to me. But but this thing of the this thing of being mindful and being present. And he said this very interesting thing in in one of the uh, podcasts that came out. Of, I think it's in the app, like in the theory bit. He talks about a lot of people talk about like you know and like musicians will understand this. Like a lot of people say like playing music is like meditation and all that, and it's not. It's it's not. And I would always I I heard him say it and I was like, "What are you talking about?" You know, he obviously Sam Harris has never played uh you know like a tune, so he doesn't know what the fuck he's talking about. But then you say, "Okay, he's Sam Harris. He has to have an idea." So, kuch to like let's investigate this thought. And uh, this i this idea of being present and I, and I'll, and I'm, I'm rambling, but I will join the two together. I'll link the two together. This idea of meditating through music and all that, but to hey ni because you know like musicians, we are we are ex- like either you are executing a set of really practiced moves, right? With like the least amount of like you're praying that like some unexpected event should not happen, or that's the other end of the spectrum. That you are improvising and you're like, hey, please. Jesus like some unexpected shit should happen right and now you know so that i can react to it otherwise this is mundane you know so this thing of being mindful like i feel like that's the job that's the work you know everything else i feel like is happening around it and and i know like there there this maybe does not make sense and i'm like i said i'm still trying to wrap my head around it you know ki hota kya hai i on on my way to your place today i was meditating in the car you know because i was like ki chalo cha, ek ghante ki drive hai 7 km in bombay takes an hour i can at least meditate for half an hour till the bumpy road doesn't get to me but uh, like he said this line you know in the mere guide thing today ki you are not seeing things and i'm at bangladesh sir but he said ki you're not seeing things in consciousness you're thinking seeing things as consciousness you know like a bad jao iske sath and matlab you can spend a lifetime just thinking about this and so then i then i started thinking if you want to populate consciousness right like a lot of it is right now out of your control and going back to what you said like you came back you entered this room and there's a certain sense of like gratitude and all that and i think that's it you know the feeling of being where you are and giving yourself credit that you have maybe you want to be somewhere else and that's the version of the dream that you're chasing which maybe doesn't make sense but there is a dream that has been lived out to the point of getting till here and being mindful here and being being a little like grateful like just i have seen musicians like struggle uh and i have struggled <laughs> you know like the covid years have not been kind they have not been they have just wiped out a revenue stream which was you know which was feeble to begin with but it was it was there and then you know people also now you have to look inwards because there is no way to go and hide in the crowd you're at home <laughs> you know riyaz kar rahe ho and you maybe you're using it you using the time to get better or whatever but like you are you're forced to be mindful you know you can choose to be absent but you're forced to be mindful and you're better off like by just like looking inwards right now and i i just feel that this thing of being being where you are man it might be like like it might be like a little circumstance and all that set of circumstances that have gotten you to this point but ye bhi planned hai and i think rather than at least for me like rather than blaming myself from where where wherever i am wherever i i am not right now you know like just stopping and just saying ki ha yahan pe it's great Th- this thing of the, the every morning <laughs> like i've started this practice of like as i ever suggested to me by a friend of mine and i read up a little bit of it you know, like gratitude journal and all that and it sounds very weird but just to start the day by just like writing down a few things of that you're grateful for and i and i realize that like this the reset that happens every morning and the reset that happens like this ai thing that is melancholy no it's a reset you know for me at least and that circles back to this mindful thing that just sam harris keeps saying like begin again begin again that's it like this is the joy of like ki abhi fir se shuru kar sakte ho abhi fir se shuru kar sakte ho and it just applies to everything i think at least for me like you know ki in the teaching gig in the production gig of just like i could just hit space bar stop or take a pause stop or just take my hands off the guitar when i'm playing you know just not do anything for a second <laughs> like it just like it just add so much more weight and so much more rest there's another saying uh, it's saying uh, miles davis once said you know the music is in the rest 
वो सो so, वो उसके बीच में ही है इट्स लाइक वीरेंद्र सहवाग टोल विक्रम साठे ड्यूरिंग यू नो द ईयर इन एपिसोड दैट द टाइम व्हेन यू गेट आउट इज इन बिटवीन द बॉल्स या या वाओ दैट्स डीप डिड यू हियर दैट आई डिड आई डिड आई डिड आई फॉरगॉट इट बट या दैट्स डीप नाउ लाइक इन दिस कॉन्टेक्स्ट लाइक यू नो कि सहवाग द फिलोसोफर बट आई रिमेंबर द बिट वेयर ही वाज टॉकिंग अबाउट कि यू नो कि व्हेन यू व्हेन व्हेन रावेद वाज सेइंग लाइक ही सेइंग डीप ब्रीथिंग एंड ऑल दैट इज लाइक मैं तो सोच रहा था अगर मेरे टेक करता तो बट बट क्या आई आई डोंट नो एंड लाइक इट्स जस्ट अबाउट लाइक आई आई फील कि अगेन दैट दिस इज अ फाइन लाइन एट लीस्ट इन माई हर्ट मे बी दे आर बेटर वर्ड्स फॉर इट सक्सेस एंड एम्बिशन का थोड़ा सा डिफरेंस बट लाइक जस्ट नॉट बींग टू हार्श यू नो एंड वो इवेंचुअली इट विल गेट टू वेर इट हैज टू गेट टू बट लाइक इफ यू जस्ट स्टॉप एंड लुक अराउंड यू एंड लुक वॉट अदर पीपल आर डूइंग लाइक इन अ म्यूजिक सेंस और लाइक विद क्वेश्चन दे आर आस्किंग एंड मे बी मे बी द आंसर्स दैट यू गिव लाइक इट विल जस्ट गेट यू देर फास्टर आई फील it will just get you there faster this 4000 week gig is like there's so much pressure it'll just but but answers will start unfurling a little faster i think like if you just like stop and start listening a little bit especially in music so yeah yeah i mean the 4000 week funda for those listeners who might be wondering it's a great book by oliver berkman and the central thesis is that uh, we have 4000 weeks in our life so make the most of them aur mere to i think 2500 khatam ho gaye honge 1500 baki hai though my good friend roshan abbas is planning to add a few thousand hours to these 4000 hours so uh, good good luck to modern science and let's see how that happens you know if i think of meditation as being a state of simultaneously being hyper aware and also peaceful then isn't the state of flow that you talk about in music isn't that meditative in a sense <sighs> at least not for me it mm. may be for some people but i think like it it happens at a point where aapne itna riyaz kar liya that bulk of the system is on autopilot and you are only looking for the the you know like that halka sa like the little bit of incredible to happen that last hint of saffron on the biryani <laughs> yeah just that halka sa opening through which like you can like it begins to make sense like stuff begins to form and i don't think i've cracked the amount of practice that i i sh- i need to or i should have done to get to that point where it becomes a meditative experience it's not it is it is meditative in the sense that uh, there is th- there is focus and that really is it like every every say like 3 minute 5 minute song whatever you're playing and uh, given that you can hear shit which uh, going by last night's gig was like you know like that you, tr- you can hear shit man <laughs> i don't know there is like there is a god that i've pissed off you know with the amount of religious jokes i make because i so i don't believe in one so but i have some i've definitely pissed off something because like i don't know why i have never had the same monitor mix between sound check and the gig and i know it's a thing it'll change i get it i do but the degree of change like so yesterday for the first three songs of the set i just had my guitar that's it <laughs> nothing else and then the focus turns real like i have to remember structure i i'm standing v- really far away from the drums so i have to now like look at get slightly closer to the drums without changing the stage setup and all that and anticipate ki acha is tempo pe chal raha hai take out one of the ear plugs so that i can hear the pa and quickly do some mental math of like what's the slap back in this room so that like i am not playing with the slap back but behind the beat so that i'm playing with the song at the same time hear like you okay this is the energy that we're trying to put out so the first three songs for just like they like they they had me ex- i was exhausted <laughs> thing i we was we played 10 songs and after three songs i was like tired i kept trying to attract the attention of the of the engineer at the desk ki yaar change kar de like give me something at least in my ears and uh, but yeah but so that maybe maybe that is coming from a level of focus and being mindful <laughs> that i can focus on the present moment with such intensity that i could make sense of what i was playing you know but yeah for me it is not man like music doesn't feel like a meditation to me at all at all like i don't i like i can stay connected for longer hours i can stay in it for longer hours but that doesn't mean that i'm always focused like no i think like eating is more meditative for me than yeah like 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 music are you mindful while eating oh yeah 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 every 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 i have been practicing that more than i've been practicing guitar <laughs> does that make you eat less as a result it does it does and it also like it 
like i i think what it's done is again like i'm looking for audio and everything you know i think it's made me a better engineer because i have started understanding balance a lot more you know and i've i've started understanding the the blend of uh, harmonic saturation a lot better because of just like what achar you take you know or uh, for example so like this thing about uh, khichdi for example like yeah, no personality like by it, like unless until you have layered it with a lot of ghee and all that but if you take the right achar like say a meetha right achar in the sense like meetha tikha achar something different like the the way the way the khichdi hits with the ghee with a meetha achar is totally different from something like which you can say bite into like a i'm thinking like say a garlic pickle you know which has like pieces of garlic so there is like a bite to it so let's say in my mind it becomes like a certain order of harmonic saturation done to a sound in a certain frequency range like say a squishy low midi sound will take a certain sort of harmonic saturation a little differently than say a like than say maybe like a slightly higher mid sound like it doesn't work the same way and um, yeah like like for example uh, if you want to if you want to eat less i think like just the color of the plate that you choose like say suppose you're eating um, i don't know curd rice right yeah but serving curd rice in uh, like just a darker not a bright plate like nothing which fights the curd rice ka color but like makes the curd rice pop out like you serve less you know because it just feels bigger on that plate mm-hmm. it, and uh, yeah i've been uh, like post your writing course like one of the ideas that i've been like working with and all that ki mai likhunga you know so i like i i think of like i i i've, I've been dabbling with this idea of like i think the bulk of audio fundamentals sound fundamentals i think can be understood from a point of view of a four course meal yeah i i think like in four like a quadrant like i can divide almost all the fundamentals up the way it makes sense to me and that's the way i teach it also you know that ki if you if you always go back to these four points and now you can look at the four like you know the uh, krish's book has that fantastic thing about how one flavor mutes the other and yeah, one yeah. flavor enhances the other and it's the same thing in audio it's the same thing in audio but it just depends that okay to what you're catering to so if you're catering to something sweet you need to understand how to mute the other flavors they will not disappear you know and sweet cannot exist without the other three so like say something cannot be loud because if everything is loud nothing is loud you know so now what is soft and what are the ways in which it becomes soft does it become darker does it become literally softer in amplitude does the harmonic balance change in the sound to make it appear softer or are you changing its transient response so that your brain just can't cannot register it like you just can't register the sound you know so yeah things like that like i so the, just eating mindfully like does that to me like it just it has given me more ideas in production than like sitting and throwing things at a compressor i know it sounds stupid but but it's this reach that point where i think like you know i don't know who's quote it was like but this like it's just everywhere you know it's just everywhere and like you can pick out a source of inspiration and kya hi hai like a like a sea page blot on a wall is 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 something that i can score to you know and uh, yeah i mean i don't have to j- explain the inspiration to me like i just need to get inspired and i think food has that incredible ability to just like cut through because if no two people are hearing audio the same way but kheer sabke liye sweet hai ye what is like i i don't know if this is this question is important enough to be answered by like some but yeah like ki how does it work that everybody almost everybody has unless until you have like a very tricky sweet tooth and all that like ki ha you just cannot handle kheer you don't like kheer but like sweet hits everybody the same way you know why isn't like what is the key with which audio will hit everybody the same way so yeah and then you can take it further and like maybe like there is music which will hit everybody the same way and which is what you're really hoping for isn't it like ki metal head ho ya jagran wala ho usko mera music pasand aana chahiye i think in the broad strokes people will like everybody will think the sound of an electric drill is noise by and large you know barring some crazy japanese hikikomori outlier <laughs> everybody will think the sound of an electric drill is noise 
and i think everybody will find uh, the sound of gentle tinkling piano to be soothing maybe they won't like it maybe they'll just be fucking disgusted by it and yeah. whatever but yeah. the, so it's so there's a track by jeff beck called dirty mind mm. you know and the intro of that song he i i you know the guitar sounds like an electric drill oh okay yeah and it's the grooviest thing you can hear you know and at at the same time like there is i you're so right like there is there is no right answer to it like how does it if no two people are hearing it the same way then how how does it what's the common point at which like it will be acceptable to both parties you know i don't know but like that quest makes this entire process of like making the audio work making the sound work making, making the set of chords work like a little more exciting maybe it's just a very cheesy way of finding meaning in what you're doing you know because uh, during the covid years like uh, i reached out to a few people for some master classes you know and one of this engineer by the name of joel hamilton he is based out in new york i spent a couple of hours with him more than a couple of hours with him online and the first session was just like you know talking about stuff like this like just key and key a sense of you know how deep is your red like if you if you hold up like i do this in class sometimes you know i'll hold up two shades of color and like one is not darker than the other but like just because i've biased you ki which one is darker or listener suggested it they start looking at it as like a slightly darker color and all these concepts of like ki how bassy is the bass or how poppy is the snare all of these things but the point is ki you, uh, joel joel has this thing of like you know ki ye sab all this is fine but you have to make it land you know i love that phrase like you have to make it land like uh, this thing of these concepts have to have like a practical way of applying themselves you know so in there lies i think i guess the meditative form of all of this that there are is there is a bag of tricks of concepts which you know execute a certain set of elicit a certain set of reactions from people you know and th- that way then yeah it's a it's a flight whether course is known this thing of like you know to people are hearing it the same way but maybe there is some common line and uh, yeah they will, <laughs> and hopefully they will they will hit play more than once on your track i think in a broad sense uh, you know we'll respond to certain things similarly like a drill or a, a soothing sound of the waves but all the differences are in the narrow ways like the the, the uh, you know when you drill down a little bit or drill is perhaps not the right word but <laughs> you go around a little bit like what i keep thinking about is that every time you know you'll do an edit and send me the episode and i'll often have questions about the sound and i've come to the point where i can't really trust my own e- ear because i've realized that something that sounds one way in the morning will sound a different way to me at night yeah and i don't know why and yeah. maybe is it just me that there is so much variability within one person that i'm listening to different things in different ways at different times or like have you ever doubted your own ears all the time all the time see you your hearing is ideal when you wake up in the morning but it is followed by how long did you sleep for how good was your sleep sleep is basically the most important thing if you're not getting restful sleep every night and that's what i keep telling the students also like you know ki agar theek se nahi so rahe to bhool jao you cannot like there forget about the fact of how you're hearing it how you judge what you hear that is dependent on how you sleep so in the morning if it sounds a certain way and then if you get dehydrated through the day because you drink too much coffee you don't drink enough water you don't eat at the right time there is some crash happening in your you know you're getting gi glycemic index is fluctuating frontal cortex like is hitting some sort of weird zone you will not hear audio a certain way like soothing sounds can get irritating you know it is just and like your your hearing system really has like a window where it is the least fatigued to the most warmed up you know and that's the point at which to hear it plus there are other factors then like so for example you're hearing it on headphones you know i don't know how old those headphones are i don't know what's the isolation uh, are the drivers banged up you know has is it that old that the cable of that quality has lost like high frequency fidelity mm. so it could begin to sound dull you know because like it's a wire like it will over a period of time like the highs will die out so all of these factors lay in and that's why i said like it's a losing battle wo to sunne hi nahi wale now i can't believe anything i'll ever hear because headphones boss <laughs> <laughs> no and see now you add like speakers right the minute you add speakers you think you're listening to the speakers but no you're listening to the room 
you know so right now we are sitting we are talking here like there is no you're not hearing the room you're just hearing my voice but if you play back the recording you will start hearing the room you know because the reflections your brain is nulling them out right now your brain is just like focused on the direct sound a simple thing called uh hass effect right uh hass effect is basically like all this all the reflections that are coming to you right now are within 20 milliseconds so your brain can't separate it if it's uh, stretches past 20 milliseconds and it becomes an echo mm. you hear two distinct sounds you know you hear reflections flutters for example so right now what is hearing the reflection is the mic and your ear is not hearing it but the minute you so when you play sound through a set of speakers you think you're hearing the speakers but then the room reflections now come into play so you take the same speakers into a different room it will sound different so now when i mix a piece of music or i mix a piece of whatever and i send it to a client to hear it if he or she is hearing it in the car and car mein tweeters nahi hai they will say dull lag raha hai and i'm like what is going on like i can see it on the spectrum everything above 10k is balanced the way it's supposed to be and all that and it sounds nice and bright and i trust my ears nahi dull lag raha hai kahan sun rahe ho gaadi mein sun rahe ho tweeter hai gaadi mein i used to do this thing back in the uh, early part of the production gig days i would take the same file Shit, I can't believe what I'm saying it here, miss. Maybe somebody will hear it and be like, "Man, I fell for that." So I take the same file and I would just make like a file of a couple of dB softer, another file a couple of dB louder. Name it uh, "Mix for BlackBerry," <laughs> "Mix for Laptop Speaker," and "Mix for Hi-Fi System." You know, like just give them names like this. Just ask the client, "Ki kahan kahan sunne wale ho?" And I would give them the thing that I'm sending you multiple files. Please play this particular file over there. And they're actually the same file. They're just louder. Yeah, yeah. that's it. Mm-hmm. You know, because I'm assuming that ki a a hi-fi system, for example, mm. can take a little more bass, so mm. I can bu- and so I can make it a little louder. The bass will come up anyway. That's the way the amplification works on the lower frequencies and all. But I would do this, and a couple of clients would just like keep irritating me and all that. You know, like ha ha, making the changes and all that. I change the file name and send it back, man. Like you know, and they f- they'll think they're yeah, yeah. You know, in that same the Vikram Sarathi episode, uh, the bit where he talks about uh, going for a gig and they're negotiating his price constantly, mm-hmm. and then he eventually says that I will do it for free, mm-hmm. just so that I can say that I did it for free. But then they agreed, and mm-hmm. then I think in the drinks post the event, yeah, yeah, the yeah. guy said, "We just want to win victory." Yeah, but what should he? You know. So the the other thing I tell I tell the students, and I I follow it like you know, I'm like man, I have no attachment to the idea, zero. I don't give a shit. <laughs> you know, I am lucky enough that I am being given the opportunity to shape this idea. And over there, the control, theek hai, I have it. I don't want to be an oper- operator and all that. The idea le lo yaar. So when the when the when I do a jingle and all that, my thing is ki boss the idea is yours. I am just I'm the conduit through which this idea is being executed. Like this this tune is yours. I have zero interest in it. Like you delete, make me delete backups every week. I am like, he finished this idea. But the video jingle ho gaya. Take it, run with it. I don't care. But when it's a tune that I have written that I am working on, I will spend seven years <laughs> tweaking the guitar solo <laughs> till the point where like, he no, I hear it a little differently. But seriously, what's the what's the big? Well, what famous jingles have you done? Famous to pata nahi. मतलब uh, well Nirankari Baba there you go. But like apart from that man I don't know like I've just done I will send you a list which if you want to add in the show like, no, show notes. Ha I don't know why you would want to add to the show notes like it's it's like me deleting your backups you know. Yeah, uh, yeah but I I yeah I just don't keep keep a track also. I'm, if I would were, were to vent was to venture in like a number maybe I would say. I know between five hundred to a thousand jingles. I'm not oh. attached to them man at all. Yeah even I, one. I don't care. Was there any that is famous in in terms of you know? So uh, when the IPL like, launched, mm-hmm. uh, I don't know if it's a, if it, if it qualifies as a jingle also. But when the IPL launched the first season, mm-hmm. and Kingfisher was doing it, Kingfisher used to do NDTV Good Times, mm-hmm. and Good Times reached out and they asked me to do a track, and I did a track, and they liked it so much that they got their entire like crew, NDTV crew, and all that to mime it. It became like their anthem thing for like a good six month stretch. Uh, yeah, what, what was that? Just sing it out. <sighs> I have not sing it out. You mentioned you have such a great voice. You, oh, yeah, you you've yeah. sung, uh, you've laid down the track for Amit Kumar once. <laughs> no, I, I I have sung a track once, but that was because of budgetary issues. <laughs> yeah. But uh, no, it had the lyrics were like her short me junoon hai, her wicket me sukoon 
सुकून है एंड ऑल दैट सुकून है आई डोंट इवन लिव इन द लिरिक्स या ये बाजी और खास है समथिंग बट इट वॉज या आई मीन इट इट मेड लाइक अगेन लाइक द जिंगल वॉज सपोज टू बी लाइक अ थिंग दैट विल रन फॉर अ वीक दे रन इट फॉर सिक्स मंथ्स सो माई मेम ओनली मेमरी ऑफ दैट इज लाइक आई फील चीटेड बिकॉज आई शुड बीन पेड मोर यू नो बट आई डोंट नो मैन आई जस्ट आई आई फर गेट दम I just like खत्म किया चेक लिया एंड देर आउट ऑफ माई सिस्टम म्यूजिक गिग्स आई कैन रिमेंबर लाइक आई रिमेंबर लाइक लो मच आई रिमेंबर बैड गिग्स टू गुड गिग्स टू एवरी गिग या आई कैन नॉट इवन दया द गिग्स वेयर आई जस्ट वेर आई बीन टोल्ड लाइक यू अरे बहुत सही था लाइक इट वॉज ग्रेट इट वॉज टैसिक आई एम लुकिंग एट द ऑडियंस आई एम जजिंग दैम एंड लाइक ऑल ऑफ यू फॉकस आर डेफ यू नो बिकॉज दिस वॉज हॉरेबल लाइक इफ वी डेंट प्ले इट राइट हाउ डिट साउंड राइट टू यू विट मी डजेंट मेक एनी सेंस टू द गेग्स वेर आई थॉट लाइक वी प्लेड लाइक वी प्लेड एक्सलेंट एंड इट डिड नॉट मेक एनी डिफरेंस टू एनी वन सो या आई ऑल द गेग्स आई या आई हैव मेमरीज ऑफ दोज जिंगल्स आई आई डोंट केयर बट you know if any corporate people are listening to this like <laughs> i will i will do the jingle 101% way but yeah but i i don't care for them and you'll send them four files for all the different music systems <laughs> i think the secret is out yeah that but, hack has stopped now yeah. that hack has stopped now but yeah it's 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 so weird that uh, that i feel like that uh, what what he was saying in the, in that episode like a lot of the times it's just a, like ownership of the idea they just want to win victory yeah was wo they should yeah. be like this there should be merch of like a coffee cup of like a drunk guy spilling how do you show a drunk guy but like just like shouting victory in a very gladiator like <laughs> way while dying yeah i'll i'll make sense i will present the idea to sathe tell <laughs> me about tell me about advaita because it seems to me that on the one hand you know being playing an instrument learning music learning how to play is solitary in the sense that any artistic pursuit in a sense is solitary you're alone with yourself you got to figure your shit out and then when you play in a band suddenly there is uh i i, I the constraint the guardrail whatever i don't want to use a term that has a negative connotation but there is the consideration of all of these other people like you said you one out of eight tracks um, and, and there is a consideration of all these other people how they play you know what kind of music they uh, they play what they expect of you which might be uh, completely different uh, how you fit into uh, what they do uh, and even just as people they might quite be different people and there are you know uncertainties there to start with usually always so you said you knew these many of these people before because you were playing with them already mm. so what was that process like because what then happens is that once you commit to a band like before this you were doing your uh, you know your blues three piece and your four piece and whatever and you were doing all of these other things but when you joined advaita you pretty much committed to them right yeah. and and that's a really big deal because you've chosen pink yeah now you've chosen pink yeah right and this is what it is and it, it can be liberating because there's a lot of funky things you can do with pink yeah. but pink is just one color so how how was how was this you know how was this period of negotiating with yourself what this meant and uh, you know how was that journey of uh, like was it all perfect from the start where you felt that yeah this is right or you know was there a struggle there so uh, 2007 is when i when i joined them and uh, we like i said the only spot open was base so Uh, we started doing a couple of gigs uh we we started i did a couple of gigs and immediately it went into this thing of like album record karenge so i knew the guys before so mere liye na I, th- i think it's very important that the people who like a band you should be able to man you should be able to have a beer with the guy <laughs> you know like you should be able to hang out like it's just not about like it's yeah it's it's a little i i don't want to put it like not give the music enough importance but it's about like being okay with each other like more than friends like be, and the other guys like like family you know like when i got married like china was playing guitar and priya was walking down the aisle on he was playing organ in the church and all that and like yeah so it's uh, my uh, the the guys in the like kumar my 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 drummer takes my son climbing every week like it's like it's like family right but g- when we started out for me it was i i was in this space of all the bands that i was playing with i i had the blues trio quartet yes but this is largely instrumental music in a country like ours and kuch to chahiye jo which is connected like which has a certain sort of positioning branding whatever you want to call it but like a sound which is unique like it's 
it's and at Veta, like the initial few demos that I had heard and I had seen them at a gig. There was a gig that happened at Venkateshwara College, and I forgot the year, but I forget the year. Three bands played. I ended up playing for all three. Uh, there was a band called Level Nine. I played bass for them. Artists Unlimited. I played guitar for them. And then at Veta, the first gig that I was, I ended up playing bass for them also. So. The, uh, like the songs were like you could see it like this they was taking shape so uh, i join and one thing the eight of us have, were very clear about is that there is no the the virtu- the sense of virtuosity comes from the the arrangement you know it's about how everybody is fitting in and i think like uh, it's like i'm a fan of the songs that we have written <laughs> you know it's it's really it's every time you play uh, a gig like it's really exciting to play those tunes and i like that music it's so much that ki ki bass bhi hai theek hai i want to like i just want to be a part of this you know like uh, around that time we we get slotted in the fusion category uh, uh, which i think is unfair uh, you know but uh, I I don't believe that Duke Ellington school, school of thought ki there's good music and bad. Yeah, like good medicine and bad. The initial bit was really smooth sailing. I think that there is a honeymoon period for every band, you know, where things are happening of like at a pace which is faster than what you were expecting. You know, the gigs are taking shape, like some sort of a fan base is developing and money is flowing in, you start thinking of songs, you start thinking of albums and we record Yashraj the recording sessions are brilliant you know and the camaraderie is really there and we are really like we are we are in it for the same thing let's put it like that you know nobody is interested in their uh, solo positioning or like branding above the band so all of this is that that window from 2009 to 2014 was really interesting and good for us and as soon as grounded in space which is our first album that gets done we were already working on we didn't know that it this will take the shape of a second album whatever but we were already working on it like there there were songs being written like i said we had this rehearsal schedule which was fixed which is really good for you know like getting it the band to a point where now also if you meet it will take like a cup a few hours for us to just like like it's like a crankshaft thing like it'll just like get back to that plateau where it where we were so when i say when we meet because we don't meet often enough to like to rehearse and all that and life has taken over jobi but uh, there was a phase during the during the recording of the second album where the it did get a little like the like the rapids got serious you know is this was because of uh, because of the style of songwriting that we started going towards uh, also i feel like uh, people who were not uh, as involved with the first set of songs they got a little more involved and their personality came into the song so the the sounds started getting bent a little bit in a different direction but uh, but every time you would play those tunes at a gig you know you, you know that okay fine the 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 form that we have found for these tunes also it it falls i hate saying it like this but within the acceptable parameters of what the vata is and i think that's the trap that we fell into कि अब ये तो कर दिया तो अभी वॉट इज इट दैट इज वी यू नो वी स्टार्टेड आई थिंक प्ले पुटिंग इट रियली हाई प्रीमियम ऑन अदा साउंड कि ओके वी नीड टू वी नीड टू बी आइदर वी नीड टू बी ट्रू टू वेट एट द सेम टाइम यू नो वेट एंड लाइक वी स्टार्ट पुटिंग लिटिल बिट ऑफ एक्स्ट्रा वेट ऑन आर सेल्स सो बिकॉज ऑफ दैट लाइक द सॉन्ग राइटिंग स्लो डाउन अ लिटिल बिट एंड देन ऑल्सो लाइफ आई आई गॉट आई गॉट मैरिड at kids <laughs> ujwal got married and uh, then uh, mohit got married and uh, we th- just me- meeting up catching up regularly just reduces a little bit you know shows are still happening and uh, in fact just before the world came to a stop the shit storm of covid happened we were touring australia and we had uh, i think four five shows and it was fantastic like you know it, it it had everything like the the gig where everything worked the way it was supposed to a gig that almost got washed out to a gig where uh, uh, our monitors failed from the first hit and we are like we are so well versed with the tunes that uh, chayan oni and i guitar, uh, guitars vocals keyboards and me uh, and i like we just we had a click track and we just played like three songs to that because we just knew okay, okay x number of bars of playing here wow. just, yeah we just this was in brisbane and uh, yeah so that i think it, it it slowed down because of 
बिकॉज अ लाइफ रियली यू नो एंड आई ऑल्सो फील दैट यहाँ पर दिस इज माई ओपिनियन दैट देर इज नॉट इनफ मनी कमिंग बैक इन यू नो एंड देर कुड बी अ लॉड ऑफ फैक्टर्स ओवर ह्योर दैट इट्स अ बिग बैंड इट्स एट पीपल एंड वीव ऑलवेज बीन वी वी वीव ऑलवेज बीन अंडरस्टूड बट मिस रिप्रेजेंटेड एंड बाय दैट आई मीन लाइक वी हैव वीव नेवर मैनेज टू फाइंड द राइट मैनेजमेंट एजेंसी to present us in a in a certain way so for the, because of that like our positioning has always fault has faltered because i'm thinking do album kar li chande ka award jeet liye ye coke studio kar liya unplugged kar liya duress kar liya ek film mein gana de diya which amitabh bachchan sang ye sab ho gaya wo sab ho gaya you know presidents ke liye baja liya <laughs> esplanade jaise venues baja liye cairo opera house baja liya college festivals kar liye almost got held hostage in the, the, at, at gigs and uh, got the respect of like a bunch of fans who are like this college kid to the slightly more evolved listener classical form sab like what else are we supposed to do just for this thing to i'm not saying that the universe owes us anything i'm not trying to suggest that but what else are we supposed to do like ki which other box are we supposed to check before this becomes a self sustaining thing you know because it feels like constantly one has to put in too much effort and that is that is the reality which all all of us should should accept and should have accepted and like kept at it but then we i'm hoping that uh, this year because we sent we have that group and everybody was like happy new year and all that so first of jan i said ki dhande gaad denge is all <laughs> like you know that's my that's my inner jart talking and i'm very clear like they, we have to like put out some tunes this year because they they've been lying with us you know they, they we just we just have the tunes we've we've kind of have the rough structure and all that we need to finish it and just like put it out and get it out of our system because i'm a firm believer until the time it doesn't go the new stuff will not come and yeah somebody needs to kick start that thing i'm hoping that i will tell the people i'll tell the people in the band like the time code for this so they don't have to listen to my ramble before this but they can jump straight to this point and say like ki ab to maine announce kar diya i i would do the opposite and make them listen and not get to the time code i don't think they love me that much <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. i mean that's what the inner jart and you should want tell me about another facet of it you mentioned earlier about how you know you can look at advaita either as a band or as a brand like both those aspects are there mm. and elsewhere also you mentioned somewhere that uh, you go out of your way to limit the number of shows advaita does in delhi for example because you don't want to saturate the market you don't want someone to feel kare inko to agle mahine sun lenge right and you do that because not because of what you do that because of the brand not the band yeah so how does one think about this because now we've reached the space where the band is going to be all about music right mm. the more you play the better you are and blah 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 yeah. and just keep producing music and all of that don't worry about the other stuff the brand is about other skills yeah. which you would have had to learn which would not have come naturally mm. you know where you think of marketing positioning blah blah this yeah. that so what has that journey been like uh, for you like are there people within the band who are just bothered about the band mm. and then therefore are there people who have to take on that role mm. and say can your brand ka so as so you take a step back there as well and you you know see this kind of bigger picture and uh, how has and how has that view of the bigger picture evolved along with the bigger picture because in the time that advaita is around uh, the world has also changed completely yeah, yeah. no we've got uh, as lucky as we've been uh, that our music reached the number of people that it has and uh, we've uh, i'll use the word like you know like a semi small cult <laughs> bit of following that we've got which is great yeah when know? people come to you at shows and say seen unseen seen <laughs> yeah, <unseen."> yeah. <laughs> yeah there you go what yeah. cult but no but yesterday mm. uh, there were i think were five six people who walked up to me the first person was a seen unseen uh, couple which now forever will be called the seen unseen couple <laughs> seen unseen. and after that everybody was just like i love your work with advaita wow nice, so, nice. i was kidding obviously uh, yeah. no 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 but having said that like as lucky as we have been we've also been i i think really unfortunate that we thought that ki so 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 when ground and space came out like uh, there was not really like what the, i don't think was any i don't even remember if there was youtube 2009 i don't think there was there it was not that relevant it wasn't big but it was there ha so mm-hmm. yeah i mean it this online presence thing was not a thing so we were still like selling cds you know when silence came out around 2012 uh, there was this thing about 
and i was fighting the band and this was one of those could have turned ugly things you know like i said ki yaar why do we need a label <laughs> why are we doing this why do we need to license our music for 5 years to somebody for like a few lakhs of recoupable royalty you know like why like and i'm and, and i understand the entire thing about like maybe a machinery is behind you that will distribute your music and all of that but i'm not saying that i saw the writing on the wall ki like these record labels will not will be pointless but i used to visit music shops uh, and i would see that they are more about like selling laptop bags now as opposed to cds which are in a corner and then they they're not even well lit you know so yeah like why do we need it i lost the argument uh, the album came out and it was it looks great you know and it like they've the artwork that he did was fantastic all this and i was like it's okay this is also cool big to rain here so show se hi paise ban rahe around that time one thing i started doing was we started getting inquiries for uh, is adwaita interested in doing like production work you know say in from the corporate anthems to to a certain set of uh, like we so for example the the i forgot the i forget the year but the paris climate summit the hmm. films that went from india the government of india uh, sent one film and uh, terry uh, they sent one film and we did the music for that so stuff like that started you know we we started doing all of that ki theek hai gigs ho rahe and uh, we want to limit the number of gigs because i don't see i i don't think that i'm i'm forever concerned with the fact that there is too much of a like presence so it just becomes literally that thing that you mentioned ki you know ki i'll catch them the next time around it's like having residency in a place which we never did and we will never do it and i don't even know which bands do that but uh, in india but uh, but this thing of not being accessible i think like also puts a automatic premium i just i just feel that and and i feel that internally also for us it it gave us this thing of this gig means so much more you know so uh, for example the habitat center had uh, the sign auditorium had a special event uh, where they were celebrating some landmark anniversary of the habitat and we played that event and you know like it was curated a certain way we we wrote some special arrangements for it so i think that in that sense each gig each gig becomes a little special and it just holds so much more value going to the branding wala bit one thing i'm one one thing i was i meant by that was ki i think all of us realized that advaita se na chula nahi chalega और हम जलाना भी नहीं चाहते लाइक वी आई वी डोंट वांट आर लाइवलीहुड आई मीन वी वुड लाइक इट बट द रियलिटी इज दैट आर लाइवलीहुड कैन नॉट बी डिपेंडेंट ऑन वेदर यू नो इट्स अ बैंड व्हिच हैज एट पीपल एंड व्हेन वी ट्रैवल वी हैव इट्स टेन ऑफ अस एट लीस्ट इफ नॉट इलेवन प्लस इफ समबडी इज क्लेमिंग टू रिप्रेजेंट अस और हैज गॉट इज द गिग देन इज फाइंडर्स फी एंड देयर इज लाइक देयर कट एंड ऑल दैट and when that's that slice is very like it's, it's nothing you know between eight people unless and until you're a heavy touring act so i i was very clear that this is not going to work in our favor right like either we have to do a lot or do a different kind of gig or uh, change the way we approach it so i suggested it to the band there were a few other people in the band also who who are mostly like you said you know ki there are some people who are just interested in like ki music karna kya batao you know and there are some people who some of us who Like initially when 2009 when we went down and we to to yesterday when we recorded the first round of payment like went out of our not the band kitty like we took our own money you know uh, three of us we put our own money down uh, and who uh, hai but going to that brand wala thing I I feel that being associated with Advaita has benefited all of us to the point where it's uh, that that in, it has added to our individual branding. you know like i i can not i might be a f- this music producer person studio teacher whatever but i will always be the bass player from advaita like that is it you know and uh, the other guys also but uh, but yeah so everybody is doing something connected to music where the advaita branding just spills over in terms of the band doing something like we tried this push of like uh, creating small channels of merch uh, merchandise related like, uh, to some youtube presence and all of that but again it goes back to the first part of the conversation where we were talking where we like you need like a you you need a separate set of professionals to do that for you one is willing to pay for that but i don't think that there is that kind of there there was that kind of uh, depth i hate it i'm saying it like this but depth of talent when we were looking for it maybe we were we were looking for it in the wrong circles you know i don't know but uh, but then i also like i'll say this much i th- we completely missed the boat on like moving to streaming <laughs> our music came on 
Spotify and other platforms. I keep saying Spotify. It is something else. But uh, it came on other platforms. I think only in 2017, 2018. We were so lazy. I'm like, so who will do it? Who will like? Yeah, who will do it? Who will finish the paperwork? Which will take the music online and all that. And uh, yeah, we we missed like big chunks of things that you had to do if you wanted to. But what would have happened if you went on to streaming earlier? No, I'm say- I'm saying that this taking the social media online game a little more seriously, like creating an online presence, because I I feel that if you have enough of that, you can continue to be like present in the minds of people and relevant in the minds of people. Like Abhir, now I'm sure the assumption is that oh, is it that over? Like when was the last time they played and all that? And that's fine. That's why I'm saying like it dormant, not defunct. You know, like we haven't played for a, we haven't the last gig we played was last year Jaipur Lit Festival. which is exactly a year ago almost exactly a year ago yeah. Yeah. we haven't played since then and uh, yeah so it's a, it's a, it's a fair assumption to make like is the is the is the band like around also so i'm saying ki if he had played the online game a little better and hint hint chayan this is towards you <laughs> because wo he claims to do all the online things and all that but but yeah so ye agar kiya hota i just feel like it would have been a I don't know. It it would have just been a little more relevant given the context of our times. Like I don't think now you can you can survive without having an online presence. Like it, and we we just don't. Like we made a YouTube channel in twenty eighteen. You know, ki we finally kuch kar dete. Our uh, uh, somebody uploaded the audio for our second album, whose views are like hundred k plus and all. And who? I don't know who. Like some random fan who's uploaded our music, which we never complained about, you know, because we didn't do it. Somebody else did it at least, you know. But uh, we we record. We have recorded almost every gig that we have played ever since. Like we started getting digital systems uh, at our gigs. Uh, we, you know, we have material for. So like uh, between the two albums, we went to uh, uh, Palampur, and basically we rented a cottage. We stayed there, and we like, "Ki chalo, gaane likte, bajana hai, bajao." Otherwise, music is set up, and we lived lived there uh, for about a week, and we wrote some sketches. Like there are a lot of ideas from there. There is, uh, d- let me just call it documentary material. You know, there is, uh, d- yeah, we have catalogued. we have documented we have just not used it <laughs> i think you know one throw away suggestion is ki whenever you jam a camera laga do and put it up as a vlog yeah. and it can just be one random camera somewhere like an insta 360 or even a gopro or a simple camera you don't have to have five cameras which is the other <laughs> thing we overthink yeah of what is content Yeah, so yeah. much i'll give uh, so we went to play in calcutta mm. and this was one of those festivals something durga puja pata nahi kya some auditorium gig was happening and we were supposed to play at 4 in the morning okay our set started at 4 so chair and ujwal did this thing of like they were bunking together and they did this whole some sort of percussion like they are doing body percussion and like just singing one of our tracks ghir ghir chair that thing raked up some ridiculous number of views right like it went like north of like 100 1000 to 200000 jo bhi and we were sitting there and we're like man zero effort Yeah, complete chill. Yeah, yeah. No, co- no pretense. You're sitting in your beds. <laughs> you know. Yeah, your... Mike, बात बताओ. Uh-huh. There's, there's no correlation quite often between effort and the response you get. Yeah. What people want is intimacy. What people want is they want to see people being themselves. कि कुछ मतलब कि कि क्या हुआ कि वो नकाब हिट गया ना मुखौटा हिट गया यू नो दिस इज जस्ट हु यू गाइज आर दिस इज नॉट अ प्रोड्यूस्ड एक्ट कि कैमरा बदलो एडिट करो ऐसे ये करो वो करो इट्स जस्ट पीपल बीइंग दमसेल्स एंड देर इज नथिंग मोर अडिक्टिव एंड एंडियरिंग देन कंटेंट लाइक दैट सो इफ यू सी इफ यू जस्ट हैव अ बंच ऑफ म्यूजिशियंस बींग दमसेल्स एंड यू गाइज आर म्यूजिशियंस एंड प्रोड्यूसर्स यू ऑब्वियसली गेट द साउंड राइट तो आई डोंट थिंक द कैमरा मैटर्स ये कोने में तुम एक कोने में तुम इंस्टा थ्री सिक्सटी भी लगा दो तो ठीक है काफी है यार सो वी हैव इन आर हैज लाइक प्लेस सच हाई प्रीमियम ऑन द पैकेजिंग यू नो दैट वी आर विक्टिम्स ऑफ आर ओन लाइक यू नो लाइक दिस वियर्ड बार दैट वी सेट इट इज आई डो नो मैन लाइक इट्स जस्ट मे बी मे बी वी वील कम अराउंड टू इट एंड इट्स इज दिस इज वॉट दिस इज वॉट हैपन्स वेन वी गेट डाउन टू रिकॉर्डिंग ट्यून सो लाइक वी हैव थ्री सॉन्ग्स विच आर फिनिश्ड विच आर बीन मिक्सड गॉड नोज हाउ मेनी टाइम्स ओवर 
यू नो एंड रिकॉर्डेड कितना कर लिया उसको लाइक वीव री रिकॉर्डेड लाइक पार्ट्स इन एट एंड हम लोग खत्म ही नहीं कर रहे उसको बिकॉज वीव गॉट सम सेंस ऑफ एंड बाई वी आई मीन लाइक ऑल ऑफ अर गिल्टी इन दिस लाइक वीव गॉट सम सेंस ऑफ लाइक दिस इज सपोज टू बी दैट एंड एज अपोज टू लेट दिस वर्जन बी ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर टाइम दैट वी पुट आउट यू नो बट या वी आर नो मैन वी वी जिस विक्टम्स ऑफ लाइक ऑफ of our past selves where we've set this standard and we're not accepting ki aisa isko change kar sakte hain so here's a sacrilegious thought hmm. maybe you need to treat your serious music the way you treat your jingles <laughs> you know, just do sure. it karo but paaso karo yeah like just do it put it out there do it put it out there yeah you know the other, the other day i was sitting with ujwal he was he was over christmas dinner ke din we, he hung back and we were, we were chatting and i said what if we the material these three songs that i'm talking about which is just lying with us i said kisi ko batate nahi hai band mein hum log release kar dete kya ho jayega will they fire us <laughs> like kya ho jayega like will they send goons to our house delhi wale yahi karte you know but like ho, hoga kya tha sada but uh, but yeah maybe you're right like maybe it just needs to be taken a little less seriously or maybe you, you just know? record a bunch of different versions and make it open source and let others mix it <laughs> that's a bit much huh? <laughs> that, that 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 cosmic wave of energy has now gone and suddenly every member of advaita in delhi is like getting hiccups and anxiety and they wondering who's saying what like yeah, <laughs> yeah. that is what is happening right now <laughs> yeah no man the amount of control that the yeah that the band exercises is just is just ridiculous it which brings which you asked right like are there some people in the band who are doing more than and and i guess like that should be the case that should be the case like like i again beatles right Lennon writes a tune. McCartney shuts up and plays. This is Paul McCartney, probably the greatest songwriter of, I'll say it, all time. Right? He just shuts up and plays. Or like Peppers is happening where I think George Harrison he played maracas on a tune, you know. Like and leading up to a certain point, uh, like for the longest time, I used to think, "Yeah, revolver, tax man, it begins." And like that George Harrison solo, and it's only when you dive deep and start research- researching, and I'm like, "It's like a Paul McCartney ne bajaya hai wo solo. It's not even George Harrison." Wow. Okay. Yeah, yeah. There's a book by Jeff Emmerich. It's a fantastic book. It's called Here, There, and Everywhere. Mm. Jeff Emmerich is the recording engineer of the Beatles, right? Of uh, the most uh, important recording engineer of the Beatles. and the entire book like till a certain point he's just dissing harrison he's like every time there used to be a harrison solo that had to be recorded like they would just like yeah hey, this is going to take time we are going to get late you know and you imagine like that's the that's the best band in the world for like i mean ever there's and, a so when i was a kid i used to think paul was much better than john like you know you always have the paul versus john thing and obviously false dichotomy they're both different geniuses yeah. but i love paul more and i don't know if i've begun begun to change that uh, over the years but i've come to appreciating uh, lennon songs much more and there's this beautiful clip i saw recently where uh, have you seen it where paul mccartney is presenting his desert island discs I've uh, the BBC uh, yeah, 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 yeah 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 and right yeah. at the end he says I don't want to play a Beatles song or any of my songs I want to play a John song and he plays Beautiful Boy yeah and just seeing uh, McCartney's face while he's listening to that it was so beautiful and yeah. it's such a lovely song that that you think about it that in a certain kind of laid back way John was like tre- tremendous songwriter like watching the wheels for example is yeah. one that's always been uh, a song I love and uh, you know you earlier mentioned redemption redemption song bob marley's mm. and i thought of chris cornell's version of that yeah and chris cornell also has a great version of watching the wheels yeah, yeah. and chris cornell does a creator thing with covers where wo har song cover karta hai yeah. and does it brilliantly and makes it his own yeah it's all, it seems like he wrote the song it seems like he wrote the song yeah aur usme kuch overthinking nahi hai yeah. wo guitar leke kar deta hai nikal jata hai aage mm. aur aur ek song pick up kar leta hai it's mm. mind blowing for for me like we like the beatles when when song writing talent I mean imagine a situation like I, I imagine a situation where you write penny lane you know which i think is yeah i think it's kya gana hai like i i, I like how do you describe a song like this perfect it's 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 got like it's got every element work there's nothing in that recording which is out of place right it's mm-hmm. perfect and then it's like okay fine like you know that's a nice song now i'll write something else and that guy goes and writes like strawberry fields <laughs> like this and and george martin had that thing that uh, the singles will never be part of the album you know and like it is just you, 
each guy just topping the other person but at the same time having the respect that okay this is your song tell me what to play by the end i mean you know i used to but from while listening to the white album i used to think like ki this is the album i'm really supposed to appreciate you know it's almost like saying uh, certain certain people who don't like say for example get radio head no and for the longest time i was in that category i was like you know no everybody likes it i have to like it also like let let's get on with this right and then now it's fine if you're okay with the bands being your favorite album it's okay <laughs> but uh, but i used to tell myself ki like i have to like the white album like it has been said that but then I just couldn't get into that album and then the more you read about it and the more I'm hearing music around it and then go back to the album and you realize that the white album was recorded when those guys had just begun to start hating each other like you know they're not talking to each other they don't for the first time ever they're not showing up as a band for the sessions people are record abbey road the different studios have been booked they are recording in different rooms and that's why that album sounds like completely like disconnected like everybody is trying to write as themselves and not as or for the beatles and it begins to just disintegrate well digressions apart but i feel like somehow like every band bands and bands are not democracies they can't function like that you know like you're lucky if you manage to get a song done we as a developer as a as a functioning democracy whatever that means we manage to get two albums done but i we had a meeting uh, meeting as if we were like a bunch <laughs> of corporates but we met up the uh, but little while ago at my studio and i was like man let's let's do it like let's just for the people who can put in a little bit of time in this and get a little bit of work done like just sketch it out you know the other people will come and like lend personality but wo and wo it's it's reality right like it, it's not 2000 10 2011 only more like all of us are single like kabhi sabhi kabhi we can meet whenever we want i've got two kids now you know so and i have a strict policy like past 6 o'clock i will not work you know and raman gonna like when he when he reached out and he said hello i said ki just fine uh, only two questions i asked like ye gaane kiske liye hain and dusra tha ki when do you want it he was the first guy who gave me a deadline you know of all the bands and all that i've worked with like proper deadline he said october end october it has to be over i missed it by one day because i was ill the last four songs on the album five songs on the album were done in a week and i had the worst cold you know i could i have relied i relied on meters and i just like i was constantly doing steam and taking power naps and all that just to recover and and mix it but uh, before we started the album i told him i was like he's six pushing at 630 i cannot work past it you know because i have this thing of like ki you know kids are growing up like my daughter's growing up i have to make sure that i i, I go back home and i'm sure the kids will be secretly groaning why is papa always show, showing up in the evenings <laughs> so. <laughs> no you know it's uh, so i'm i'm in bomb here right now and ishan's traveled with me for these two shows and uh, my daughter i know that i have to go back and win favor <laughs> oh, she will yeah she yeah she will uh, she's growing up too fast man you know like, so i i make it a point ki, like if, even if i'm working whatever the work is and i and i started this post uh, 2014 ishan was born and i just stopped working sundays i don't i think uh, comping the episode on a sunday is the only work that i that i touch and otherwise there's no work and there's no work post 7 ke baad to matlab scene hi nahi hai Well, you thank know. you for all the late hours and Sundays you've kind of uh, put in. Uh, uh, family is the exception, you see. <laughs> <So> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Family. Now I can, I can uh, take these privileges. Tell me about the gig with Raman, because you know I, I came across this old interview of yours, uh, not old, but like pre-pandemic, where you're talking about how much you admire the local train, and they're such a good band. They're living together. They're like the ideal of what uh, a band should be, and. Uh, Uh, and then you're working with Raman on a solo project. So how did mm. that come about, and how does one think about it? Because on the one hand, it is uh, you know you're producing it, you're playing on it, you're doing all of that. But on the same time, it's unhesitatingly his project, right? Yep. It's he's a guy. He's a he's a main character, and everything else is around his vision and his uh, his um, uh, musical journey. So uh, how how did that work about? Like how important is the uh the sort of the personal rapo and then how does a working go like how do you handle your ego in that whole equation and so on and so forth so i'm very clear about one thing if i'm producing uh if i've been asked to come on board in that capacity i'm very clear that uh, this is not my project 
you know so when raman came to me having said that when Ra- raman came uh, to me in Ma- feb last year we, sp- we spoke once then he i told him ki i need to hear demos you know that's a process like i have ki uh, i can't it is in your head right now it needs to come out of a speaker to which i can react to and by demo i just mean like i just need to hear the melody and all that so he he went into a studio in in delhi with a drummer uh, webber who played on a couple of the first tunes on the album and he recorded this demo and he came and so he we met at the studio he played the material and it was you know it's incredible i uh, we spent a couple of hours before we got to auditioning the music we just spent a couple of hours chatting about everything but music so for me on that rapo wala point like that's very very important you know like i cannot work with what's the word for it and also like i can't work with like i i don't want i want to work with a person not with a uh, not with the ego mm-hmm. <laughs> like not with the pres- representation like some sort of you know like there is this boundary wall that you're dealing with i don't i i don't want that i want to get to like who is it and i treat whether you know this is the most important song like that you've written like it it me if you i know how hard it is to come up with an idea and play it for somebody else and ask them their opinion and then ask them to make it better that's the job of a producer close the loop on decisions it will make everything better right i know how hard that is and 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 raman like i said you know so like you said you said local train i mean they were top of the indie pinnacle you know that's probably the biggest indie band in the country and uh, i remember raman once telling me that february ke mahine mein logon ne 20 show kiye the 28 din ka to mahina hai to matlab ki constantly playing they have you cross the threshold of over exposure and you you reach the threshold of not enough exposure ki kitna bhi kar lo like you are always in demand plus this very strong working ethic of every wheel uh, moving at the same pace in the same direction not you know nobody's fighting each other till the certain point till till the number of albums that they did so for reasons for whatever reasons he left uh, the band and then he landed up my question to him was this only ki like ki how does this work like who are these songs for he said these songs are for me and i was very clear ki wo kiske liye gaane hai kyunki agar logo ke liye gaane hai then to aap bajao aapke paas local train hai like you have the biggest stage in the country you don't need to shift but uh, the covid year has changed a lot you know for him which is i'll just digress ki like i a lot of the music that i that i hear now post the last two years uh, the post covid <laughs> era like if if you're singing as if it is 2018 man like i don't know what kind of yeah like what kind of life you're living kuch to hona chahiye kuch to like how has it happened that covid years did not change you so i could see it in his lyrics you know he, his first tune mehroom like it is so his mother was down with covid and it was she was in the hospital and it was a little serious i guess it was a little serious but uh, his mother like he told me this story he said ki like you know your mom said ki tum gaana likho to you write a hit so he wrote mehroom that day you know for the longest time while we were tracking the album he was he was living with us from ghar pe and he would uh, every morning he would come out just like writing tunes on a machine like likhe ja raha likhe ja raha and like tarashe ja raha hai gaano ko so the process was very clear like i told him okay fine these songs you need to like find the point at which these ideas were you need to remember remind yourself of when you wrote these ideas you know and there is this thing about like layering the track against like a metronome and all that so i didn't use a metronome you know mehroom we were recording and i was like everything needs to come from you like tumhari feel gear on hum log place karenge so that kind of put him in like a he was talking about it to the gig last night he, you know he mentioned it in almost every gig like he hated it because he was he they, the local train used to play with backing arrangements you know and here i am i'm saying like let go of every thing and just like play the song the way you wrote it because i will leave it to me to put a mic in front of you which will just capture energy because jaisi wo energy ho jayega because i am your first audience now which is the way that i think i approach this project and every other project that that if i am not reacting to it in a manner which i am expecting the people to react to it it's not going to work so in that spirit like let's go cooper on this <laughs> jab tak nahi milega take hum bajate rahenge you know no matter what it takes and there we we worked for a, f- a few months like five months on the album there were three unproductive days you know wow. yeah that's it like one day he just had like some personal things going on so he could not sing and i was like man chill we don't need to one day technology hit us like f- sound card drivers and all that 
and uh, the, our our days was also placed in such a way that we would meet in morning he was staying in noida he would uh, land up at the studio and we would work for a couple of hours then we would go and pick up ishan from school mm. drop him home grab lunch go back to the studio do a few more hours you know we kept doing this it's t- tiring us out and maine kaha tu ghar hi aa ja you know there's a room just stay there and corner quarter note nahi but corner note upar wale kamre mein baith ke kaam kar lenge so we did that like a lot of the album was start inside that bedroom studio in my you know and i would take it back to the studio and work but throughout this entire thing my i was very clear that okay and i really appreciate him uh, for this he he was like look man i'm going to write the songs okay i have written the song this is the structure vagera vagera you are producer you decide you know i would make him play takes again and again and again like you play it right no this is not working you fix it you fix it you fix it and it's not about because and i'm t- i told him one thing like forget pitch forget time mahol de do you know wo to koi plug in nahi hai once you hear the vibe that i hear as a listener which is working for me now you can execute with technique you know but we'll it will take as long as it takes it does not make a difference right but we will get the vibe right once we get the vibe right we are gold and i want to say that the tracks i think except for one track on the album which is dastane shock every other track is like 10 se 12 ghante ka kaam that's it you know he would sing and uh, we are okay with the take then uh, we spend like a few hours on me throwing some things at it and uh, we tracked four songs in a go with the drummer so one day four songs and that's how we and each song like he was going after like a video and all that but he gave me like full creative control to the extent where it does not make him it, it, it does not make him sound like does not make him sound nakli you know and he was very clear like he also like during this covid time and all that he got into the rolling stones so he kept talking about like sticky fingers and exile on main street and uh, my dad is like full rolling stones fan you know sticky like, fingers is one of my all time yeah yeah, yeah it is nice. it's the like the when that can't you hear me knocking starts yeah, yeah. like you know like i can like it's the like immediately like every movie becomes like scorsese movie and then like <laughs> every sound every scene becomes better it's a great album and he got into like this whole charlie watts thing and i i guess like i was lucky enough that he that i heard that music dad played so much rolling stones ghar pe you know like maine wo goat's head soup sticky fingers and exile on main street like the cassettes ghis gaye the you know so much so that not only the highs disappeared but the the pitch changed <laughs> the tapes were so old but uh, so i knew what he was trying to say you know like what he was and it it if you hear like exile on main street for example it's and for the people who might think like i'm comparing his music to rolling stones and all man wo nahi kar raha like Obviously it's, it's not, about yeah. yeah it's about like a certain vibe it's about capturing something like there are inconsistencies on on in in these songs by inconsistencies are inconsistencies i mean there are slight timing issues you know but like you listen to sympathy for the devil for example you know and jagger is deliciously lazy when he says you know please allow me to introduce myself he is like there is there is that urgency in the arrangement which he is just not respecting and he's like this just lazy delivering it you know and we you listen to that and then you listen to like say dastane shock ka chorus delivery and you know and that's the thing like i'm like you man lay back a little bit you know like th- that doesn't mean anything what does that mean lay back kaise samjhaoge and then you start talking about common references so which is the great thing about like that happened that in the course of working together with him on this that our references really aligned you know and he th- and we are full credit to him like you know i'm that key it's it's not easy man to write like of com- coming from local train and to write songs which his band kind of did not agree to do like you know for whatever reason like you know the, the approach that he wanted to take and he and they didn't ag- oh, his band didn't want to do these songs so he had written the songs hmm. and he had he had a he had a well he had a sense of where he wanted to go with the songs you mm. know like turn it into a little more rock and roll thoda sa like add some inconsistency to the mix you know add some chaos to the mix ki kya hoga agar aise karenge and uh, 
that's not the that's that wasn't the approach of whatever TL local train 1.0 so and 2.0 didn't happen you know so when he when he came to me like i was full i was all for that you know ki ki everything else is predict- predictable wo to control ho hi jayega but what is it that will happen <laughs> when you do one more take and uh, just practicing a bit like with the students also we talk about lot about this like i i spend the year talking to them about like what is a good take how do you decide that is what you're being paid for Uh, that is it you don't forget what you think about what a producer is supposed to do i'll i'll tell you <laughs> you know my understanding of it is close the loop take a decision make the call this is it you know then you have to be convinced that of of so many things that you know that the artist a cannot do better and then now let's go into that you know, what does better mean you know is it a question of ability or is it a question of time and place is can you change like something in the room like make his mood lighter or do something or the other maybe this needs a little aggression so i will not shy away from suggesting yaar do push up mark can you deliver this take you'll be a little out of breath and you'll be trying to catch the beat like i know you can sing irrespective of the situation because i've seen you run on stage and sing so you can deliver energy we that's what we are looking for you know whatever it takes man whatever it takes there's a song on the album lullaby a lullaby for the anxious boy lovely song i just yeah. love the soundscape of that yeah so that uh he was sitting in the control room in the studio and uh, he sang a scratch because what you we were trying to do was ki theek hai let me just record like a scratch vocal i'll put a mic on the guitar also and then you can go and dub your vocal properly that guitar take is not great you know sonically speaking like there are squeaks and there is a lot of questionable fidelity in it and it was not to a click track that's the take on the album because we he try to do it again and i was like man koshish to kar rahe hain but recreate hi nahi ho raha so we will just live with that you know we will make that work anyway because that take is gold now you know and on top of that the entire track was built which took us now that we ha- now that we know that and which is such a awesome thing now we know that this cannot change so everything else has to work with this So then that soundscape just like went in that direction automatically the only song on that album which uh, which we d- which was in his head i had no idea was uh, the last track on the album it's called shagird blues and i had no idea like he just said ki 12 bar blues hai that's all he said and then we did this whole thing live and all that and it turned out like that but just to close it like he he had this ki you ha- i am hiring you for this close the loop on everything tell me what works tell me what you need to change and uh, i really admire that you know the i because sometimes you are hired because you can get the job done sometimes you are hired because you are the only person for the job and i think like this is a, this is a case of the latter <laughs> like i i would really like to believe so i i i'm i'm sure there are other people in the country who could have pulled this off for him easy no problem but the fact of being being in a space where the two, where both of us had the same references for the direction direction in which needs to go to and whatever technical ability i have i could execute that for him and now like i am in that place where i have to like he was like okay we'll play live some playing playing bass with him i played bass for the first few shows and now i'm playing guitar so yeah it's just that like i i think the entire process was just like he knew that i will know when it's finished and the references will guide us to that point and the deadline october mein khatam karna hi karna hai because if he doesn't meet the october deadline then you don't have enough time for the album to work its way so that you can do gigs in january january to march will be the gigs so yeah it's it's doing pretty decent like it's you know there are there's a there's a lot of like backlash from his regular not regular but his old fans yeah the first video he posted like he got called a traitor when he posted mehru mehru posted that, mehru that like, was great man <laughs> there were people commenting on that video and calling him traitor <laughs> you know like this is some judas level bob dylan shit like man i called him i said ki yaar like how are you dealing with this shit mm. you know and I, i it's not it's got nothing to do with me one one guy one you know one of the songs like one, we, so we went and played a couple of duo acoustic guitar sets we did one in bangalore one in delhi 
and bangalore wale gekke baad na somebody he posted the video and somebody put up a comment ki you know he, i'm missing and he named his ex uh, band mm. ke member to your left you know and i was sitting on his right as i commented back and i said mai baith jata hu yaar left pe let the guy be you know like because that's the thing like you know ki he's and raman says this we were chatting about it and he says like he wrote the songs when he wrote them they became popular when a decade later mm. he had moved on you know and i think like that's the that's the true hallmark of an artist no like you karo aage badho karo aage badho so we are already talking about like april A- april may like the demo should be ready for what will be become his next album and uh, hopefully we start recording in june uh-huh. but yeah to finally like to close that point ki i am very clear that this is his project you know and to deal with the ego the ego that has to be dealt with is mine <laughs> i have to be okay with coming up with arrangement ideas and parts and changes and then not claiming ownership and i'm absolutely fine with that you know i'm like my, for me for me it's like the bigger picture is the music that is getting done and uh, this again like it it's kind of similar to the whole advaita thing that there is no way i can come up on my own with the kind of music that adita does it's just not possible it's never going to happen not even in a parallel universe it needs you know eight of us six of us eight of us to having done like round space and silency it needs this this thing of raman to do his thing for it to become what it will become in in my hands you know but yeah i am completely fine with like ki ki ye uska material hai और वो वही है लाइक द गाई हु राइट्स यू नो दिस इज दिस इज नॉट अ लेरन मैक आर्टनी सिचुएशन दिस इज मोर लाइक अ लेरन एंड जॉर्ज मार्टिन सिचुएशन सो आई एम जॉर्ज मार्टिन एंड वाह आई एम जॉर्ज मार्टिन एंड जेफ एमरिक रोल्ड इन टू वन और दिस इज लाइक डिलन एंड डेनियल लेनुआ फॉर टाइम आउट ऑफ माइंड या या so not that i'm comparing either of you to either of them yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> see i was telling you this is this is the grammy <laughs> so, yeah. yeah right yeah. so you know so in both of these in both of these setups you're not the main act and one of them the whole band is a main act and the other one it's raman's vision which is driving everything though honestly even uh, for him it's an act of setting aside ego to say ki you produce it you 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 know and not kind of you know i'll do as many takes as you need but yeah. you're the, you're in charge of that and that also requires a certain maturity i think which uh, you know uh, you have to pay your dues for many many years before you get there i would imagine but when are you the main act like you've done the dirt machine stuff which i've heard which i was which i love but which was so different from anything you've ever done uh, yeah. b- b- that i've heard you do rather before in my limited uh, uh, this thing so you know when you are the main act what's going on like is there stuff that you um, keep working on which you don't put out there is there stuff that you want to do you know what is that sort of like what's that journey like so uh, i think that main act ka definition in my head is very uh, i don't know if it's different from the way like it it is perceived in a normal situation it's just uh, the i guess the amount of creative control like an exercise you know and i and i feel that every project i do like i i want to say 9 times out of 10 i get like 100% creative control anyway so in pretty much everything i do i consider myself like ki this thing would not have made it past the finish line without me you know that's the only bit of ego i've got but uh but on that note like the dirt machine is the the thing i am just not uh, consistent enough and i like it's just a question of like being lazy in parts and procrastinating and also trying to do everything on my own which is something which yeah is the only project where i do everything on my own anyway so i won't, won't let that go so the dirt machine sketches like i i wrote it and then you know the what happened was the, with the first ep like i i was playing a guitar at a certain level and as i became better as a guitar player i had to record it again then the recording engineer was not good enough <laughs> then i had to become better as a recording engineer then i had to become better as a producer and i was very clear that i'm in no rush you know so i took there's a track on that ep it's called blue cubes of ice i it is as i think it's as old as 2004 wow yeah yeah that recording is also from 2004 wow okay yeah yeah so it was it was done uh i i retracked the bass on it and i remixed it obviously that is a live recording from 2004 with a trio that i used to have called blue breakfast but i took the drum track and i redid some guitar parts and i redid the bass and all that and uh the opening track on that it's called it's about time that's something that 
I did 2010. So it's spread all across, uh, like like a like across a few years. But वो ही था कि like everybody in the chain, that part, every part is being played by me, and I'm not getting better at equal rate, <laughs> you know. So having said that, I finished the four four tunes, and I've got five right now, which I'm working on. and in my head like that's the main act and for the main act in the sense it's never going to be a performing thing i i don't think i do, i want to do it also like i just yeah instrumental music of that kind it wo thoda obtuse hai wo nahi chalne wala and chalne wala matlab ki it will be too much effort for too little return and return not in terms of money but also in terms of like i yeah i i will i don't know i think i will need two more guitar players एंड वो कहाँ से ले कर आऊँगा मैं लाइक मिल तो जाएंगे बहुत सारे बट लाइक आई आई लाइक इट विल बी अ लॉट ऑफ वर्क एंड जस्ट वॉन्ट डोंट वॉन्ट डू दैट सो इट विल बी अ रिकॉर्डिंग थिंग आई आई फिनिश अ ट्रैक लास्ट ईयर इट्स बीन मास्टर्ड फिनिश इट्स बीन लाइंग ऑन माई इट्स 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 अबाउट टेन मंथ्स इट्स बीन देर आई मैनेज टू गेट अ बंच ऑफ पीपल टू कलाबरेट ऑन इट आई सो कोविड हैपन एवरीबडी इज एट होम you know like who's my favorite drummer <laughs> so the first ep is all drummers on i'm doing everything else but the collaboration is with drummers so uh, there's a there's a drummer called keith carlock he is um, he's on to- he's steely dance drummer wow. so, and steely wonder and john mayer and uh, osnoy and uh, so that's your grammy if you perform with him <laughs> well wo gana pata nahi kitna obtuse hai but uh, But yeah, so I had written some guitar parts, and I said, "Keith, what will happen? He'll say no, no." So I reached out to Keith, and I mailed him, and I said, "Keith, hello, guitar player from India." And I and I've seen him live. He came with Sting when Sting came to India, uh, and he played in Delhi. So I mentioned all of that, and I said, "I'm just a fan, man. Like you know, like I have a tune. Like will you play on it?" He was so gracious. Like he said, "Ki yeah, yeah, send it." He heard it, and man, it was just like guitar parts with a metronome, hmm. and he could hear what I was hearing, like the flow of the song. and he took his time he learned the tune he said ki i'll do i'll just get familiar with it and i will send it back to you so he recorded drums on it that it sat and i was like first i have to like sit with this like kid carlock has played on my track you know <laughs> and uh, then i tra- then i said ki this i will try to write some vocals on, on this like a vocal part and all so i reached out to a few vocalists it didn't turn the way that i was uh, hoping it would and then vasundra vidalu v Vas- vasundra v vasu so vasu is like i know her from artisan limited days like really uh, close friend so she sang and then i was like okay this is taking shape so then i got some horns recorded in london and uh, it's turned into this whole funk thing so i'm like okay should i write more tunes like this but uh, but ha huh, so then now there are four like i said five tunes one is already done uh the second one is also finished i have to just have to f- play a little bit of bass on it is uh, cheesily called buppy gets the blues you know and uh, i had this thing uh, like early 2000s mein i had done some arrangements of bollywood tunes you know like jaane wo kaise log the jinke pyar ko kare wala like slide guitar thoda sa like bluesy arrangements for oh, trio lovely these are on youtube no so i i i wrote the parts and i rehearsed them with uh, with a few guys and uh, like intaha ho gayi intezar ki the sharabi tune and all that i wrote them and i actually reached out to the label you know uh, hmv if i'm not mistaken ki mm. i'll write to you you know because i thought like i'll do it properly like i'll just release it you know mm. uh, ki can't uh, claim to have written it but anyway they who am i <laughs> they never got back like kitne mails dale and all that i could just put it out on youtube but uh, so i've taken the taken some of those ideas and made like i said like you know a set of tunes called buppy gets the blues <laughs> wow wow <laughs> and that's going to be on the same thing as keith carlock kwala track oh wow and i'm writing three more one of them i'm hoping will feature a a rapper you know i'm just writing like the sketch for it and i just want to get like some it's not hip hop but like rap thing done on it so that is it like w- that is the outlet with that's the main act like that's my thing but if you ask me what my what my preferred gig is it is just playing guitar behind my son <laughs> that is the thing that i love the most so mere liye yeah like i mean i would rather consider that as the only thing <laughs> and i'll be more than happy but if but dirt machine like yeah this year at least five more tunes like i was hoping to do three tunes every year but mm. i but yeah i i've just i january 1st i set my i go to work every, first day of the year i have to let me superstitious about it so i went and uh, i've just like told myself that this year 25 tunes i have to release 
Yero. And I'm and I'm like manic saying it here also. But I, I, so I told Raman, that's what you're going to do. Okay, please take an album. Likh diyo. <laughs> and 10 are yours. I will take care of the other 15. But, uh, but yeah, that's the plan. So I will do at least five tunes and hopefully that will happen. And uh, yeah, that will get, give me some more like, you know, runway, open up some creative space and then some, maybe some new tunes come up, whatever. So yeah. we we will come to your preferred main gig but before mm. we talk about how uh, Ishan singing took off and all of that tell me in general about covid like like you said but that if you know if someone writes songs like it's 2018 uh, they don't you know they've missed uh, they've missed something big right um, and you've spoken about how covid changed you and changed the way you look at music uh, can you elaborate on that like if you think about those two years and a certain amount of time that we just spent being locked in yeah just locked in and i mean i don't want to state the obvious ki like everything as you know it changed and all that was up theek hai but i don't i can't think of a single person who did not have some form of grief touch them you know like my band like my 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 drummer aman he lost his father to covid my uh, mohit arex tabla player he lost his mother and uh, i'm just saying that there was this thing of g- g- grief and like this this g- weight and like life hitting everybody and then when stuff opens up you know and this desperate attempt to just not acknowledge I'm not saying that start writing I don't know what you know like songs which reflect on those times or I'm not I'm not saying that I'm there needs to be some sense of something hit you you know like there needs to be some change in of course there must be relief that you went back to life as it was and you there, there must be a sense of like ki this this desperate attempt to like try to recreate as it was but you're writing people are writing songs and i won't take names because i this is just my opinion like and maybe like it will come across as like yeah, i i don't like their music anyway but yeah but maybe i don't but but there is no sense of like like there has to be some you know that japanese saying that uh, don't be afraid of uh, mo- moving slowly be afraid of standing still it's 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 almost like it's almost like a lot of artists i know who post the covid years it's almost like they are, they have they are still there <laughs> you know ki na to na to unke na to unki art mein koi change aaya hai uh, i'm i'm not saying everybody should become serious but it's just, so if you are if you're glad that the world has opened up again you know then this introspection of like how do you reflect gratitude in music I I don't know is is it a chord progression is it is it is it a different set of lyrics because singer songwriter ka zamana hai na so everybody is writing yeah everybody is doing that so like then so then how is it that everybody is feeling the same way you know it's almost like a word cloud of emotions where different emotions is just taking turns to become like slightly bigger and as they become bigger and that word comes at you inside that word cloud uh, you can see the faces faces of like four or five artists who represent that emotion in this present time and it goes back and then another word becomes bigger and this word could be a part of a lyric or the general genre or whatever and it's the same artists faces you know i'm saying i'm saying that it feels like ki instead of acknowledging that maybe that life experience that life changing experience was i don't know good bad i don't know what that means but the, instead of acknowledging that life experience this is there's like this complete denial of it in like i could not i could not go back to e- even as something as simple as like playing guitar and maybe this is just me right maybe nobody else feels this way but i could just not go back to playing the guitar and playing of the same things while like dur- during the covid years like i i started doing those small videos with shan and all that and maybe there was some sense of relief and some sense of like you know that was my 
packaging of happiness for myself and pack- saving my sanity by doing some sense of music some amount of music but my the track that 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 i could only com- that i could complete during the covid years was that thing kleptocrat and that's like <laughs> you know that's i know the world man the other track i worked on with amartya only it's his track it's called my funny quarantine you know and uh, it's th- i'm yeah so uh, maybe it comes across this thing that all of us should be feeling like the end of the world thing but i'm saying that there is there should be one piece of music one piece of your art the one piece of your craft something which should acknowledge that those years happened they hit you they hit people around you and you were not in hiding or in denial and then get back <laughs> you know then get back to your regular schedule but what what happened to that interruption like why is yeah like you know you remember natasha's episode when she spoke about like we will get to know later so maybe maybe in a few years from now when there is no more running away from what the covid years did for us maybe then like some music is going to come out from some people who i hear their music and i'm like yaar ye kaise like this is this amount of lying to i can't do ab matlab i can't i don't know how you're doing it <laughs> you know but uh, i don't know if this is making sense or or if i'm like i'm i'm just trying to wrap my head around that how does a once in a lifetime event like that not do anything to you except make you double down on denying it even more with the one thing with which you can express and sure your music brings a lot of joy and a lot of happiness to people and i get it like a lot of people are doing that wo acha hai but uh, but don't you think like what, don't you think like something should something should fundamentally shift like seismic shift should happen happen like you know so I, i'll just think aloud in amitabha kumar's episode you know we refer to this book where uh, we refer to his experience where he uh, visited this uh, village in eastern up or wherever where there had been this riot in a village or people from outside had come and they had killed all the muslims there except one guy he went somewhere else to hide everybody else ran into the fields they were slaughtered uh, including his wife and including his kids and 7 years later amitabha kumar revisits that village if i remember correctly and that guy is now there uh, with a new five new family and he behaves as if nothing ever happened right and the thing is how do you deal with grief you know you can't you can't uh, you you can't make it a skin for yourself you can't live in that grief all the time maybe it's a natural human reaction to completely be in denial no and- sorry so sorry to cut mm-hmm. in but i think i think by not dealing with it it'll always be a part of you sure i so I- so as an artist as a musician as a songwriter whatever like you know as someone who has a way of expressing uh through something through yeah like that's your release no you, that makes it leave you normatively i agree with you hmm. uh descriptively i'm saying it can be different for people and sure. i'm trying to understand why like uh, and also i don't like of course if you don't deal with it it stays with you but it stays with you even if you deal with it but um uh, the thing is for many people like denial i think is inbuilt into us it's hardwired into us denial of various like denial of our mortality is hardwired into us otherwise how would we find the will to live right and therefore we have to so there can be other denials which are part of the package which uh, uh, kind of come into that uh, and and um, you know like in the case of that guy where where i'm sure he can have a happy life with his new wife and where i'm sure that he doesn't think too much of what happened once in a while the thought will come to his head and it will be so horrible that he can just brush it away and and i think what happens and on a separate track i think what happens with many people is that you can you know progress in one of two ways and one way is that your art is a really Uh, in a sense a superficial thing it's something outside of you it's a superficial thing and you practice your craft you do what pleases people and you continue doing that and that's um 
uh, sort of the whole game and you don't really grow beyond that and there will be others who will grow regardless of whether anything tragic happens in their lives or not sure. they will grow anyway there will be a certain kind of uh, uh, terror of that comes in there'll be a gehrai that comes in and that's going to come in with time which is why you know when i look look at the stand up comedy scene i would not i think it's very cruel to compare the stand up comedy scene in india with that in the us because to me the gr- the greatest stand up comedy has happened by people in their 40s and 50s when they have that lived life behind them mm. you know most people in their 20s are really callow the mm. the indian scene is too young Yeah. you know i want some of these kids to get to 45 50 experience heartbreak death loss grief and then see the kind of work they do and in that context um the people who are going to change and get more gehrai would do it disp- in spite of covid not happening yeah and the sure. people who are going to stay on that shallow track because they're all who are not given to self reflection at all will remain not given to self reflection and covid won't affect them So in that sense for somebody like you and me uh you know covid change many subtle things which i agree with natasha maybe it'll take me years to um kind of articulate uh, uh, what the period uh, meant and uh, very hard to disentangle the pandemic from the other shit that's happening around you also yeah where there is a lot of other shit happening and how do you kind of disentangle that so perhaps you really can't perhaps you just move on you know you delete the backups <laughs> and uh, so sure uh, maybe you know maybe i'm being too harsh but uh yeah it it's also stems it also stems from the fact that uh, the kind of music that i want to listen to uh and you know 4000 weeks there's only so much music in here but the kind of music that i want to listen yeah, to there's 2000 left for you yeah around. there you go uh-huh. yeah uh i want it to come from a place of like it can't be wallpaper you know like a, i i I just can't I I don't understand because theek hai like in in the larger spirit of things I guess like these are these are trends which will pass they are uh, uh, artists or craftsmen or just executioners of certain ideas who will always remain shallow sure but I but I somehow feel just that uh, that it's a it will probably come out the wrong way because I don't I won't be able to phrase it but it's almost almost like ki ki every opportunity of a life experience th- th- there is an opportunity in that life experience to like translate it to something you know and i'm not i'm not saying ki ki you should put yourself ki ab ha main is is experience ke bare mein gaana likhunga i'm not saying that but there needs to be a i i i i expect there to be some sort of a change towards interacting with life itself which only gets reflected because i i mean i i see it through your art only you know and when i see this after what happened like i'm i'm not saying like after some life changing event like it cannot be joyous and and you can't be filled with gratitude or all that i'm not saying that but like pata nahi mere ko aisa lagta hai ki ki wo phase hue hain and maybe you're right maybe you're right ki like ki it will it will just it will just remain there and sure you know it it will remain there but it just feels it just it just feels weird to be uh, you know on the same playlists with certain people or on the same bill with certain people or on the same ki yeah like ki oh waisa music nahi yaar waisa music nahi hai you know ye alag hai you know this is ye alag hai because ye you can investigate this a little more i don't know maybe i'm just trying to add more value to stuff that that probably is not possible that you will get value from it but patani patani that is that is a negative thought and i'm like i i feel really i feel really weird for having it also because i'm like yaar ki kya farak pad raha hai like ki these people by these people i mean like a certain artist theek hai maybe maybe this is this is the edge of their uh, like ability to extract from experience and sure theek hai but i yeah i think yeah. my my credo here kind of is that uh, and this is something i've thought about and done for myself recently is that i don't want to criticize other artists and creators yeah. like my way of thinking is ki yaar agar kuch acha nahi laga kisi ke kaam mein to ek to stop consuming it nobody yeah. is forcing you to listen or read or you know whatever the particular piece may be and the other thing is yaar we are creators ourselves yaar fir hum banayenge na yeah is pe kya hai you know if we feel that there is something missing there something that uh, is not being expressed something that we would want to connect to to theek hai hum banate hai yeah yeah you yeah. know it ha it's just 
visual thinking thing with, with through which i'm the lens through which i'm looking at this but i like maybe maybe yeah, you're right like ki wo criticize kya karna consume karna hi band kar do so yeah 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 tell me about the good thing that happened during uh, uh covid in the sense that you started putting videos out with your son and and before we even get to those videos with your son tell me about how fatherhood changed you because in a sense it's almost like joining a band or taking a production in the sense that you have to subsume yourself you have to like take a back seat and observe and not be the main character and so on and so forth so tell me a little bit uh, about that <laughs> uh, yeah man so you know i like i was mentioning like how when while growing up like i don't think the parents generation was aware that they needed to pay rent <laughs> so uh which also with which came with the benefit of like a lot of freedom also like no one put down the rule book so i had this thought in my head ki yaar uh, you know you're a dad now like where's that where's the instruction manual on this thing you know what am i supposed to do and i was really like skeptical i'm not i'm not saying that ki i'm i'm not like every day it's like ki yaar ki am i doing this right but uh, But this one thing i remember like i was so I, one thing i done was like i was in the living room when he when nishan was born as soon as he born i had music set up in the living room so as soon as he was born i had play like beatles played you know yeah so i had set that up it was at uh, which song so a day in the life oh yeah it was set and when my daughter was born she wonder so you know, so so yeah it was to be wonderful for her and beatles for him but uh, and i i held him you know for the first time and i i swear man i my my brain melted like every every i think every neuron fired like this thing of like this like like i have never felt joy like that and then in a split second it turned to like this incredible feeling of fear <laughs> that ki fuck now you know like now it starts now it starts and i i think the change at least in me has been um i i don't think there is a single part of my personality which has not which has not been touched by the fact that i have now got to because i i i when i started out and i'm still thinking like it should if i'll fail <laughs> you know and what does failure as a father really mean then you start thinking about that and that's a spiral down which you go down and yeah that's not a pleasant place to be in but uh, but it's definitely made me enjoy every every little thing like this whole uh, maybe it ties back to the whole mindful game like i am really uh, i really I, i desperately try to be present in all the moments which is something that i would i don't think i had in me when i was like when i was not a dad like i did not like I, there was a version of it i was practicing it but just like now it's on steroids you know like i'm really focused in on it also i think like i'm watching um, seeing him grow and seeing him like get these facets of personality i realize that that i know he's malleable but i should not be trying to force change on him so it's made me into this person where i i i don't know if priya will agree with this or not but i definitely think like, like i've got a little more like i'm not trying to enforce the law like, i don't know how, how to put it like i'm i'm not which i used to be very ki nahi karna you know now i'm like karte hain you know okay so like for example so uh, like say even if it was something as simple as like meeting a bunch of people you know like uh, meeting meet, meeting a bunch of people hanging out with them doing things like i would not do it if i did not want to like i would just plain and simple no now i know that there is this person who needs a like okay that's an example like meeting people but like so just in a general experience like going to a place like just to have him also experience this thing you know like it doesn't matter if i want to do it or not it does not matter like i will do things for him now for the longest time uh, before the covid years and even now we are going back to that routine we used to have this thing like sunday sunday would be his day with me like i would anyway finish work early and go back and make sure that i do story time and all of that jo bhi but but sunday would be his day with me like we would step out uh, we would uh, we the two of us grab lunch together i let ishan order like interact with adults you know like he will pick the restaurant he will read through the menu he will order whatever he wants you know and he will make sure that that yeah he does does that for the table 
and he deals with the with the staff and the when the and the host and uh, so we would finish that and then hit a bookshop you know and uh, buy whatever you want as much as many books wo to jo bhi hai le lo and uh, he's got more books than me i think in the in the in the house so it's, it's a constant thing this this change of like just you know i need to spend every and that is because my dad had that job where he could not where he was not around when i was growing up like really i i i'm not going to digress for a bit but uh, i told my dad a few years ago you know like i i have very few memories of like dad being around when i was growing up you know just little done and i and i told him once like you know yeah, i'm i'm puncturing my memories and i'm just injecting you in them <laughs> i'm just doing it like you know and uh, then 20 2016 2016 we finally took this call ki i told dad ki you know ki you and i so we we were never like we never went on family holidays we dad was always busy so mom uh, my brother and i would like we would travel to my um, nani's place and all that in madras we would spend some holidays there once in a while we used to come to delhi and uh, but dad was almost never there you know like just always busy work work so 2016 we took i said ki chalo you and i <laughs> we'll go for chutti pick a place you know and uh, my dad's a world war buff and i also like you know i'm also interested so chalo we'll go to germany and he's he was teaching himself uh, spanish so he said we'll go to spain also so we did germany spain and then from there he's like i will speak go and speak spanish to the other bunch of people so he went to mexico <laughs> yeah so i i spent like uh, 10 days with him traveling you know and so coming back to ishan like that's the other thing i want to do like i just want like all these to be present and to do all these things with him you know like have this because he will grow up very he's growing he's almost 9 you know he'll grow up and i don't even know like if i'll be needed you know he'll be this independent person and all that so that change like i am desperate for to like now to be like this part of his memories and i i think like as a, as a person like i think i'm i'm a lot more patient than than what i was like i think you just need like super human abilities of patience if you want to deal with kids the right way there is a wrong way of dealing with kids you know not being patient with them that's my assumption i if i'm thinking it wrong then sure i can i don't mind being corrected but patience like i don't think i had that at all like i was i was n- n- not confrontational but i was i was i don't think i was like patient enough for like to for it to resolve but patience definitely i also think like uh, i've got this i I've, i've now started placing a premium on every moment like every moment is precious and uh, i i really think that you know like i i keep thinking back on on my childhood every once in a while and uh, like this thing of like puncturing my memories with my dad in in them and all that and i have like this these fleeting i remember fleeting instances that's it like you know like maybe i'm 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 giving a soundtrack to them i'm filling in the dialogues i remember like just the catchphrase of each memory like it's very bleak and very faint and i don't know why the purge happened uh and when the poets are it happening that i just like I, i'm not i don't i just don't remember that so i i'm like i don't know why those memories were important and why do i remember them so we just the beginning of the year we took a break we went to uh, we went down south we went to pondicherry for 10 days and one of the one of the things i had bachpan mein was going to mahabalipuram with with mom you know and i took both the kids i said this is going to be a painful experience of like indian holiday <laughs> but jana to padega <laughs> like we are going to go there you're going to sit in the exact same spot when i took a snap with my mom when i was 8 years old and like so but, but you know i'm i'm just treating each moment as precious i i'm thinking in this game of like i already feel like i've lost way too much time with ishan that i did not capitalize on yeah that placing the premium on like this moment is special you know like this is it this is it and like that it's it's amazing it's amazing this constant thing of not harking back to the past or like expecting something out of the future like it's this i don't know man it's a really cool state to be in and i wonder if it would have happened if i had not been a dad and i don't know yeah i don't know i can't imagine that what if scenario so i remember in my uh 
dad's last months in fact pre covid when i remember i was sitting with him in chandigarh and uh, uh and he had what we thought was alzheimers and coming up but it later we were told it's parkinsons or whatever but he was losing a lot of his memory and uh, memory loss like that typically what happens is that the edges stay sharp so you'll remember what happened yesterday and you'll remember what happened when you were 10 but you forget the middle so at one point he I said he had no memories of my growing up so he said can you tell me stuff you know almost as a second hand way of getting mm. memories mm. of something he no longer remembers himself and that was sort of very uh, poignant and maybe it's a good thing sometimes you don't have memories of some things but uh, but yeah memories also complicated and and the act in the presence of cherishing what you know will be a cherished memory but cherishing it now Yeah. Uh, so it seems like really interesting. I think Abhishek Upamanyu has a stand-up act about people who are constantly trying to capture everything. That this is an Instagram moment, hai and you know, we are making a memory. Mm. Uh, but yeah. but but yeah, I I get why he was lampooning that. But this is almost something different that you are making sure that there are that um, you know there is a sort of depth to the current moment that would not otherwise be if you were just going with the flow and not really paying attention and yeah also i don't know how how it ties in like this this massive change with the other thing like i put my I, i'm uh, like i feel everybody should be in therapy you know so i i'm doing that like i i have said i i do it because i i feel like my baggage cannot get transferred to my kids man you know and i'm sure i have baggage everybody has baggage everybody has issues and if you are in that position of privilege and luxury where you can afford to take some time off and deal with it you must so i did that like and it's it's a it's a thing that it's a thing that i don't take uh, take lightly at all like i th- i think like everybody needs to work on themselves and i i've been doing that for a few years now and uh, i can see it like i i i i can see the change that if i i can imagine that if i had not been through the paces of the 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 sessions of therapy that uh, it would have been a different relationship because i would have been a different person and uh, i don't think that th- that that should be uh, like why should the kids wear that baggage you know it's it's on us to like f- it's it's on me to fix myself you know and uh, because i i don't know like i'll be doing those things which which will which will be noticed by them you know which will be noticed by him and uh, i'm not saying i'm i'm like i'm not messing up like obviously like i scream every once in a while you know and maybe too often <laughs> in his book uh, but uh, but yeah like tomorrow when he screams like he is expected of from me it is i'm going to say that like i'm going to give myself the credit and the blame so wohi agar agar credit le raha to blame bhi lena padega so philip larkin has his great lines in the context of having children where he says man hands on misery to man it deepens like a coastal shelf <laughs> and as practically my favorite line in poetry it deepens like a coastal shelf wow yeah, yeah. this is beautiful yeah. uh, <laughs> tell me about the singing tell me about how how that kind of uh, started Yeah so you know the, when the lockdown was on and uh, so my so priya sings like she she has the ability to stitch notes together she's got a great voice she doesn't uh, she doesn't take it seriously enough but uh, but yeah I was, I was i was just fooling around with the guitar in the house so, there is this luthier by the name of karan singh who builds these fantastic guitars his name is his company name is bigfoot guitars so for my 40th uh, priya got me a guitar and it's this and i got my hands on it just before the world shut down this is like early march and 23rd 24th march was the lockdown first lockdown and i got my hands on it got back and i was fooling around with it playing and then ishan would just like walk around the the house singing so as a as a baby uh, there is this program called music together it's not a music course not nothing formal but it's this thing where weekly weekly sessions once a, once a week just these kids get together one of the parents uh, one of the parents has to accompany them and priya would go for most of them and uh, uh, she so they, they're just these modules which are you know like nicely called like flute or bongos so like there are 20 tunes on it really cute tunes which have been arranged with a thrust on percussion or a thrust on like silly wind instruments eight modules and he just sat through that and there's a friend of ours simran she runs this program in delhi and a lot of people run it but we went to the one that she does and uh, 
सो द फर्स्ट फ्यू मॉड्यूल्स ही वो जस्ट सिट क्वाइटली यू नो वैसे ही वो शांत बच्चा है तो चुपचाप बैठा हुआ है बट तो बाई द थर्ड वन ही जस्ट स्टार्टेड हमिंग ऑल द ट्यून्स यू नो लाइक ही जस्ट लाइक इट्स ऑलमोस्ट लाइक ही सोकिंग दम अपर समथिंग so he finished all eight that's the only like i wish i want to call it music education that he's got he just went like for a weekly session where he would just be singing but yeah so then we know that he can we knew that he can uh, if he played enough number of times for him he could but uh, i was fooling around with like a beatles tune i was playing blackbird and he walked into the room and he started singing that song and i was really shocked because i had never played it for him I don't think Priya had also played it, but like वो सुन लिया उसने कहीं से विच इज द थिंग लाइक ही पिकड अप द ट्यून ऑन इज ओन एंड सो वे द सिंगिंग केम फ्रॉम मे बी लाइक द म्यूजिक टू गैदर थिंग हेल्प बट लाइक ही जस्ट बिग ही जस्ट स्टार्ट अंडरस्टैंडिंग लाइक इंटरवल्स लाइक द डिस्टेंस बिटवीन नोट्स हाउ ही स्टेट स्टेट टूगेदर विद लिरिक्स इज आई हैव नो आइडिया सो ही गोज टू अ स्कूल इट्स फ्री प्रोग्रेस स्कूल एंड द वेरी क्लियर अबाउट लाइक integral education in the sense that uh, they don't they don't have a curriculum like it's open free schooling till uh, class 8 but the point is that he they had not taught him how to read in school so the first few months of lockdown and he started watching something on netflix i think like where just some animated thing where uh, each letter is a character and a combination of letters like begins to get like a and the the storyline is quite dumb or whatever but like there are these sounds which are being thrown at you again and again so i think he associated the font type with the sound and uh, april 2020 he was just reading so he could put lyric to the melody so i gave him a ph- priya gave him a phone uh, spotify tha us pe and spotify has that lyric stack yeah. so he just started picking up uh, tunes which were coming easily to him anyway and he knew that oh this is the word so i'm singing it so he sang blackbird and uh, so i told him ki this is great like this gives us something to do right you pick up a tune i'll learn it i'll play it for you and joby he started picking up tunes so fast like you know he went into this whole beatles thing because anyway i'm playing it around the house all the time and he also caught on to it maybe that playing beatles in the living room whatever inception happened but uh, he was just yeah he was just picking picking up tunes all the time and i was just keeping up with him so One thing led to another, and then I started posting it. I was like, "Chalo, thiye kar dete." You know, I had like, I don't even call them like on that profile of mine. Like, I really think they are his followers. But uh, but I posted some videos, and then eventually one of them, like a Simon and Garfunkel thing, like caught on and went a little. I guess the word is viral. But uh, what it did was, uh, it gave, it gave. Uh, I didn't show it to him, but like I, I made like a YouTube thing, like a private channel, and I started putting it up on that, and he would see it on like this television thing, or he could see it on the phone, and he saw his performance back, you know. And the interesting bit is, I haven't t- tweaked any of it, but he started. I started asking him simple questions like, you know, ki what do you think you could do differently, and all that. If you hear the song and if you hear your thing, so he started seeing these bits about like performance aspects which he could change, and. I I guess what I'm trying to get at is that he just figured out the singing bit. So I don't know I I don't know when I will take him through the paces of like learning some technique and like so that he gets better in terms of stamina and other things. But um, that's it he is just picking up tunes all the time and obviously like once the like once this world opened up again and he had to go back to school and then he's I mean he also has other activities that I'm putting him through. but uh, but yeah the pace has slowed down but the ability to pick up the tunes is just there and once the videos started going out obviously the calls came in like you know jingle singing and all that so he's done that a fair bit char panch gali hai usne in fact there was a month during the lockdown phase where he made more money than me <laughs> <laughs> so i was like theek hai this month rent is on you but uh, but that and he sang for a couple of films also now hopefully they'll be out this year it's a thing that he's doing so i you know priya and i always try to put him through like some sort of an instrument learning process but it's just yeah he's i don't want to say he's lazy but i guess like he it, because it comes a little the singing thing just comes very easily to him and and the other thing is like he is always singing he'll be bumming around the house doing something or the other making some lego or doing some coloring or jobi he is always humming a tune you know 
and it would it just might be like some like it's not a recognizable thing but he's just just he's just doing it all the time so yeah i don't know where it will go but uh, now in the, like christmas last year we did this thing where i where i said ki chal theek hai i i wanted to do an album with him but i just didn't have the time and yeah guilty but uh, i did a single so chayan uh, advaita vocalist he you know he's his favorite uncle <laughs> last christmas he gifted him a ps4 <laughs> he, he became his favorite uncle this christmas he was like chal theek hai like uh, you know i i asked him like you know ki can you ar- do a vocal arrangement a cappella thing of this so he arranged it took him to the studio and studio though he's already got that experience so yeah, he's you know he's sitting on a on that swivel chair and he's like just like fooling around between takes and i'm telling him focus focus you know like he be a pro and all that <laughs> but he yeah he sang that and then i got a friend of mine who does all the videos for raman mm-hmm. you know man barwa uh, so he said ki yeah yeah i will shoot it so he came ho- over with like full tamjham set it up shot it and uh, i i guess what i'm tr- trying to show to him also is like this this idea of like a like the amount of work that goes into having that product in your hand and then yeah like it's it's great like i don't think the singing will ever ever leave him i just hope like i can i can make sure that it never gets i don't even know if it is boring for him ever yeah like it's it's just fun so abhi mera involvement thoda kam ho raha because i don't find enough don't find enough time to practice with him but yeah he's good with like a bunch of tunes already like again like he's waiting okay, okay when you have the time you'll sit with me and it's weird like you know when through the through the couple of years priya would keep getting these messages of like people who were really yeah like the, there there were some pretty intense messages that she got you know like that like the sense of hope that he's bringing he he did you know everybody hurts so when mohit my uh, uh, our friend like he, uh, tabla player he lost his mother and he was really close to uh, to auntie and uh, he picked out that tune and i we played it together and like that kind of yeah it, it meant a, it's it's had meaning a lot for other people you know and uh, yeah that between that and a couple of dylan covers and all that he did it like it, it it started landing with some meaning for some other people so it's great yeah i hope he's i i i hope he sticks with it yeah and and i'm glad that he got priya sense of melody and my sense of rhythm <laughs> the other way around we we'll, we would be jacked yeah <laughs> it would not have worked <laughs> i suspect you might well be understating your abilities in that department but who knows so tell me a bit about uh, tell me about teaching which is something i'm fascinated by because i think you approach a uh, subjects much in the same way that i attempt to do which is you get to kind of first principles and you sit back and you think about what you're doing and why you're teaching what you're teaching and how you're teaching it and so on and you had like more than a decade of experience already right yeah, uh, all yeah. decade and a half so tell me a, a bit more about uh, that teaching experience and uh, did it make you look at music differently uh, and sound differently did it make you um, different in the way that you know you handle both of those oh absolutely i i think that the only way to really learn something is to teach it <laughs> you know what i am convinced like i like i said i you know that i'd gone in for a workshop and i took that workshop and then i was asked to make the program and i and i did a one year course and it's it's become like i've been making tweaks to it through the through the last 10 years or so and it's a pretty intensive course and uh, not to speak about the course but the but the idea behind it was that i i felt ki why would somebody take their money and go to somebody else okay so there is this one standard thing okay ki you want you want that piece of paper which says that you are qualified so let's get rid of that ki theek hai that is not important so why would somebody do it so ki okay they, maybe they can't figure out they think like there are some secrets which are being kept from them and they can't figure this out Okay so there is a section of like okay tricks and hacks but that's not that can't be it so what is it that people are really looking for so then i i know it sounds like a very maybe like a cheesy line to say but like i think people are really looking for answers like to find especially in the pursuit of like craft no like they are they are really looking for like ki, ki who am i through this you know and that's the like between that and i would like to teach the way i would like to have been taught it needs to be a explained in a certain manner that links it to an experience which is common to all of us that's why like at least in my sessions like i i try to find the common link to food like in just like 
लाइक मेरे लिए ऑडियो साउंड एंड फूड में ज़्यादा फ़र्क नहीं है इनफैक्ट लाइक दिन फूड इज़ मोर इम्पॉर्टेंट यू नो बिकॉज दैट्स एन एक्सपीरियंस दैट लाइक सेट लाइक खीर के सब के लिए मीठी है यू नो लाइक इट्स जस्ट इट्स जस्ट एवरीबडी विल रिएक्ट टू अ सर्टन डिश unless and until like in krish's book is mentioned now coriander tastes like soap or whatever <laughs> yeah except that you as a south indian i would not have expected you to call him krish the correct thing yeah, is to sure. call him a show yeah. yeah but uh, but yeah i i i just feel that the ability to explain it through the lens of a of a thing which ties it equally for everybody you know and then you start investigating that okay fine if i was to get the point across um on those lines then what does it mean for me and that's where i think like my approach to sound and audio like completely flipped so i was like it it cannot if it has to really make sense and i'm not saying i've cracked it i'm still working at it and i'm and i think another maybe in another decade who knows it will be it it, it would be really like i, I will wrap my head around being able to get the point across to anyone but i th- i feel that like that four course meal idea i was saying that there are four pillars on which audio stands and these four pillars became clearer to me only after i started thinking of it in these lines you know what are the four so for example like a simple thing like say so like if you say food ke example mein ki ki you will bring the fat or the oil to a certain temperature and then you will drop masalas in it because fat will absorb that flavor right fine okay so then now looking at audio i need to figure out what is the thing which will soak up the core and i know it sounds like i'm i'm whatever meta shit right now but there is something in this arrangement around which you could just keep bringing things and it will keep soaking it up and becoming stronger and stronger right so the i look at sound from the lens of and and kya yeah, it's like it's op- it's an open secret right there is a sense of pitch you could call it frequency there is a sense of loudness you can call it amplitude there is a sense of the tone texture timbre right ki what separates a a on a piano from a a on a guitar like obviously sabko pata hai ye guitar hai wo piano kaise pata hai you know like how do you know that that timbre is of a piano and now there are millions of different pianos or that timbre is of a guitar and there are millions of different guitars you know so what is that timbre and the, the and what is the shape of the sound that i'm dealing with so let's call it envelope right i feel that within these four you can figure out the points of tweaking se leke personality to character to everything of any sound and now the more you stack up sounds in your arrangement it's just a play on this you know i like you could almost think of like say uh, a bunch of people getting into an elevator you know it's going to only going to do the trip once but it's almost like you need some people need to stand sideways some people need to like lift a leg you know some people so some people will might need to raise a hand some people need to carry somebody else you know so in that sense so if i need to give you a sense of brightness right so then is it about making the brighter things louder or is it is it about making the basier things weaker you know and if i what do you mean by weak does it mean taking away transient information in the in the envelope does it mean adding harmonic saturation i i could get geeky about this but from the point of like heating up your oil to adding khada masalas to it to in the end to plating it whichever way you want to plate it plate it right and there's a way that there's an idea of like dropping like say like ranveer does it no like dropping dhania on everything yeah yeah that green makes it pop right so what is it that is going to make like this thing pop on like what is it that sits on top of everything so maybe it's the sense of ambience maybe it's the sense of space so these four elements live inside what i call like the like ki where where are the living is it a small room is it a chamber is it a like hall cathedral kya hai like you know like where is the space living so where is it where is it being plated on what it's being plated so i keep drawing these analogies and i keep looking at it from the lens of this can be explained to anyone who's ever had a meal <laughs> you know so and we could we could run this experiment you can you can be connected to audio or like analyzing audio every time you look at the simplest things making it up so there will be something sweet salty bitter sour 
you can run with that example and look at it and i'm constantly talking about food but it could mean it could be something else for you you could have that so when i started looking at the teaching aspect i i'm trying to do the least amount of talk about audio to make them understand audio you know because it's a given it's a like i it's the one sense which we can't turn off you know like i cannot like i it's just not possible to not hear it is like an anechoic chamber just sounds uncomfortable i've never been in one but i'm just i'm sure it sounds uncomfortable like you know we are reacting to audio we're being hit by audio all the time and there's a there's a possibility of like drawing from that experience and applying it so why why does the sound distract me was it loud or was it a certain frequency thing why am i not liking where i'm right now you know i have put the mic over here and it sounds a particular way what do i need to change the mic the person the room i can't change the person he's paying me you know do i change the mic do i change? I, i am i am trying to simplify i mean just my understanding to the least amount of variables you know because i think once we get a grasp on the constant and i can deliver that in some sort of sense then i can start talking to the students about the geeky nature and my understanding of this has become so much better that i i find myself interfering less with the with the sound i find myself like being like chasing the idea of the sound itself being as presentable in these four shapes as possible before i decide to manipulate any one of them you know and i'm trying like with the students i try with with, with them i try to get them to hear these four and then the point is to take them to the to the edge where i can't hear like you so i can't tell you what to do now you need to take a call <laughs> you know and trust me nobody's going to tell you it was wrong at least i won't i never uh i like the feedback sessions that we have and where when i hear the projects and all uh, they are not i don't criticize i don't think i do once in a while maybe like i'll let some critique slip through but it's about i'm really interested in ki why, how are they hearing this and i can ask the room and maybe like 9 or 10 people hear it like ha bahut dull hai for example why are you not hearing it as dull you know so if you're not hearing it as dull fine let's start with something that is the brightest and build on top of that as opposed to saying ki somebody told you on youtube or some book told you that all mixes start with kick and bass you know that analogy of like let's build the basement first and then build on top of it sure but like come on man that's not right it's fine if it doesn't work for you so let's find the simplest amount of lego building blocks or whatever you analogy you want to run with and let's find out what they mean for you so my teaching approach is that and teaching approach for myself i'm just hoping like a little bit of that like just like seeps through in the gyan i'm trying to give to the students who sign up you know have you heard this cover of somebody that i used to know by mike dos where he takes a guitar and he you know plays layer by layer as it kind of plays back and builds it up i think i have i think i have yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. so can so can you give me an example of a particular song which of course i'll link from the show notes so people can play it as they listen to this uh and talk about the different layers within it like these four aspects for example hmm let me think it doesn't have even have to be a song you know yeah 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 sure. it doesn't have to be a song let's you could do this like where you're standing right now you know wherever you are if you take your, if you're listening to this on headphones or wherever you are if you if if you just roll the window down of your car and just stop for a second let's do the first exercise of what is louder than the other thing that is not as loud as the thing that you think is loud simpler way of saying it is like it just assemble the sounds in this order of softest to loudest right take care of only amplitude around you you know so when you hear a song now for example okay first step would be like let's break down the architecture you know, appreciating the sound design behind it so first step would just be to like assemble the sounds and what is the loudest right and let's take hip hop for example and you will suddenly realize that okay the bass feels the loudest okay like, i'm it doesn't even have to be a song i'm talking about a genre ki, like limitations and all and considerations but suddenly you realize at the lowest end of the spectrum pe the bass and the highest end of the spectrum pe the hi hat hi hat also pretty loud let's take ferrell williams ka happy i'm sure everybody's heard that song and if you haven't like you know they should check it out the hi hat in that song is bloody loud man 
it's really loud i will argue that it's the loudest thing in the mix you know and now this once you've played this game a few ways around like you just hear sounds like and you assemble them in the order of like say amplitude right this is the tricky bit try to just mute the sound in your one of the sounds in your head obviously you don't have the open track so you can't just hit mute on a on a particular track but let's say you're listening to farel ka happy now imagine the entire song without the hi hat you know and if you've heard that song and if it's playing in your head right now you will realize that the hi hat in that song is the let's call it the timekeeper you know let's call it the groove giver at least so without that subdivision that hi hat subdivision ke bina the song just feels let's call it different i, I mean it Loose. for me it doesn't feel right you know it doesn't feel right you know so and maybe that is because the first time you heard it you heard the hi hat if you had heard so it so here's with- the, that's a good point and that that's the point that the engineer who balanced it and the producer who made it they took that call see when you look at a photo and uh, like obviously that's not the only point in space no but that is the point in space which was captured there was something to the left of it you remember, was it kurusawa kurusawa was asked once ki that one shot in some one of his films like it's fantastic like how do you get it and it's like 17th century japan ka i forgot the name of the film yeah. you know, he said an inch to the left is a sony building and an inch to the right is a toshiba building <laughs> you know so like there is a decision that was made to cut certain things out so if you're going to give that kind of credit to like say okuru sawa or okupre ki you know ki sab decide kiya this is what you're looking at you know i keep telling the kids like ki thoda bergman ki tarah socho ki patta bhi hil raha hai na there must be a meaning behind it don't think like david devon that ki somebody is crossing the road and like it doesn't mean anything but the point is ki you have to accord that kind of credit to the producer and engineer that that is the experience they wanted to have they want you to notice the fucking hi hat like they want you to notice it and they want you to feel what they felt when they kept the hi hat that loud i have to give them the credit so that's why you know like i don't criticize like anybody's any student or anybody's like mixes what does that mean like unko acha laga yaar you are the one person who was not on the payroll who's hearing this probably you're not even buying the music and i'm digress but i'll just close that loop ki there is a reason that they play place the hi hat that loud so the the trick now is that if you can take the hi hat away like somehow just get to the point where you can bring the fader of the hi hat down in your mind you know and you hear the song with just like the do cha pa do ta ta pa da da jo bhi hai wo bass line which i can't sing and the groove is happening and farel is singing without the hi hat that you are crying out for like some rhythmic punctuation release whatever you want, want to call it and when the claps kick in in the chorus you know the hi hat level for you it drops but there is this release and that's the thing the the entire thing in my mind is being played towards that transition transition of like moving to the chorus so once you play this game with amplitude right now you play with the game the game with frequency that what's the lowest sound what's the highest sound next stage would be mix the two up is the lowest sound the loudest is the highest sound the softest you know and just start tweaking balances every time you turn the balance around a little bit the emotional response changes see we are wired to respond to what we call the mid range right like that's our that's the telephone thing also like you know the you can identify like uh, the two concepts over here that uh, every sound has a fundamental frequency and every sound has a harmonic series so the harmonic series is universal like it'll it'll appear in the same order but here's the catch if you take out the fundamental from any sound right and if you present a harmonic series to the brain your brain can go back and create the phantom fundamental so like on a phone this phone is not producing a kick drum <laughs> it's not moving that kind of air but you hear a kick drum no when you play a song on the phone also so the harmonic series of the kick drum is is enough information for your brain to go back and like oh that's a kick drum with the fundamental of that you know so this idea that you can hear critical information and you can gauge sounds the way like the full picture of the sound minus the fidelity on either side of the spectrum right so we are wired to hear mid range so with the mid range if you if you just start focusing on what is most mid range like if you hear bollywood music sara mid range voice ko de dete hain you know so like kuch bhi ho jaye kisi bhi speaker pe chalega awaaz pakka sunai degi you know but other music is not made like that by other music i mean a lot of other music is not made like that so you start playing this game of the 
of course the envelope and the saturation things are a little tricky you need to be a little geeky to understand what you're going after but the simplest thing is this just like a frequency amplitude play you know and the third thing like we, uh, and the, and the, and what you can add in this mix of two things the third thing you can add is like the just the positioning like if you're hearing something and something's coming from your left just for a second like turn your headphones feed left to right and right to left you know you, i can guarantee you your emotional experience is going to change and then you will start placing <laughs> like you will start really start placing value on where the producer or the mixer decided to pan a certain thing in a mix you know there is a reason for it there is a reason for it and people thought about it you have to give them that credit and like students who are getting into this production game they have to think so deep because they can't go to every person who hits play on their song and tell them the deficiencies in the song and tell them ki are ye us din aisa feel kar raha tha is din aisa feel kar raha tha yeah, as wo to possible nahi hai you are you are eight you are chopping chopping the experience into this packet of data that they have to consume you know and hopefully they will make it till the first chorus so mere hisab se like the emotional reaction is in your hands and all these these are your tools these four tools of what pitch is how loud with what envelope of what texture that is it is this your framing or uh, it's i would really like to think this is my framing but i'm sure it's not kyunki original kya hi hai ye kuch zyada ho gaya we're going back into the llm uh, route but but i i don't know but this is the way i understand it mm. you know this is the way i understand it and once you make your peace with this no it suddenly becomes it suddenly becomes so easy because the catch is right or wrong nahi hai you know right or wrong nahi hai but there is a bit about experiencing it a certain way hoping that the other people have the same experience and what are the factors that you can control in getting that experience across to them where they play the music how loud they play the music you know uh, whether they play an mp3 or a wave ye sab thoda control kar sakte ho aap so whatever you can control which is this whole mid rangey thing with a slight color on either side of it of the low end and the top end that you control you know and now everything everything that is a piece of audio these four rules are applicable and you can you can tweak to like infinite possibilities mere hisab se because it's not only about four things ka combination it's about which one you start with because now in your arrangement if there are 25 tracks each thing comes with its own four things and now you are really hoping that those 25 things will sound like one no you know like when you're hearing farel williams ka happy now i've biased you and you're hearing you're maybe you're hearing the hi hat but like when you hear happy tomorrow day after whenever if you ever hear it again you will hear the song you know that's the idea the producer and the engineer really want you to hear the song only so i don't know man like i'm just understanding it from this lens and trying to translate this idea because now you've gotten to the point where you know what you can manipulate you choose what to manipulate and there is no right or wrong because no two people hear audio the same way anyway you know and there are two people like there's a 50% chance of like it'll be in your favor so just go for it man you want to make that louder make it loud why not but realize that once you make it loud everything else becomes soft you know once you pan it left everything else automatically gets panned right you didn't touch it you know but it's panned right so it is coming with a bag of like repercussions and repercussion is the word like ye dekh lo that is in your hands on how you want to create and now with that spirit like whether it's a jingle ki paiye sector 56 mein apne apne sapno ka mahal or if it is like you know ramon's album <laughs> like these decisions like i have to get goosebumps and you know like this is my thing like when i'm mixing a tr- mixing a track or producing a track i have to get goosebumps once like that's the way i know that now i can't now i can't break this song you know like it has now like reached the point where there is some energy in it which is happening the minute that happens now i save i make sure that that balance that version is there and then i build from there till the time like i just i make sure that 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 will never be altered Now you got good air conditioning in your studio as well, so <laughs> that could yeah. help you get the goosebumps. Yeah, well, but, uh, but yeah, like anything, anything to, to to get a sense of that. Ki as a listener, I react like this. So what is it that you need to do to get the other people to react like that? Yeah, pretty much.
Yeah, and and it feels to me like a lot about the craft of writing as well. Like if you're a casual reader, you'll ob- and the way we all start reading, you'll pick up a book and there'll be a bunch of words and you're just following the story or you're getting entertained or you're passing an argument, but you're not really noticing the hi hat, you're not noticing the amplitude, you're not noticing all the tools that are used in the prose. And what I keep telling my writing students is that you might feel ki are itna extra energy hai to notice all the things that are happening but the point is every piece of writing like every piece of music is a collection of choices and every choice is going to influence the reader or the listener is going to affect their mental state so you don't want them there to be to be there by default where you're not even thinking about them you want to put that effort into each of them so there's a reason for everything ki hi hat aisa hai ki yahan maine comma ke jagah mein full stop dala you know there has to be a reason for everything because you're trying to have a particular effect and you sort of uh, want that to come through and eventually over a period of time of course you don't have to obsess over every little tool because you internalize a lot of the good habits exactly. but what i would say therefore is that while different people may want to have a different effect on their reader or may want may read something differently uh, Uh, they would they could still nevertheless be a wrong way of doing thing like for example if if somebody mixes uh, happy with a hi hat so uh, loud that you can't hear anything else at all then th- that's a problem and, sure sure and you can get uh, sort of uh, uh, you know to take it to writing you can get attached to hi hat sometimes so now <laughs> just on that note i tell i tell the guys like you know ki yaar can't you so everything is subjective balance is not Mm. and the here's the the kicker really is balance is everything no that that's it it's it's so tricky like ki ki what is a mix really what is what is a what is a mix it's nothing but a balance of okay i could go dive deeper and say ki balance of frequencies to balance of amplitude to balance of dynamics to balance of harmonic saturation to all of that no it's just like ki balance of all the individual elements what is too loud is too loud you're keeping it too loud it comes with a cost you know but this is it ki sirf एक ही आपको सुनाई नहीं दे रहा कि लाउड है यू नो विच इज माई विच इज माई कॉन्स्टेंट पॉइंट ऑफ फीडबैक दैट कि ओके यू वॉन्ट टू कीप इट लाउड बट डोंट यू हेयर इट्स टू लाउड बट ऑन दैट नोट या लॉर्ड ऑफ मेनी सॉन्ग्स हैविन डिस्ट्रॉयड बाई हाई हैट दे मेड अ फुल जॉन रिकॉल ट्रैप म्यूजिक ऑन इट ट्रैप म्यूजिक आई जस्ट डोंट गेट इट मैन इज जस्ट लाइक एनी वे बट या ऑल्सो यू यूल नोटिस दैट यू नो समाइम्स एंड पीपल गो टू गिग्स दे फाइंड दम सेल्स मूविंग लाइक डिफरेंट पोजिशन लाइक दे गो एंड स्टैंड इन अ पर्टिकुलर पॉकेट एंड देन लाइक बिकॉज वहाँ पे वोकल इज नॉट पिंचिंग योर योर और वहाँ पे द बेस इज नॉट ईटिंग योर लाइक यूर ऑलरेडी दैट्स इक्व नो लाइक यूर जस्ट इक्विंग योर विद योर बॉडी या दैट्स इट लाइक कोई ऑप्शन ही नहीं है यू नो सो आई आई वेंट टू अ गथरी गोवन गिग इन डेली एंड आई हैड टू फाइंड द स्पॉट वेर द वेर द गिटार वॉज लाउडर Mm-hmm. you know otherwise like it was just drums 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 and finally i i felt like kon kar raha mix i looked at the engineer and he happened to be a friend of mine so i had i messaged him like please yaar like you know bada de thoda sa guitar but uh, but yeah like you do U- this at, ha ha you do this at venues anyway you know like ki ki you are finding the spot at which so which is what say engineers are doing inside a studio right like a particular instrument inside a particular room sounds a particular way there are different spots where it will sound a different little different and uske upar abhi now you talk about if you have only one mic you're lucky but otherwise you might have multiple mics you can, so yeah it's it's infinite man that's why there's no right or wrong there is of that particular point and that is so liberating yeah is it true that 90% of audio engineers in delhi are your students have been your students <laughs> i am my evil plan has been revealed i am <laughs> building an army of you know producers and engineers and when they take over everything then i will come as the unannounced king <laughs> so <laughs> yeah. yeah no but like uh, so i've been teaching for like about a like a little over a decade now and i've been lucky enough that uh, that a lot of people uh, who have finished it have found like a uh, a side of the personality that they can you know that can help them carry carry on in the gig so yeah a lot of them are engineering uh, and i keep bumping into them yeah all over the place <laughs> so yeah I've mm. taken a lot of your time today, and unfortunately, to my and and you, by the way, said when I invited you here that अरे अप अपना तो 15 minute का episode होगा so now look it's fine Jesus. I think we've we've spoken for more than six hours <laughs> uh, so I don't know what the final uh, length will be and I haven't even con- I had I had some notes on Rome research but we haven't even needed to consult that the conversations flowed so well so thank you for that and I'll end in the most predictable way and you are aware of this matter uh, which is by asking you to uh, recommend 
recommend books, films, music which mean a lot to you and you'd love to share with the world? And I, you know, I what I'll do is I'll definitely. I mean, I'll obviously I'll mention a few, but I uh, if it's cool with you, then I will put together like a YouTube playlist. For sure, that's yeah, beautiful. I, yeah, and Lovely. I will share that with you. There's just too much, too Lovely. too much Lovely. music that you I can would, share multiple YouTube playlists across genres. Yeah, but uh, if I was to pick uh, just some of them, I would um, I would pick the cliches, you know, uh, and they will sound like cliches. But uh, for a moment, I thought there's a band called the Cliches. <laughs> no, so I would pick be. the cliches like everything by Jeff Beck. is and this is the guitar player in me like i i think like he's the single most important i know the school of jimmy hendrix and the school of pat metheny all of that but he's a single most important uh, guitar player because uh, because what he did on the instrument like it he has he has stretched it to, he stretched it to the point of लाइक दे कुछ नोट्स हैं जो सिर्फ उन्हीं के गिटार पे अवेलेबल है यू नो कुछ साउंड्स हैं जो सिर्फ उन्हीं के गिटार पे अवेलेबल थी ही इज समथिंग समथिंग एल्स लाइक इट्स या आई थिंक एवरीथिंग बाय हिम बट इफ यू वर टू पिक वन थिंग दिस एन एल्बम कॉल्ड ब्लो बाय ब्लो इट्स फंटास्टिक एंड इफ यू वर टू पिक अ सॉन्ग इन दैट इट्स कॉल्ड कॉज बी एंड लवर्स इंक्रेडिबल एवरीथिंग बाय माइल्स डेविस it लाइक इफ यू नॉट इन टू दैट कैंड ऑफ म्यूजिक अ लॉट ऑफ इट विल गो अब योर हेड एंड इट डजेंट मैटर because uh, if, i don't think there has been a single wrong note you know we were talking about like notes with what i think like weight and meaning and all that everything by miles davis but if you were to pick one album then it would be bitches brew which uh, which will with which when listen to the right with the right frame of mind will change your life there's no coming back after that uh are there dummies guides to all of these a dummies guide to jeff beck a dummies guide to jazz because quite often they'll be like once upon a time when i was new to jazz i didn't really understand any of it and you know barring listening to a lot and letting it seep in by osmosis that's that's it that's, that's the only that's way that's it because i i think like the, the 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 problem is intellectualizing that musical lot you know yeah and uh like there is a lot of it which goes over my head and it should because i mean it it will because i have not really studied jazz that much i mean i understand the building blocks and the and the mechanics of that music but if you're listening to music it from music from that lens then uh, the appreciation of the performance and of the energy that the music is trying to put out is not there but uh, let's just go with that jazz thing and i mean everything miles davis would be one thing i would say everything pat metheny like he is he is just like vishnu ka avatar hai wo banda to like he, this that kind of productivity and that kind of just like range it's it's incredible uh, uh i'm going to go guitar player again and and say that uh, john scofield everything by john scofield should be on the list but uh, if there's one album you should pick uh, there's an album that john scofield and pat metheny did together it's called i can see your house from here that's a lovely title yeah fantastic album uh john scofield uh, uber jam the album it's a fantastic entry into his catalog and he, he's got this thing of uh, he blurs the lines between blues jazz and funk but he's matlab matlab agar slot karna to jazz hi bologe but he just blurs the lines so conveniently i would pick sd burman mm. i think critical listening most of his tunes like there is just like this density in the songwriting and in the arrangement which is which has not been like achieved i i i stopped listening to a lot of uh, like bollywood music because i yeah, i'm not being <laughs> elitist but i just stopped like it doesn't do 4000 weeks 2000 hafte bache abhi acha acha to nahi but like pasandeeda music sunna hai but uh, sd burman i would uh, i listen to a uh, western classical and again like you know the question that you had like is there a beginners guide to like i I was really searching for all of that but then I found the inroad through film soundtracks. Mm. You know, so anything that John Williams has done, you know, anything John Williams has done like it has just like this uh, he the the hook the main tune is so memorable and you can dive deeper and start understanding the arrangements a little and why not, you know. Samuel Adler has a fantastic book called uh, Study of Orchestration. and uska ek page leke hi like you know to transcribe that and then to see how those building blocks like how those elements are fitting together like that's a lifetime of learning but i started from the uh, started from this whole soundtrack entry so the uh, john williams everything there is um there is ravel yeah i can't pick between uh, ravel and debussy but like ravel would be the 
There's a there's a joke where uh, maybe you heard it where Sylvester Stallone, Jean Claude Van Damme, and uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger are in a room, hmm. and Stallone says, "Hey, I'm going to make a film on classical music, and uh, I'll be Beethoven," and then Jean Claude Van Damme says, "I'll be Mozart." And Schwarzenegger <laughs> is like, "Don't make me say it, guys." <laughs> oh man! I'll be back, of course. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But sorry, uh, sorry to interrupt you. <laughs> no, no. So yeah, there you go. Like Bach, right? Mm. Uh, anything, but like especially the the cello suite uh, that Yoma has done. Like that's yeah, that's a great entry point into that. One more. like a new artist thomas dipdol this norwegian artist his album what's left is forever like as a great entry point and then uh, you know two things one you should let the algorithm take over from there and there's like it's a rabbit hole for sure but also the influences of your you mean the youtube algorithm not the spotify algorithm yeah, of course <laughs> yeah even though the spotify one is better but that's evil <laughs> <laughs> yeah spotify is evil yeah Done. but uh, yeah books I, i feel like you know giving uh, like there are the clichés of course like uh, which is like for for me the hemingway uh, books are really yeah old man and the sea is something i really like yeah, yeah i've yeah and uh, gatsby i have reread i i remember when uh, when priya was pregnant with dishan i was i would read gatsby you know and uh, he would kick So I was telling Vasu, uh, Vasundra, ki, oh yeah, I, I was telling her about this. You know, ki I was reading Gatsby and <laughs> he, he kicked and all that. I was really pumped, like, you know? and Vasu was like, he maybe he didn't like it, <laughs> you know, and he was kicking. But uh, yeah, I there's another internet joke I now remember. This happens in the seventh hour, where basic. I I think this guy put up a tweet saying I kicked a pregnant woman. So everybody is abusing him and all that, and he says it was my mother and I was inside her. <laughs> so, yeah, the internet. Sorry, Kerry. Yeah, no. The, the, I think the cliches and the classics. You know, I uh, there was this question I was asked. We, a few friends, we were hanging out, and I was like, "What is the one book that you read?" And after that, you know, there's no going back. Like the 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 world changes. Like it just. And I don't think I. I I I still reread it a few times to understand it and let it impact me more but like crime and punishment like I yeah, yeah that book does something you know it's Raskolnikov and uh, yeah I lately I've been getting into these Oliver Berkman 4000 weeks James Clear atomic habits those kind of things you know like is it a trap or is it a hack like you know finding mm-hmm. that but uh, that and films like I I I've really I've gone into the whole shows TV shows like films come ho gayi hain but uh, I was obsessed with Kubrick Co- all Kubrick all Scorsese like I'm very cliched like that I'm, when I'm when I'm feeling down and out I will watch a gangster film which are your favorite Scorsese films so I love Goodfellas and Goodfellas and Raging Bull I can watch like any time <laughs> and uh, I know Taxi Driver because of the soundtrack Bernard Herrmann everything Bernard Herrmann did like I just love it Psycho also and yeah, Psycho Taxi Driver Yeah yeah all his all his films with Hitchcock like where he's he scored like they're just fantastic and uh, yeah so the Kubrick the the Scorsese I can ha matlab I can keep watching that Sopranos I don't know how many times I've watched that show you know and uh, a lot of the new tv shows like i think like there are better tv shows than films being made now i don't understand films that much but like yeah I'd, for sure so the the baking bad the the better calls all i don't think there's a better piece of tv film writing than better calls all probably yeah in my books the greatest show ever made what incredible soundtrack also seven samurai i don't know there's something in that film like i'll 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 i can watch it any time you know and uh, ha huh, new but you i haven't seen that's, that's really you know not to interrupt you but and i mentioned this uh, i think uh, in the studio when you in your studio when you weren't there though with uh, uh, amartya and one of my guests farah bashir when we had just finished and then i mentioned it again in uh, my episode with jayan subrat that you know if you look at the schools of filmmaking uh, i look at everything as being on a continuum between ozu and kurosawa hmm. where Kus- kurosawa just choreographed everything yeah. and ozu like hemingway will just let it be and be completely minimal and the thought just struck me that in your guitar playing like you said 
that you kind of made the shift towards ozu where you're happy being minimal and letting each note speak so much more because there are so few of them yeah. but as a producer you're necessarily like kurosawa <laughs> yeah yeah sorry i had to no yeah i was so, so glad you said that but uh, but i love that aspect of you know like every seven samurai only because like i i think that's the first one i watched and uh, but every it's it's just so like wo patta bhi nahi hilta na bina permission ke like it feels like that and i salute that kind of like work you know like that that kind of control that that ability to extract this emotion from the viewer who's watching it uh what's that david lynch film uh, malhon and drive yeah it was similar thing like absolute control but in the middle of total chaos like i don't know how how is explain it so the lin stuff is yeah the great soundtrack yeah uska twin peaks i really love that the tv show yeah but i could go on and on i'll, I'll make like a at least for the music i'll make yeah. this youtube playlist for sure and uh, films yeah, i just it's just the cliches in fact on films i'm yeah. thinking are taste very adjacent in the sense i love everything by scorsese but perhaps you know the same way you listen the, 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 how you react to a mu- how you react to a piece of music ma- it it matters where you hear it and when you when you hear it so my favorite scorsese films are really taxi driver and life lessons have you seen life lessons yeah, yeah, yeah. that short film yeah, part yeah. of the yeah. part of new york stories yeah and uh, i i just love the way um you know white a shade of pale is used in that you know with that cigarette falling in slow motion and the <sighs> shoe stamping on it and it's just one of how mera thing of like the gangster film no like it's just that it, like it's such a bag of cliches like yeah i just love mad soprano is like so uh, i think i must have seen that show like maybe maybe seven or eight times and if i start it i have to finish it so i will yeah like the the gangster of that film that that genre the gangster film genre just has something so good fellow is like nothing comes close like that beginning every time it starts i get like i'm a little kid you know i get so pumped you know it has the same reaction actually in, the, in that in that vein like casino is pure joy you know and it happened he was in india when he was uh, i think wo uh, his his movie na kundun when mm. he had come uh, to whatever like scout research or whatever he was in india for a bit and my brother and i we had gone to the taj in delhi wow. and uh, he was staying there was it the taj or the maria i forgot but we we gone and hum log lobby mein baithe hue the ki is course aise niklenge and we will just like matlab we will manage to meet him and all that and uh, my brother waited it out yeah he ended up meeting him yeah he got uh, his copy of casino signed signed by him but uh, but yeah i couldn't but yeah he's just pure joy like and especially like the and, and actually the film i probably love the most of him is one i saw recently silence 2016 film ha huh. which i thought is the thera of the the gerai you know the older man who's processed life ha so that and the one the one whole magical what was that thing ha kuch tha wo to maine dekha ha those two i just could not like i mm. I, i could not like get into it Yeah, this there were no gangsters. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, give me the gangster. I want my money back. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, that you know, pick up every cliche and there are cliche for a reason. And yeah, yeah, but like original, kya hi hai, sab kuch to cliche hai. So, <laughs> so, yeah. so, dude, uh, th- thanks a lot. This is so great. You've been much much less judgy about my home studio than I would have thought. So, uh, I'm sure you're being very kind uh, there also. But thanks for coming, man. This Thank is great. Thank you so fun. much. Thank you so much. Grammy jit liya maine. If you enjoyed listening to this episode check out the show notes enter rabbit holes at will lots of great music to listen to you can follow gorov on instagram at gorov_chintamani you can follow him on twitter at g_chintamani you can follow me on twitter at amit verma a m i t v a r m a and you can browse past episodes of the scene and the unseen at sceneunseen.in thank you for listening Did you enjoy this episode of The Scene and the Unseen? If so, would you like to support the production of the show? You can go over to sceneunseen.in/support and contribute any amount you like to keep this podcast alive and kicking. Thank you.